Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. 15 minutes till the start of the, this week's ESL Go for Evolve Sunday Cup. Get hyped because the brackets are posting in just 15 minutes. We'll see you there.
sunlight begins to fade now and i feel like i'm losing time but i don't know how i'm here the sunlight is turned to gray and i feel like i'm losing love again i don't know how i'm
You guys ready for the ESL Go For Revolve Sunday Cup? We are about to start momentarily, just working some things out with the teams. We will see you uh, soon, folks. Stay tuned.
All right, guys, we are almost set. We are almost ready to go live. Stay tuned, hang on, feel the hype, and while you're waiting, feel free to post the only spam allowed in this chat on ESL Sunday Cup days. Raise your mortars, folks. Raise them high.
So how do I screenshot? Do I just screenshot at the end? Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to the Go for Evolve ESL Sunday Cup. Good morning, Aegeus. How are you doing this morning? I am doing great today, IG. How are you? Doing excellent myself. Oh my goodness, I'm incredibly excited for this match we got today. Unlike any other uh, ESL Go for Evolve uh, Sunday that we've cast so far, every team that has signed up has, has actually made it to check in this morning but one. Yeah, um, <laughs> with the exception of one. That's awesome. We have not seen a showing like this since the very first uh, pre-Go for Evolve Sunday Cup, like the first Trial Cup. We haven't actually seen a showing like this. So I am excited. It's like the scene just blew up out of nowhere. We have, I think, about twice as many teams as we had last week, or close to it at least. Absolutely, Aegis. And there's a lot of teams that I'm really excited to watch. Uh, I love getting new blood in the scene. And you know what? A lot of the older yeah. teams have shuffled substantially. Uh... <laughs> yeah, there are a ton of new teams. We have had many roster changes in the older existing teams. In fact, let's go and take a look at all the new teams right now. Let's check out the brackets. Let me just uh, pull that up here. Oh, looks like... Uh... Looks like OBS doesn't want to be cooperative once again. Let me fix that real quick. Because it just loves doing this. Let's see here. Not a problem there, Aegis. How are you doing out there, everybody? Ah. See, my head's getting a little cut off. Ah, here we go. There we are. So this should fix it. I think I got it figured out now. There we go. All right, so um, first up, I, we've got a bunch of different new teams. We have El Perros Grande. Uh, they are actually a British team versus the Xenomorphs in round one. Um, the Xenomorphs, uh, another interesting new team. We have Legion. I don't believe they've played before. Let's check them out real quick. Yeah, they are brand new. Okay, I was going to say, if they played, they may have played in the Trial Cup before the ESL. Um... But I knew I didn't recognize their name. Even more evolved, which is a German team. It's great to see teams from countries around the world um, still filtering in. Absolutely. I mean, we've got teams here like El Perros Grande from Britain. That's going to be an exciting match to watch if we get to cast one of theirs. Yeah, we were trying to get them in first. Um, but they were taking a little bit too long to respond and set up. Uh, so we just decided to quickly move. We will be checking out Epex Black versus... Uh, a team named Stage 3 first. No relation to the Stage 3 podcast coming up very soon on this channel. That will be next weekend for our first show. Uh, and we will have more info about that and the special guest that we have planned for our first show as well later on in the broadcast. We have the return of our favorite Ukrainian team, uh, uh, Team Veed. Team Veed, yes. Yes, we just had uh, them on screen. We were just checking them out. Let's see. Um, Click has returned, of course. Uh, Epex Black is here once again. Um, Eyes on You. Okay, you know, and let me actually check what the roster change was for Eyes on You. I know, um... Oh, they picked up Shower Gel. Okay. Actually, they picked up a... Yeah, a I think it was people. just... Just Shower Gel? Um, I know that previously, Eyes on You's Hunter team never really had time to practice together. They would just play games when they could with other random people and they would show up on Sundays and they still did very very well uh, second yes. place finish a first place and two third places over the past four cups um, and you know that was due to real life obligations from some of their members who um, have now stepped down for other players who are able to play and practice regularly with the team so that can only be good things for eyes on you I mean if they played that well previously 
How well are they going to play this week or even next week once they have a little more time for the new team to really start to gel together? No, I, I absolutely agree with you. Not only that, but I think that a lot of these teams have been watching the previous ESL uh, go for Evolves and, and have just been waiting and biding their time until the Cup was over and they knew that they could uh, enter a new one with a fresh start where the points are reset, where they'd have an equal chance of getting at the Cup as, as everybody. And I'm excited to see them here today. And you know what? Hold that thought. We, uh, <laughs> we're actually going right into the next game. I did not have the other screen up. I didn't think they would be ready this quickly. So we are actually jumping right in. Uh, what that it looked like uh, Markov, Maggie, what was that? Kyra yeah, and Hank, and we're gonna be seeing a Kraken as well. So. And a Kraken. Ugh. So pretty much the standard lineup that we have always seen. All right, hold on one All right. second. No problem whatsoever. So. Uh, yeah, standard lineup. Once again, for everybody out there that's still asking, this is uh, Epex Black versus the new team, Stage 3. Jumping right into Stage 3's Kraken. All right, this is Stage 3's Kraken. He is currently a Stage 1 Kraken, though. He is not Stage 3 yet. And we have on the Hunter team for Epex Black, on Assault, we have the Pie Maker as a sub. We have Epex Adrenocide, the Medic playing Cairo. We have Epex Nightmare, the support playing Hank. And we have War Doom playing Maggie, the Trapper. All right, and uh, he does trigger birds right off the bat. They already have eyes Very on him, there. only 30 meters away. Yeah, very unlucky there. Drone Paw is trying to sneak through the underside of this building here, but you know, it's very interesting because he knows that they have Daisy. Um, they know exactly where he's at, and and the the choice to sneak right there yeah. just kind of wastes time. Uh, uh, he does right, duck through the building the and gets away. Here. Yep, it looks like he's going to be able to drag him out the back side of the building, and War Doom isn't quite in range to be able to make the interception. All right, and he's going to duck out towards the beach, right near that tyrant. One of the favorite spots for uh, many a monster on this map. Oh, and they do oh, get the dome. Wow, and the dome does go down. Wow. Wow, I was not expecting them to pull off a wow. dome. Nope, They're just kind of taking their time there. setting up. Assault yeah. coming in hard. And no, nope, Kraken armor, but, ducks back but, the other way. No, he's, he's just in damage avoidance mode right now. You know, that's pretty smart. He just needs to get as far away as possible and do what he can to mitigate whatever damage is possible. It's stage one. Hank laying into him on the laser cutter. Absolutely there, Aegis. He's just doing an excellent job of kiting them around this. I've seen a lot of higher stage teams will actually just set up four little positions around that so that they can just continually put damage onto him uh, no matter where he decides to run around it. Even if it's just, you know, the medic launching uh, a, a flame grenade at him. He's not damaging anybody right now, so there's nothing else for him really to do. Um, but oh, there it is. Yep, punishing him really good now. Uh, I think they might just get the armor down just before the dome drops. Yep, yeah, there it goes. Just barely. Yep, look at that. Look at that. So, he did a great job mitigating damage there. Um, making do with a, a poor situation that he was stuck in. Only lost uh, up. Probably about a bar of health right there. Yep, however, the Pie Maker is doing an excellent job of sticking on top of him. I, I, I'd say that they, yeah, probably pulled about a full bar off. Uh, hard to say. Hard to say. Just... Yeah, it is tough to tell in the Observer Mode because it does not split the health bar of the monster up into traditional bars uh, like um, like it does in the actual game. Now, I just have to say here, Epex has made an excellent start for themselves. The way that they really need to follow this up is just not allow him to feed. Uh, traditionally, that would have been a great thing for Drone Paw because generally uh, uh, most monsters that we've seen here in the ESL have their Evolve Energy ready to go by the time that they're domed first. And they just use that as an opportunity to avoid all the damage, use up all their armor in order to get out of there, and then uh, take that opportunity when the dome is down to go evolve. But unfortunately, their dome is, is almost back up by now. Yeah, and look at that. And Pie Maker doing a great job staying on him, using that machine gun at a distance to keep that chip damage on the monster, prevent him from feeding if possible. Oh, and War Doom drops the dome on the Kraken again. This is the second stage one dome. 
You know, this is an interesting place to fight the Kraken, though. I don't know which abilities specifically Drone Paw's taken, or, or like, I know that he's got the Vortex, and I, but I don't know how many points he's gone into the Banshees or anything. But he doesn't have a whole lot of burst here, Aegis. Uh, traditionally, this is a really scary place to fight a monster that has any kind of burst stage one. It's, it's one of the better places for them to engage, but I don't think they need to be scared here with this Kraken. I think you're right. I think you're right. Look at that. Epex Nightmare doing a great job mitigating the little bit of aggression that the Stage 1 Kraken was able to push out. And now back over to Pie Maker the Assault as he continues the trace, trying to put the hurt on Drone PA, the Stage 1 Kraken. Absolutely. He jumps in and he's able to get that lightning gun damage on. I think they might be able to strip... Uh, they've, probably, they've got about 20 seconds of dome left. I think that they should be able to strip at least another bar of arm or a bar of health off of him before he gets out of here. The, but the biggest thing here is that now the, the game might actually progress here because Drone Paw finally has the energy to evolve, which means he's going to be looking to make a beeline out of this dome. Yep, there he goes. Yep. Uh, and get as far away as he can and go sneaky as he has been doing. And hopefully you can get far enough away that Daisy oh, isn't going to make that much have, of a difference. We have Pie Maker. Uh... Attacked by Blitz Leopards right there. Look at that. Takes out the Blitz Leopards. Back to the Kraken now. All right. And it does look like he's going to be able to make it down. Yeah, I think he's headed down towards that beach, eh? Just that, that famous evolve spot for just about every monster on this map. Yeah, that's exactly where I think he's headed right now. Well, he's yeah, he's going to cut up into the caves and then circle back around the entire map over to that beach. No, he's going to no, evolve right here. No, he's going to the evolve. Wow, this is a risky That seems a little here. risky. Look at that. Trapper right out in the front, closing in on Drone PA. I think that she will close in range to get the dome. Yeah, look at that. She will, but 30 she meters away. Dome up for about another 15 seconds here, Aegis. So he does just have just enough time to be able to skip away here if he does it right. Oh, wow. Goes no. hard into that Banshee Mind Vortex. Yep. Means he's going to. Oh, wow. And he gets War Doom separated down to just a little fraction of his health. And I don't think Medic is anywhere near here. I agree. Little misplay by War Doom's part here. A little overly aggressive. May uh may cost him the dome. This may turn out to be Fantastic. a wasted dome, but no great oh, wow. shields. Hey, great shields. And they make Drone Pop pay for every second he just took there. All yep. of his bonus health has already gone here. Ages. He's already almost down to half health. Yeah, uh, he's almost back to where he was at stage one. The Pie Maker staying on him hard with that lightning gun, never letting up, just dishing oh, wow. out that punishing electrifying damage you know a great vortex though he's doing a great job of trying to get them separated over the edge of this rock so that they're unable to really help each other and he's trying to get all of them low so the Kyra doesn't know where to focus he's doing a great job of keeping his head while he's still like not in a great situation trying to make the best of it yeah yeah this is a terrible situation for him to be in um it, it, the damage output just isn't enough Kyra really isn't having that hard of a time healing through it he is dropping those vortexes, though, keeping them at a distance. And look at that. Worse off than when he was at stage one. He does have the additional damage of a stage two Kraken, but man, that is some low health. He needs to go into full damage avoidance mode from here until stage three. Nightmare coming in with the laser cutter. He pounces on Nightmare. Nightmare, not, uh, uh, <laughs> He wow. may have, yep, he does Bad get the down there. there. Yeah, free tag for Drone Paw. Actually, no, because of, but, oh, wow, Pie But Pie Maker, in. yeah, not laying up, still with that lightning gun. He is down to maybe two bars of health now. You know, just over. I feel, like, I feel like Drone Paw shouldn't have stayed in play there, because he, he was trying to see if he could pop Assault, but he should have known, like, he, he, it's been a long time since Assault had to use his shield in the middle of combat there. Yeah. Yeah, there was no chance that he had of doing any legitimate damage to Assault right oh, there. Wow. He should have backed hey, off, taken that one free strike, and gotten away. You know, he needs to be really careful here because I'm I'm almost positive that, that Dome is going to be back up. Yeah, here you're absolutely you. right. Dome will be up in just a few moments. And he does realize this and back off. Looks like he's headed towards the beach. Every monster's yep. favorite spot. There's a lot of food down there, and there's a tyrant to be able to help out in case of emergencies there, Aegis. It, it is great that he's got a strike on Hank. I'd say that that's, that's decent coming in here late game, because they are going to need that shield. If he's able to get some armor, it might get interesting. All right. Oh, wow. And he... What, okay. He, Four bars he, of armor there. Not bad. Lots of free forage. Picks up another mammoth bird there. He should be at full armor, which actually only brings him to half evolve energy, which is kind of scary for him. He does make them overcommit on this pillar on the beach here, though, and he's able to slip back around the other side. War Doom trying to commit back. I love seeing this Aegis. It's it's the mark of a monster that knows how to try and play on your team, but I think he's going to get caught anyway. 
Yeah. Yeah, I think they will. Ducks back over Adrenocide. And look at War Doom, just waiting outside of the, that massive rock formation, right where that split is, waiting to figure out which wow, way the Kraken egg, is going to commit to. Egg about to go down. He uh, dodges uh, the orbital, yep. though. Great attempt. Yep. It will Put chase him off of Nightmare, but no Guys. damage dealt. And he dodges the dome as well. I was just gonna say there, Aegis, uh, as we were saying that, they tried to they tried to drop the dome, but as he was trying to dodge the uh, the orbital barrage, he ended up dodging the dome as well. Uh, uh, fantastic job. And this might turn the game around here for Drone Paw because he's now gonna be able to take a free stage three. He can move up that hill much faster than, than the Hunters can. They've been in combat, burning their jetpack, trying to stay on top of him. He's gonna be, oh, you know what though? He takes the opportunity to stop and feed. I don't know if this is the right choice. Yeah. I, think needs to, I think he needs to get away, like far and away. <laughs> yeah, he needs to get as far away as possible. He is not even halfway to stage three yet. The aggression that this hunter team has been putting on him all game is astounding. They're not giving him any breathing room. You might say that they've taken their aggression to the next stage, Aegis. Yeah, yeah, they are putting out some stage three oh, wow. aggression here Fantastic for sure. Fantastic counts damage there, but unfortunately Hanky is able to come in and Kyra's going to be able to heal up. A look at that War Doom right there. Will War Doom get the dome? Dome drops, and he yes. is in. This could be the last dome. He is you know, backed is into a corner, and he doesn't have a ring here. He's trapped. You know, he doesn't. This isn't a great situation for him. But an interesting thing he might be looking for. He can vortex them over the top there, and oh no, it looks. He like can Kyra's try, but will it be enough? Will it be enough? Pie Maker getting boosted by that Hank Orbital. Wow, that was an accidental boost there that worked out in their favor. Pie Maker on the Lightning Gun, laying into him. No armor left. They are on the final bar and a half of health right now. Drone Pod just trying to exploit that verticality, trying to get the separation any way that he can, and I don't yeah. think it's going to be enough here, Aegis. Vortex off the, the cliff, but he can climb right back up. Vortex again, though. He needs to turn his back to them and minimize damage. This is it. This is it, yep. Aegis. Nightmare on the laser cutter, Pie Maker on the lightning gun. They will take him out, and Apex Black's Hunters win game one. You know, another fantastic showing by Apex Black there, Aegis. They had a really, really good showing in, in the cup, in the final, uh, Go Free Vault final cup, and, and I, I really like to see this team uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, meshing better than they did in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, they, uh, they're they playing really, really well today. I'm impressed. Uh, a great way to open up uh, the first round of today's cup. And let's see, we should maybe go into game two right away. Um, I did not get any information from them about the map picks. So we will be blind on the map picks here. Um, while we wait, let's actually uh, continue talking about the brackets again. Um, let's see what other... Uh, what other hype matches we have. You know, it's really interesting. I think with the exception of Team Apex Black, every other team competing in the round of 32 is actually a brand new team. Uh, and we are going right into round two right away. Uh, once again, welcome to the Sunday Cup, folks. This is a best of five. This is the round of 32 right now. Uh, we will be jumping into the second game in this best of five uh, very, very shortly, just about now, in fact. Um, the way that this works is uh, each team, their hunters play the other team's monster and vice versa simultaneously for a total of two games in the first round and another two games in the second round. Uh, if there is a 2-2 tie, it will go into a deciding best of five fifth game tiebreaker. So this will be the second game of uh, Apex Black's Hunter team playing right now against the monster of um, against the monster of Stage Three. Uh, let's see if there is it's gonna any be... update right now on the score. I don't see anything. Yeah, I didn't see anything on the brackets, Aegis. I was actually just checking for you. Um, Although it is interesting that some of on some of them, but not all of them, they've already placed the. Um... We do have it. We do have it. Uh, let's see the monster one for Epex Black also. So Epex Black is currently up 2-0. If they win this game right here, the series will end and they will advance to the round of 16, where all the other veteran ESL Go for Evolve Sunday Cup teams will be waiting for them.
right. And all right. thank you all uh, so much for the great showing this morning, folks. They pushed the time back by two hours. I think it's allowed a lot more people to filter in and watch. Thank you so much for all the follows today. It is a great way to support the channel. You can click that follow button. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. And you will get notified in the future anytime we go live. And it looks like... We are backing out. Okay, so the second round will be on MedLab. That's cool. That's one of my favorite maps, in fact. No, I, I completely agree. MedLab is a fairly balanced uh, map. I personally dislike it. I, I don't like playing on it. Uh, just because we... we the, the, the monster that I generally play with is an incredibly sneaky guy, and there's so many opportunities on MedLab for them to break line of sight with, with the different uh, vertical levels. And nice. to be able to just squirt right out underneath you and, and be gone until they hit stage two. <laughs> even so, e um, even so, it still is... Like, oh, it's very it's still balanced. a great map. Yeah, it's very, very balanced. And that's what I like about it. Um, There's a lot of opportunities for the monster to get past you, but they're not unfair opportunities. It doesn't... It just feels like your team messed up when the monster actually manages to sneak by you. It doesn't completely feel like agree. it was cheesy in any way. No, no, I, I completely agree with you there, Aegis. It's just, you know... Uh, uh, I, I don't mind a little hunter advantage if I'm playing hunter. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we all like that feel good win every once in a while, right? That's that's right. Occasionally, just occasionally. All right, we are jumping into the next game right now. Keep in mind that um, when we see the players pick their characters, these have already been pre-selected behind the scenes. The way it works, we, you know, we do have a change this week that we should talk about. Um, should. The way it works is uh, trapper and medic pick first now. Then the monster player picks their monster, and then assault and support get a chance to counter pick. That's right, Aegis. For anybody out there who wasn't aware, uh, uh, the current meta kind of feels that, or the, a lot of the players feel that Kyra is kind of the only viable pick at the moment. So why would why would we pick her as one of the, the current counter picks? Does that make sense? Uh, so right. essentially, now now it allows for for more ability to counter pick against the monster, Aegis. Right. I, I really and like what they've done here. The idea is we're supposed to see something other than Markov. We might, we might, he just picked Markov, he just backed out. It may be to reselect a perk, or it may be to pick a different assault. I'm just excited about what I see from Monster here, Aegis. No, he's sticking I with Markov. I love a good Goliath game. I do too. Goliath is by far my favorite monster. He is the iconic Evolve monster. Everyone recognizes that ugly mug, and we all love it, I think. Absolutely, Aegis. That it, it just—I I don't know what it is, but the first time I ever pictured Evolve Esports, what I pictured was an arena full of people going crazy after an Evolve or after a, a, a Goliath ends a game in a Leap Smash, and I think that that just kind of sums up the excitement of this game right there. That feeling in the pit of your stomach right as it lands. Oh, I love it. <laughs> it's you know, what you got me hooked. You're absolutely right. There is nothing like ending a match with a Leap Smash. It feels great when you actually manage to pull that off. Very theatrical looking. I, it's just fantastic. Anyhow. All right, and here we go in game number two of the round of 32. This is Apex Black versus Stage 3. Stage 3's monster, Drone PA, currently a Stage 1 Goliath. Oh. Once again, no relation to the Stage 3 podcast coming up on this channel. It just happened to be poor timing on uh, both our parts, I would say. Um, Ages, and also, I, I, as the old adage goes, great minds think alike, right? I hate to interrupt you here, Aegis, but he's done something really smart there that I, I don't see a whole lot of people do. He's gone directly into the lower level, which, which you know, forces the monster or the, the hunters to be able to drop down there. And he's taken those free uh, human corpses that last underneath underneath that area uh, for the entire match. Uh, just, just free meat that cannot give him any kind of birds. So he already filled up his armor before uh, uh, even like five seconds into the match, Aegis. Yep. It's fantastic. Un unfortunately, he triggered two birds in a row right after that, after yeah, leaving that did. central area, uh, which well, is really too bad for him because and, he had a what, great chance to duck away from the hunters and really put some distance on him. Look at that, going into sneak mode right now. But I think they do see him. Yeah, he's in an all-out run now. Yeah, I think the medic just spotted him, but I think that they're close enough that they're going to be able to dome him. What I think he's trying to do here is maybe bait the dome out in this area because he is so close to that evolve already. Yeah. Yeah, he sees War Doom. Okay, he's just going to run and get away from War Doom now. We hear the dome coming down way too far away. I oh, Wow! No! He 
warped through the that dome. That may have been latency issues there, Aegis, because he was, it looked like he was in, and the next frame it looked like he was out. If I'm not mistaken, um, if I'm not mistaken, both teams are NA teams, so I doubt it was latency. I think what happened is the dome attempted to cut him in half, straight down the ah. middle of the Goliath. Anytime we have a situation like that, by default, the monster will get pushed to the outside of the dome, rather than ah, getting cut in half. Sense. No, that absolutely makes sense, Aegis. It's it's hard to hold half a monster. Exactly. All right. And fantastic use of, uh, of Fire Breath to farm there. It looks like he's going to be able to get that Stage 3 and escape rather handily. Moving his way through the the, uh, the Sloth Canyon here. Going to pick up a couple of, uh, of tasty Blitz Leopards. And that should put him right where he needs to be at, Aegis. Yeah. And look at that. He will, I think, head to the uh, to the west side of the map. Interesting. I was expecting him to go full north and um, evolve under the cover of that down spaceship. He may be headed that way right now, though. Yeah, it looks looks like he is. Well, he's cutting through the middle. Interesting choice here. He's just in an all-out run, doing his best to escape this hunter team. That's right, Aegis. He just needs to put enough distance on that he can use uh, that evolve. But unfortunately, I think that their dome is almost back up. Not quite yet, Aegis, but maybe 10 seconds-ish, like very soon. Wow. Yeah, and if they know that he's down here, which it looks like they do, they could drop the dome from above and trap him in. War Doom right above him, possibly just about to drop that dome. Look at that. No, Got the dome out. He's he gonna get waiting. the he might be waiting to bait that though, Aegis, because that would be a really great dome for him. No, it looks like he is able to squirt yeah. out the side there. Yeah, he is going to get away here. Yeah, he will definitely, definitely get away. He's in sneaking mode. Uh, yep, they see him. We can see the pinks coming down. Oh, fantastic. They, they just caught him there, Aegis. Or at least it looked like they just caught him. I didn't see any pings before that, and that was the last bush before he got around the outside. But, you know, he has saved up a whole lot of traversal trying to sneak there, and he does have a few abilities that are going to let him move as fast as he can. In fact, I think he went 1-1-1 one, one, one into Leap Smash Charge, which is the, the high mobility move, and then 1 into Fire Breath for farming because it is much quieter. Yep. All right, he that. does start the Evolve there. It's kind of interesting that he doesn't move forward and try and do it inside the shell. He does it right here on top of the Tyrant. I right next to the Tyrant, case, yeah. I suspect that's in case they try and start doing damage to him from either side, like it, get a little bit over eager. You know, that's a great defensive spot right there because they cannot jump down into that low water, that shallow water. Oh, but uh, the dome goes down and he almost gets orbital. He gets out just in time, takes wow. control of his character and is able to just move himself. Wow, um, great long distance orbital there. Wow, fantastic. Now, drone needs, actually, I, I didn't see what he went. Did you, Aegis? You know, I missed it, unfortunately. We will have to figure it out. Drone comes in with a Fire Breath on the entire team. Fire Breath looking like it's kind of the weaker option there. Wow, and he gets the Sneak Pounce, and nobody's actually uh, uh, able to do any damage. Just the shield gets off. However, they're already able to heal him up while he's underneath there. It looks like he's having trouble making damage stick with his Hank Kyra combo. Yeah, he's kind of flailing around sporadically here. Oh, wow, but a fantastic rock, rock throw, throw into Leap Smash on Nightmare. Nightmare definitely dodges that Leap Smash, though. And look at those Maggie traps locking him in place while they dish out that punishing damage. He's already down to half health. You know, Aegis, this is looking really, really hard for him. Highmaker here. on the Lightning Gun gets knocked away by a, by a rock throw. Hank, Nightmare, on the laser cutter, continuing to dish out that damage, and yet yeah, another Maggie yeah. Trap locking him in place Don't as he tries down. to get away. Even Adrenocide, the medic, is laying into him with those napalm grenades. The dome went down, and he still had to stay engaged for another eight-plus seconds there, Aegis. They were able to strip off at least another entire bar of health just, just from those traps. Fantastic placement. Yeah, great play right there. And he's going to continue to run away and try to escape to the best of his ability. Now, this isn't over yet, uh, uh, Aegis. Drumpaw could come back from this, but I feel like his problem is he can't keep any damage on them because he doesn't have enough bursts. He split out all of his abilities. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. He's, his his, his um, yep. abilities are just too split. He doesn't have that focused high damage output needed to burst down a single hunter. Oh, and oh no, he's he actually just got a couple of mammoth birds there, but before he's able to get much of a feed off, they're right on top of him. Daisy leading him directly there. It looks like they might get him domed here. This is not a great place for him. Yeah, the dome does come down, and 
he's gonna do what he can to make what could be his last stand right here. Wow, breathing and going fire very, up into the air. Going very aggressive there, Aegis. I, I'm not sure if that's the right choice. He does have quite a few areas he can kind of duck around. It, it is gonna be tough, but he might be. Oh yeah, it looks like he's he's kind of signaling that it's over here, Aegis. Yep, breathing that oh, fire wow, into the air, kind of like a white down. flag. And they're just laying into him right there. Machine guns, and lightning guns, Maggie over. traps, locking him in place over and over. I wonder if this is just out of sheer frustration now, Aegis. Eh? Just, just, oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah. But he does walk directly into the orbital, so I think that that, that is that is it. Uh, GG, Aegis. Eh? Yeah. A pretty convincing win for Team Apex Black's Hunters. They will advance into the round of 16. Um, well played on the part of the new team, Stage 3. Hopefully they continue to play, continue to practice net next week, and come back and put on a great show for everyone. Let's take a look at the brackets and see how some of the other teams did as well. Yeah, that's what I was just looking into here, Aegis. I'm refreshing. Uh... Uh, there we go. All right, you let's, know, uh, let's refresh that real quick. I don't have any... I, I don't see any other updates, uh, Aegis, but I am kind of sad that Team Veed got put against uh, Team Defend the Relay. Uh, uh, just because I, I would like to see more of Team Veed and, and get to cast one of their matches, and it, I feel like uh, Defend the Relay is probably going to knock them out pretty early. Just They, they are a fairly high-seeded team. Let's see here. Who else do we have? Uh, Team Click. It's going to be good to see them compete. I, I don't remember them actually competing yet. Uh, looks like Go for Evolve. They lost to Sheer Madness in week three, and then they lost to Sith Atlas on week one. And that, that's been it for them. Let's see. Who else do we have here? Doesn't look like any of our other German teams came back, except for a new team named Even More Evolved. You know, and it's good to see them coming, Aegis, because uh, uh, the last couple of weeks, most of our German teams have been the ones that, that haven't made check-in for, for one reason or another. Um, so it is good to finally see them make it out here. Let's see. Another international team, Team Pink Goliath. Team Pink Goliath. Uh, I believe they are one of the new teams as well. Uh, who else yeah. do we have? We have Run Speed Bucket, who we've seen before, versus Ninja Penguins. Okay, yeah, so we're still waiting to see who plays against Hard On You. And you know, I know I was speaking with Sorosim, the team captain for Hard On You, trying to figure out who they were going to get as a monster. I was trying to help them find some players. Um, I know you were too. We had uh, one of your old teammates, I believe, play against them as a trial. Um, but it looks like they have found their monster. Their monster is Dat Newt. And we have seen Dat Newt play many a time before. He is a very, very skilled monster player. So it looks like Hard on You will still be able to go hard on you today. I I agree, Aegis, and it's going to be great now that they, like, as I've understood it, they... They didn't have a whole lot of practice time before, just because of conflicting schedules. And it looks like they are going to have, uh, the, the, you know, they have had quite a bit of scrimmage time coming into this week. So it should be it should be fairly exciting to be able to watch this first match by them. By the way, um, oh, we still don't know who they're going to be playing. Mm. It's good to see these community managers getting involved. They just, I, I, I absolutely, <laughs> I, I, I mean, it, it's, it speaks a lot of volumes that a person who's been involved with the game for that long and has been a part of that team is, and has been playing the game with them because I, I don't, everybody should know this, but I think that uh, uh, everybody knows that the way Total Rock develops is they test, 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 test with everybody. So he's been playing the game for this long and he still wants to be involved in the competitive side of it. Uh, in his free time. I think that's fantastic.
I agree with you there. It looks like Wolves Esports is going to be facing the uh, the winner of a team called Legion, which is a U.S. team, and even more evolved, which is our other German team. Uh, I just realized I've been muted. <laughs> I am sorry, folks. I am sorry. Yes, it is unmuted now. Thank you, everyone, in chat for typing that. Uh, I think I realized it right about the same time that you guys started to type it. We are fine. Yes, Mike or Riot, we are here. We are back. One minute. Remember, Aegis, they are on a one-minute delay, so they'll be rioting for another minute. Yeah. Uh, I here. am sorry about that. At least you got one half of the conversation right. It's not as good as a whole conversation, <laughs> but it is better than no conversation. Let's see. Now, and, well, you know, what do you think about evolved. the picks? Team City Oh, sorry, I, I actually wasn't looking at their picks there, Aegis. In fact, your screen share has, has stopped working. Uh, yes, yes, we're not in-game currently. We're waiting for another map. Oh, you mean, like, what, what do I think about the picks last match? Uh, the um, pick, well, no, 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 uh, what do you think about the pick system this week going oh. forward? Do you think we're actually going to get to see some variety? Do you think we'll see some other assaults picked, maybe some hide, especially with all the buffs to hide? I, I definitely think that we should be seeing more hide. Um, I, I, I I absolutely think that we should. Uh, it, it just all depends on what the teams have felt comfortable with, and I think that they've they've felt so comfortable basing their strategy around a Markov-based strategy. Um, you know what I mean? Like when when you put a, a, a central pillar of your team and a person has been playing one character for so long, and you start to switch strategies, sometimes like when you try and change up a character, it can make it feel like that it's just not performing as well. Do you know what I mean? There, ages like. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, just, just because it is a different mechanic that the whole team has to adjust to. Because, like, for instance, with, with Markov, you, you, you base your, your, your run strategy and that kind of thing around his mines, but with Hyde, you have to base it around, you know, a completely different thing, which is those toxic grenades, which now do a, a big amount of damage, but do slow your team, which I think is kind of one of the things that they like turns people off about uh, especially in a competitive scene about hide is one misplaced grenade can mean the difference between winning and losing yep yeah, this is something that uh that teams can can work out though you know it doesn't take a whole lot of practice um to, to get this stuff fine-tuned. Sure, they've spent a whole lot more time with Markov, but you know all these teams have played Hyde a little bit in the downtime, even before the Hyde buff, which just makes Hyde feel that much better. And I know in a lot of games that I've played with some of these competitive members over the past week, we've played a lot more Hyde. We've seen a lot more Hyde come out. So I think we do have a good chance of seeing some Hyde play today, and I'm excited, especially against a Wraith. I agree. I know, you know Hyde I is very, very favored against a Wraith. One of my problems that always, like, I, I do play some hide just for fun in my off time, because let's be honest, who doesn't like a good hide melting some faces? But uh, 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 one of my, my favorite things that I finally did is, is when, when they started allowing perks in ESL, we started practicing with perks, and, and hide became a lot more viable to me once we picked Jetpack, just because it allowed our, our hide uh, assault to be able to stay directly on top of the monster almost all the time and, and make up for the monster's uh, agility difference. Yeah, yeah, in that uh, that jetpack recharge, it, it's so good. You know, we uh, we actually played around with move speed earlier this week. Also, um, I'm still not sure I can say it's good, but it's a whole lot of fun. <laughs> it is a whole lot of fun. It's actually really hard to go back to something else after you've taken that move speed and you're used to the increase. Because get this, it actually does affect your jetpack in a little way. Because your jetpack momentum, when you use that initial jetpack charge, is actually based on your character's uh, currently existing momentum. So if move speed increases that momentum a little bit, you actually jetpack a little bit farther. It's a little bit. It's a little bit, but it does help. I, I, I could understand that, Aegis. I just, I don't think that, that uh, the move speed with your feet is ever going to be able to replace the, uh, I, I, I don't know, it's controversial. I agree, but I, no, I, I, I agree, ever, I agree. You know, the, the bursts are so strong, <laughs> jetpack boosts, so strong. Well, there currently is a push, in fact, to, um, to up the speed increase from, um, from run speed from the run speed perk. So you know, we, we may actually see it get be, some use at some point in the future. That might not be that might not be a bad idea, Aegis. I mean, it, because currently it, it feels like there's just two or three that are viable for just about everybody, and that's it. 
um, at least in this higher level play, what the current higher level players, what they're doing, that's what it makes it feel like, is that there's there's only one or two viable uh, strategies to go with your perks. Yeah, and some of those things will be changing pretty soon. I know there's a push to remove DI and DR, that's damage increase and damage reduction from the uh, from the allowed choices in the tournament pool. Um, right now, there's no way to verify that, though, so that hasn't gone through. But um, I know people are, you know, talking and at least uh, trying to impress on TRS the need for a special set of tournament perks and things like that. Basically, a tournament mode where, um, you know, it will have something similar to the rule set that ESL is currently adhering to. Yeah, it'll be great to see it kind of uh, evolve, as it were. They just, oh, that pun, that pun. Um, too many times, one day. Uh, anyhow, I next week is is the other thing I'm going to be really excited for. Ages next week is the first week we're going to be able to see. Well, if nothing unforeseen happens, uh, next week is the first week we're going to see those tier four hunters being used in ESL. Possibly, provi provided they don't change the times. Uh, I'm just trying to coordinate with some of the teams right here. Let's see. We may get into DTR. Right. I'm going to go ahead and refresh the brackets and see if I have anything else come up. Yep, and it looks like Epex Black is, at oh. least according to the brackets, Epex Black is, is the only team out of the round of 30, 32 that's finished their, their round. It looks like DTR will advance to the round of 16. They have already finished their matches. Um... Epex Black, we are still waiting for them to start on the round of 16. Hard on you, we still don't have an update. Uh, let's see. Sheer Excellence wins by default against KPV, since KPV confirmed, but did not show up? Uh, or, no, 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 maybe they did play. I'm sorry, I'm mistaken there. Uh, let's see. And we still have no result of uh, the games between the Xenomorphs and El Perros Grande. Good to see Sheer Excellence back in the tournament ages. Yes, um, it is. It is great to see them uh, back in form. And let's see. Uh, they do have a bit of a lineup change. Uh, Shazberry is still there. Uh, but Avexon is now playing for them, formerly on Team Elevate. That was another roster change that happened. All right, I am speaking to Eyes on You right now. We will see if we can get in on their games next. Hmm. All right, let's see what we can do here. And then there are still quite. There's still, I think, three sets of teams that still need to finish out of the round of 32. So, not quite as even as some of the other weeks have been, Aegis. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, uh, uh, generally, we, we usually finish a whole round of 32 and then move up into the 16. Right, exactly, exactly. Um, but, uh, well, 20 teams, that's usually about how many it is. It's just that we have so many new teams, uh, so it's just difficult to coordinate that first round. Yep, I completely understand what you're saying there. I just, uh, essentially, half of the teams ended up... At fighting in the round of 32 while the other half were in the round of 16 and some of the ones in the round of 16 uh, have already advanced uh, because you know do they wait an hour or two for the other people to play and make sure that everybody's all caught up before they proceed or you know it's a hard decision to make um, I am excited to see some of these teams come back if you know some of these teams that do get eliminated I'm excited to see them practice a little bit more and be able to come back um, Team Veed is just an example of a team that is stuck in there and has come back week after week after week. And I, I'm, I'm really excited to finally be able to cast one of their matches sometime, Aegis. I'm not sure when that's going to happen because it, it, I, I think you did say that DTR has already um, already gone on to the round of 16. But uh, um,
Yeah, the opposite. Yeah, I I don't know what it is, but it seems like something has seemed to have lit a fire under a lot of these teams, and and we see a lot more uh, time and preparation has been going into a lot of the teams. Uh, like even some of the the more established teams have been putting in more and more and more time into making sure that everything is just down packed before they end up here on Sunday. It's a good thing to see. I did it again. I'm sorry, guys. I am sorry. I am sorry. We will fix that. You know, I mean, I've been doing this for so many weeks now, and for some reason today, the mic mute is real. Yeah, yeah, you guys can riot in chat. That is a, a terrible mistake on my part. I am so sorry. We will not mute the mic again. Is that think, a challenge you're willing to take there, Aegis? <laughs> uh, yes, it is a challenge I am willing to take. I will focus and not do it again. The issue is we have so many different teams that we have to talk to. So when I'm typing, because my keyboard is loud, I don't want to have it showing up uh, on on uh, oh, over the speakers. Over, over the, uh, I don't want to be picked up by the microphone, I guess would be the right way to say it. Uh, so I mute and then forget to unmute because I'm doing too many things at once. It's really hard to cast, do the show, and basically... I don't know what you would call it, a producer, I guess, on the back end, doing all the behind-the-scenes stuff all at the same time. It's very, very difficult. When you watch wait, like when you watch one of the ESL broadcasts or something, I know like when I was at PAX, um, they had more people uh, backstage uh, than I could actually move. count. I, I don't know what they had, you know, 15, yeah, it's, 20 it, people total just taking, working for them on the show. It takes a whole crew to make a show, Aegis, absolutely. It's 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 a fantastic thing to watch sometimes, just because the you know, they, they, they are a professional production team and it, it really does speak volumes about um, uh, how much the industry has moved forward because, you know, not uh, not even eight years ago, this was all just people working with uh, with OBS and XSplit on their home computers. Right, like uh, we're doing <laughs> right now. Yeah, no, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, I, I, I love it. Let's see. So are we... Looks like they have a full lobby. Are we ready to move into the next match? Uh, they are doing the picks right now. Let me, um, let me check with binges. All right, there we go. Just sent him a quick message. We'll see. Uh, we'll see what the picks are. Let's see here. Okay, and it looks like Eyes on You and Epex are doing the pick ban phase. Uh, wow. Uh, and Avixon is telling me that he is only subbing in for sheer excellence while he looks for a team. Um, they needed another player, and since he's basically a free agent, he is good now. Awesome. It's it's good to see players actually be able to play and, and teams not have to forfeit just because they they don't quite have their format figured out just yet. It's great. I, I like to see that. I I'm excited to like we still haven't seen the result of El Peros Grande versus the Xenomorphs and and I'll be honest. I'm I'm excited to see how those two teams do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um. I We'll have to see, you know, obviously only one of them can advance. One of them will be eliminated in the round of 32. Hopefully, whichever one is will continue to practice and will come back even stronger the next week. Yeah, there was something There was something about Team Xenomorphs. Man, mm -hmm. and uh, look at these... Uh, look at these banners right here. Ah, uh, do they have the new animated ones there, H's? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, we've got some really ah. cool ones right here. I'd say I like Westlington's. I'm a little jelly over that. Westlington's looks cool. very cool, and I like Weebakis also. Kind of got that, like that winged death theme going on right there. Well, you know me, just I'm a huge fan of Weebaki, but uh, unfortunately, one of the guys I play with has has had something like that for quite a while now. Just different colors. The winged one is new, though, as of the um, uh, as of the DLC. If I remember correctly, I don't think I've yeah, seen it's, that before. Yeah, it's it's something very similar. Uh, I I do like the wings on it though. I I agree with you. I thought that that was just the background that they had just kind of made look like it. 
All right, and we have some results from Eyes on You's uh, map picking and bands phase. Uh, Med Lab will be first, Distillery second, and if it goes into a deciding game number five, Fusion Plant will be the tiebreaker. Once again, thank you all for tuning in, folks. This is the ESL Go for Evolve Sunday Cup. Thank you all so much for the follows today. If you do want to continue supporting the channel, if you haven't done so already, you can hit that follow button down below. It is completely free. Doesn't cost you anything at all. You will get notified anytime we go live for events like this or anything else in the future throughout the week. And we do appreciate all the support that we get from all of you. It's great putting on this show every Sunday. It is, for me, the highlight of my week. I love ESL Sundays. I completely agree with you there, Ages. I, I've, I've been looking forward to casting this all week, and I've been looking forward to the other projects that we have coming in the pipeline as well. Yeah, absolutely. We do have Stage 3, the podcast, coming up. Uh, a little more information about that later in the show. Uh, perhaps when we cut to a break, um, still ironing things out, but it should be next weekend after the EHL broadcast. That's the Evolve Hype League. That's a brand new league that is starting out, and that um, that will be shown throughout the week at different times, as well as this weekend for sure on Saturday. All right, let's jump into the game. They are going into the picks right now, and we have a Kraken. We have a Kyra. Let's see what else they have. We have a Markov and a Griffin, and will it be a Hank or a Cabot? Let's see. I think a lot of teams are favoring Hank versus Kraken now for that shielding against the Lightning Strike. I agree with you there, Aegis. I think go. it's absolutely going to be the Hank. Yep. And you know, uh, we didn't mention this oh, yet. Oh, they have switched up their format, Aegis. Uh, Wibaki is always their support. This is this is a, a, this is a strange turn of events. That's a good observation. You're right. You're right. What and were you going to say there, Aegis? Sorry uh, to cut Binges you off. usually plays their trapper. Um, we had a micro patch on Thursday, I believe it was, that or Friday, that actually changed the targeting speed of the Kraken's lightning strike. Yeah, uh, a lot of things change with that, but but yes, I mean the 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 targeting speed of the lightning strike, and I believe they they fixed the um, something that was going wrong with aftershock earlier ages. Apparently, aftershock uh, Kraken wasn't slowing at all uh, during during the end of that. In fact, Kraken was moving at full out like almost sprint speed uh, as soon as he he triggered it. Occasionally, not not uh, not every time. But I'm glad that they fixed that just because a lot of people I know have, have not wanted to play with Kraken because if they, you know, essentially in a pug match, if a Kraken were to pick up stage three, you know, three points into Aftershock immediately, they just roll people directly out of the dropship. Yeah, absolutely. All right, once again, going over the players, we have Epex Black, the monster, Paul Sack Legend. And for Eyes on You, we have Wibaki on Assault playing Markov. We have Weslington on Medic playing Kyra. We have Binges on Support playing Hank, and we have Mazzle on Trapper playing Griffin. And it looks like they are splitting up four corners, as hunters like to call it. They do not know where the Kraken is, so they split up in all four directions and try to cover as much of the map as possible. Okay, they do have... They do have he a lock on his Paul. location now. Yeah, I was just going to say, he. Uh, uh, I think they pretty much knew where he was there just because that attack, when that attack went off, they were close enough that I thought they got an audio cue. They don't know exactly where he is, though, Aegis. Yeah, they, they are still have searching. A general idea. And he you, was able you can to pick see, up that tyrant. You can see the trapper and the medic hanging back. I like that. Kyra able to speed boost the trapper and uh, make it a little bit easier to get that dome off. Um, we haven't seen that yet today. I know we've seen it in past tournaments, but it's always cool to see that standard trapper support split mixed up a little bit you know this might sound a little bit controversial but i feel like we are seeing oh. better hunter teams overall here he just oh my goodness why did he stop to eat he, there uh, he should not have stopped there it looks like mazel might be able to get that dome off now i don't know no he he's is gonna get away verticality here Aegis. it looks like he's gonna be able to get away but only only just barely oh wow. my goodness barely oh, dodges wow. that dome gets through Aegis. at the last minute um and you know that may have been different had Hank not been laying into him with the laser cutter that kept his stamina up, that kept him in combat, and may have given him the last bit of traversal that he needed to escape. Unfortunately, we couldn't see how many traversals the monster had left, or uh, whether he recharged one in the middle of combat there. We know he used at least one right before that. Absolutely. So it's tough to say, but it may have actually allowed him to escape that dome. 
You know, it, it, it went from a uh, sticky situation for Paul uh, to... to a great one for him. He will get away. He will probably get that stage to evolve off. And for those of you tuning in who might be new to evolve, what we are talking about is anytime a monster is attacked within 70 meters of the attacking um, hunter, then it puts the both players in combat, and the monster regains his movement faster, which allows the Kraken to stay in the air and fly. Sorry to interrupt you there, Aegis, but he has almost bursted Mansell down there, and he does have a few abilities left. I think he's trying to escape, though, and it, it looks like they're gonna be able to get their harpoon in, which is gonna make this a kind of an interesting struggle, because Mansell is fairly decent at landing those harpoons. Uh, yeah. He is up in front with half health, the medic is unable to put the heals down on him for some reason. He I cannot do much until he gets healed up. They, they can't ah. keep that aggression up. You know what, Aegis? They're heal trolling. I just saw that because the, the medic is directly behind Maisel. She was waiting to heal him while Hank had the shield ready as soon as uh, uh, Crack had triggered any ability. They were heal trolling to try and get him to stick around and, and do waste time throwing attacks at them. That's very smart of the hunter team. Yeah, that's a brilliant play to allow Mazel to get in and possibly get that dome. Or keep him around long enough to not get away. It looks like he will take off now, and look at how far away he is now. Oh my goodness, a long distance harpoon there keeps them relevant and in the fight as long as they're able to get across the bridge. Uh, yeah. Oh. Mazel doing a great job catching up until right now, and he will duck away and escape uh, to that southern portion of the map. You know, they did. They do know kind of where he's at, though, Aegis, because they did just catch him on the sound spike right as, right as he went at the edge there. Um... And those mammoth birds are very loud when they get upset. Oh, there's a spotter there as well. They should know exactly where he's at. Unless they're not listening. Yeah, he's running over spotter after spotter there, Aegis. And for those of you who are new to Evolve, don't know quite what we're talking about. If you're looking around on the screen most of the time, we can see the wildlife and those itty bitty little groundhog looking uh, creatures are called spotters. And any time a monster runs by them full force, they get scared and, and make a little noise, just like real, uh, uh, you know, uh, animals on Earth do. Looks like he's going to go... 100 through. meters away. They will not catch him on this Evolve, I don't think, unless he sticks not around. Trapper closing into 60 meters now, plants a sound uh, spike, but I might, think Paul Sack Legend will escape handily here. He is so you know, far away right now. He might decide to stay in play just because he does have a decent bit of armor, and, and Maisel is kind of out in front there, a little bit by himself. Oh, no, it looks like the, the other team's with him now. Yeah. Wow, but you know what? There it is again. Support laying into him with a lightning gun. Um, trying to prevent the feed. Yep, but... trying to prevent the feed. That's a good call now. He doesn't have full armor. So it it could be helpful, potentially. No, it, it, I, I absolutely agree with that call there. Unfortunately, they did let up long enough for him to take one of the two mammoth birds that he down there. And it, he is in an excellent situation to be able to fly uh, directly out of here. Paul doing a great job exploiting the fact that the Kraken is able to move up and down even even better than the Goliath is, and that the Hunters take so long to move. It looks like Trapper moved up into position, but he's gonna go directly onto the uh, onto the medic. Looks like he's gonna get her down. Oh, no! The Hank Shield came in just in time. She's half health. She has. Oh no, that's it. That's it there, yep. Aegis. He's, medic he's goes. Medic goes out. down. He goes hard on Wabaki. Wabaki pops that shield shield down to half. I think Wabaki's gonna go down too on Assault. Look at that Hank trying to keep him up, but without any heals, that shield will run out eventually. Lightning Strike on Mazel. Mazel dodges, but the Banshee Mind does catch him as he takes out Wabaki. Yep, Mazel Only two left ahead, now. Hank orbital. drops the orbital. He will back off for a second, focusing down Binges on support right here as Binges tries to res him. Caught by the Lightning Strike, does not dodge, and they need to run. I was they need that say, walk of the shame. They need to get out. As soon as that assault went down, after the medic went down, it was time to split and run. Uh, uh, they have waited too long. Binges has got way too low in health, and I, I, I don't think he's going to be able to escape here. Yeah, I don't know. Paul Sack is stopping to feed. Binges is now almost 100 meters away, well out of range of that smell from the Kraken, but he could catch up at any point in time. Absolutely. Binges he did just use his footprints. invis, so he does have some time until his invis comes back up again. For those of you just tuning in who may not be familiar with Evolve, all supports have a special, uh, a special ability called invisibility. It's a cloaking field that allows them to make themselves invisible as well as those around him. All right, and he will take that stage three right now. Three points in Lightning Strike, three in Banshee Mines, three in Vortex. 
And this no. could be it. You know, with 30 seconds to go, it they may like have enough time to drop in, but he will it's probably go on the relay before they drop in. You know, Aegis, it's very interesting. It seems like every Kraken we've cast so far has a complete uh, uh, aversion to, to Shockwave. Um, or sorry, Aftershock. They just do not want to take it. Uh, well, we did see a few last week. Oh, we that's right. We saw a last few week. surprise Aftershock builds. That's right. We, we did see one or two last week. Uh, you know, and I, I agree with your, your wrap-up here. I think that this is going to be it. Um, I don't think they're going to have enough time to be able to stop him from engaging this. I think Binges might have an orbital up, but he's not in position to be able to orbital. It's going to take him a minute to get there. And look at that. He's just waiting. He's just waiting for that ship to come in. He sees the ship, and he is now going to wait oh, and no. assault them the second that they drop in. Yeah, we're gonna get we're gonna we're we're gonna get a, a dropship vortex. This okay. is gonna be nasty. He sees it a little bit farther away, so he's just gonna go on the relay now. No, nope. he's actually just doing that just a little bit, just to buy time to maximize everything he can. Lightning strike dodged by Mazel. Great play there. Drops the Banshee Mines into sneak pounce. Shield on Mazel, but I think he will go down. No heals at all from That's the medic. Safe. That stage three monster just too OP. The medic not in a good position there. Vin just trying Drop. to prevent him from punishing the body, but drops the orbital, but too late. And look at that—he goes in on everyone right there. Everyone taking a little bit of damage. More banshee mines out and in the open, and they're not even halfway into his armor just yet. Goes on Wellington. Looks like he's splitting his damage up a little bit. I think he's trying to get Wellington, but they're just kind of grouping together there, Aegis. And unfortunately, they did line of sight there, Hank, who had to jump off of the top there. And yep. I think that's good. Vortex and Banshee Mind pounce onto Wesslington, down to 25% health. Oh. Shields from the Hank, but I don't know if this will be enough. Down to about 15%. Sneak pounce on the Markov. Look at that split right there. Forcing yeah, Kyra there. to heal, and then splits and takes out the assault right away, followed up oh, by wow. the Kyra. Excellent, excellent play by Paul Sack Legend. That was brilliant. And it's down to only Binge's eyes on you's support. He goes cloak and he is hiding underneath there. It doesn't look like he, uh, Paul has quite figured it out yet, but I think he uh, does know the general area that he's hiding and he knows that uh, he can definitely survive this support no matter what the support decides to do. He can either go and take out the relay or if the support decides to engage him, he's got nearly a full two minutes in, until they drop. Uh, plenty, plenty of time, but unfortunately, it looks like Binges has shot in the air very recently, or at least I saw some laser bolts uh, uh, firing up. I don't know if our, our Paul the monster can see that as well, but um, if so, I think this is going to be it. Yeah, this could be it. He will go on the relay now. 30 seconds left to go. If he goes on the relay, he will force support out into the open, but you know what? He already sees Binges. He doesn't care, and look at that. Orbital dropped a little bit too early. He definitely okay. dodges it there. Lightning Strike comes out, takes Binges down to half, and all it's going to take is one Sneak Pounce. Wow. An Apex team taking an early win <laughs> off of EOY. Uh, fantastic job for Apex. Man, like I said, yeah. these Apex teams are really, really coming together. Um, uh, yeah, I'm really impressed so far with their play today. Paul Sack Legend, always a great monster player, uh, but really putting on a great show against Eyes on You today. Oh, let's see here, Aegis. I'm going to see if we have any other updates on the bracket. Now, that was game one of this best of five. Uh, so they will be going into round number two almost immediately. Uh, it will be distillery for the second map. Um, and they do have to finish up their picks, and then we will jump right into the second game, unless they choose to have the same picks as they did the last time. We do have one slight update for the brackets here, Aegis. Um, team Evolve Hype has beat out Team Click, and they will be advancing to the round of 16 to play against the winner of, of our current set. Yeah, so it looks like Team Evolve Hype will uh, will be playing whoever wins here. Um, that should be an exciting matchup. Yeah, and that will only be the quarterfinals, the round of eight at that point in time. And one of the major well-known teams will have to be eliminated. Mm. Let's see, it, it looks like we will probably have Wolves Esports versus Even More Evolved. Uh, let's see if we have any update on those scores. Let's see here. No, it is not updated yet. Okay. You know, I miss I miss our, our guy that we had for, for, for the championship. 
Aegis. I wish we had him back. <laughs> oh, he is. He is working behind the scenes trying to get as many scores as possible. That's why oh. any of this is even possible right now. Thank you so much to Tonic in chat for helping out be behind the scenes, offering to do what he can to make things run more smoothly, to keep us up to date on all the scores from all the games that we can't get to you. Um, you know, obviously we have a blast doing this, but we are only two people and the Observer Mode only supports one, so it makes it very, very difficult to to even get a single set of games out, much less, of course, all of them. Uh, so we do get updates behind the scenes on what is going on with all the other games as well. All right, Let's and it looks like here. they are still in the picking phase. So it should For be just a moment, and we will have game number two. Now, did you say we had an update on how the... Uh... On, on, on how the uh, uh, Apex Hunter team did against the Eyes on You monster? Uh, I do not yet. I don't see that. Um, Apex Black for Eyes on You. I just have Apex's monster win, the one that we just saw. That's it. So we're still waiting to see what happened in the other side of the round of 32. Let me check with the players right now. All right. Thank you so much, everybody, for being out there in chat. Uh, once again, if this, is your, if this is your first time here in the chat, please feel free to hit that follow button. It's it's very free. It's very fantastic. And you get a notification every time we go live, either with the EHL Evolve Hype League, with the ESL Go Free Evolve Sunday Cups. Uh, Black Aegis does a lot of casting all on his own. You guys, he's a fantastic guy. I, I Casting and streaming. I think you'd really enjoy his program. Hit, definitely hit that follow button. If you haven't heard of uh, uh, the Evolve Hype EHL, um, I'm actually going to post a link in chat here in a moment. Uh, just to the EHL current tournament that's about to be happening. Um, very, very excited to be casting this. Oh, are we ready to um, Let's see. Let's go. Do you, do you have a link for that, Aegis? I, I, I don't know what's the best link to give out. Uh, yeah, we can give it out in just a minute. We are jumping into the next game right now, so I will have to get that. When we go to a break, we will update you on the Evolve Hype League at that point in time. Uh, once again, we will be going into the second round right here. Let's get that selected. There we go. All right. Here we go. Now, who is who is playing? I need to come check this. I, I don't know who is playing Monster for HOY. Uh, HOY's monster is Dat Newt. Dat Newt, that's right. All right, and we are at the loading screen right now. Once again, these players did select their character picks behind the scenes. That was the delay between... Uh, the end of the first game and the start of the second game. We will be getting in right now. We get to see what they picked. Uh, they do announce their characters to each other. Uh, the Hunter team picks Trapper and Medic first. Then the Monster picks uh, takes his pick. Then Oops. the Hunter team picks Assault and Support last. Looks now, like they do not be... announce their perks. Perks are picked behind the scenes when they actually choose their characters right now. So they could be deciding those as we speak. Looks like it's going to be a Griffin Kyra uh, uh, versus Kraken. And then we'll have to see who they pick up as their assault and support. All right, this is very interesting. I, I'm really excited to see how this ends up turning out. Uh, EOY having an excellent showing through the last few weeks of the Go Free Evolve Sunday Cup and and Apex always coming, always playing, always placing decently, but never uh, 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 really excelling until this last week or so, wouldn't you say, just, um, it, which, which we've seen them just kick it into high gear. Yeah, yeah, they really have. They've put on a great show recently. All right, and here we go into the next game in the round of uh, 16. This is the second game of a best-of-five series. All right, we have Apex Black's Paul Sack Legend. Let's actually get into the game here. We have Apex Black's Paul Sack Legend. 
playing the Kraken. We have Wibaki for Eyes on You playing Assault, playing Markov. We have Wesslington on Medic playing Kyra. We have Binges on Support playing Hank. And we have Mazel on Trapper playing Griffin. Sensor is online. You know, interesting. I'm really glad to see more Griffins in use against Kraken. Um, now that we can actually, or now that the Griffins can actually pull them down with the Harpoon. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know, ever since two weeks ago, it's been a constant pull down. Uh, a constant pull down right once the Harpoon is in. And, and it feels pretty substantial, wouldn't you say, Aegis? I, I feel like it does, it definitely feel like it gets Kraken down to the ground pretty easily, as long as you can land uh, more than one Harpoon in a chain. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It is a great way to keep that Kraken down on the ground. All right, and it doesn't look like they really have any idea where he's at. They're they're trying no. to come up into the cave. He's done a fantastic job of keeping himself hidden and, and just kind of sneaked out. I think he's going to get a free stage two. They do know here. where he is now. They see those birds go off, but they are so far away that he could still get a stage two out of this. And he's ready to evolve now. Uh, he doesn't know how far they are, but... Um... <laughs> If he did, I think he probably would have just gone right there. <laughs> Looks like they're finally able to start closing in. I don't know if Binge has got to or saw him there on the coast. I definitely think they're going to hear him flying, though. Um, yeah, it looks like they do get the pings off. Trying to sneak his way out of this, and I think he might just do it if, if he can get away before Binge just comes around that pillar. Right, and he may pull it off right here. Nope, there you can goes. see Mazel trying to him. head him off. Yep, they've got the pings on him there, and I do think they're going to be able to dome. And Mazel just making sure, trying to check to see if he's got the range on the dome. Yep, you can see Griffin has that dome out. He's ready to drop it 40 meters away from Pulsack Legend. Gets right in there, drops it right on his head. I don't think he's going to make it out. No, he does not. So we do have a stage one dome. Fantastic job here. Pulsack Legend's got full armor, but I think he's probably gone that same spread out build he did earlier to try and give himself a uh, 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 feed potential and ability to separate them earlier on. Maybe he's, he's probably gone one point into Vortex, two points into Banshee Mine, using the Banshee Mine in order to kill things off. Um, or at least that's what he generally does. And he's just going to hide in the corner right here, just waiting to avoid as much damage as possible. This would be a great time for an orbital. Uh, he's just agreed there. here. You've just got to chase sure him out. Yep, uh, I don't think that's under overhang either. Uh, fantastic job there. Looks like Binge moved up into position but wasn't able to get anything off. They were doing a fantastic job of, of setting up in corners here, here on this map, Aegis. Uh, not letting him... Oh, wow, and a fantastic orbit goes off. Minimizes off. any damage done to him, though. It takes almost nothing from it, getting out right oh. away. But once again, they are on him. Keeping that aggression up. They are just about to eat through his armor right at the edge of the dome. The dome does go down. And he's going to escape, taking only a sliver of health. They may get half a health bar here. Fantastic monster here, play. Just Paul, just, just letting them get little chips, nothing more. Uh, uh, you know what else? He just did something else that I, I think, uh, whether intentionally or not, he just did something uh, excellent there. I'm not sure if everybody in the audience is aware, but the Griffin Harpoons are only effective if Griffin's feet are firmly planted on the ground or if Griffin is jetpacking backwards. And unfortunately, um, when they harpooned him just there, they were forced to kind of jump and Kraken didn't bother to turn and break it until it actually uh, uh, caused him a, a bit of a pullback. By the way, uh, never mind. All right, and he is on their radar. They they have got great sound spike placement here. They were able to pick him up, and Mazel is closing in. But it doesn't seem like they're going to have their dome up yet. He's able to put significant damage. Mazel done to half health. Yeah, and he is going to be able to squirt his way in between here. And I think this might finally create the, the distance he needs. This Eyes on You team doing a great job, just like last round, of keeping the pressure on. It's just uh, uh, just a matter of them not being able to do quite enough damage to be able to eat through everything. Uh, all right, and he does make it to stage two. Look at that. They will be closing in on him, though. They will definitely get a dome down here. All right. And, uh... 
he will have a maxed out lightning strike now. This is a very, very dangerous situation for the hunters to be in. Trapped inside of this cave. I, You know, they may be able to put some serious hurt on him, though. They do back off, though. Interesting choice. No, he's he's got. This is a bad position for them to fight in right now. He just uh, there. They, there's not a whole lot of line of sight break there. They have to try and move up and engage him, kind of one at a time. Um, what they're going to try and do is is get him to come out one way or the other and have their trapper ready to be able to engage. Wow, but they're giving him a chance to pick up absolutely full armor off those steam yeah. that just yeah. hang out in the cave there. Hanging out in these caves, he is already almost halfway to stage three. He's going to be able to come out here, and this is this is the fight he wants now. Binges is separated. He's going to be able to almost, wow, he's going to be able to take support out almost before they're able to get anything on him. The dome does go down, uh, uh, but once again, this is kind of an area he wants to fight. Oh wow, look at that though, they've done a fantastic job. They, they measured the dome out and it goes down just before the cave entrance there. So actually, Kraken doesn't have a whole lot of places to run. Yeah, yeah, he, once again, uh, another orbital, um, just kind of zoning him out. Doesn't really do any damage though. Great shielding play, yeah. He doesn't have anywhere to run around in this arena, though, Aegis. As long as they get on top of that central pillar there, they're going to be able to continue to just put damage on him. Mazel down to half health, but uh, uh, fantastic shielding coming off by Binges here. Um, geez, there's just not a lot to say about this. I, I'm wondering why they're unable to put... I don't feel like they're doing quite enough damage. They're finally able to chip his, his armor off, but they're getting into the health now. Looks like the first quarter of his health is gone. Fantastic job by the Cpex team, not taking any kind of strike. Hank Un never laying up with that laser cutter. I love that. That's what a Hank needs to be doing when he doesn't need to drop shields. You know, the dome is down, and, and uh, Apex Paul is, is uh, facing them, choosing to try and get that vortex off, trying to help use his damage to create distance, but in the process also slowing himself down here. Um, this, e or, uh, this Eyes on You team showing why they've been so strong the last few weeks. Almost gets him down to, to half health after that stage two. That's a fantastic, that's a hard feat to do there, Aegis. Stage two, full armor, uh, uh, and Monster kind of picking where he wanted to be domed there a little bit. Like, not entirely, but uh, uh, choosing his battleground, at least which side he wanted to come out on. Um, goodness, uh, very impressive. Look at that, turns around, drops a lightning strike just to kind of chase them off a little bit, force them to waste whatever jetpack they have left. That's a great move for slowing down the Hunter team. Even if you don't actually land it, at that distance, there's no chance of them catching up to actually get a dome off, and you're going to force them to fall even further behind by wasting precious jetpack dodging that strike. That and wasting time, they just, like, a lot of times, they like like we saw there, they will try and line of sight like you do inside of combat. It's just your first instinct is to try and hide behind something to break line of sight so the lightning strike doesn't hit you. But in doing that, they stand, you know, they stand still. Well, the Kraken is moving slowly because he's casting a lightning strike, but he is moving. Uh, he's not quite able to get enough food here to evolve out on this beach, though, Aegis, which is kind of unusual because there's usually a ton of food out here. And it looks like they are going to start closing in on him. I, I don't know if that sound spike placement is still up. I think he might have dropped it. Yep, yeah, and look at that. Binges, yeah, Binges right there does, does see him. But Mazel is still pretty far out. Uh, he may be in the perfect position to get a cutoff right here. He drops the dome. Paul Sack ducks back the other way. He is Paul trapped, Sack, though. Like they do get him inside the dome. This is a stage two dome. He was at full armor, already getting eaten away. Binges of support, down to half. This is a bad situation for Paul here, uh, Aegis. He's going to need to try and go really aggressive and try and get either uh, Binge or Mazel down. And it's going to be difficult to do either because this team is playing phenomenally well together. None of the damage sticking whatsoever. Uh, yeah. They are able to get already half of his armor down. And, and Banshee Mining to sneak so pounce well. on, on Wellington. But Wellington doing a great job of staying alive this time. This lightning strike may finish him, though. Shield from Hank. No, saves him. Shield. Uh, and he should have another heal burst up here in just a moment. Oh wow, Wibaki choosing to body block there. Uh, body block the sneak counts. Great job. Uh, but it, oh my goodness, they're grouped pretty tight there. Wow, that double or triple lightning strike right there. This could be it. Westlington will go down right his here for the next sneak though, Aegis. I don't know if you've noticed this, but his armor is completely down now. Uh, it, I, I think that I, if I were them, I would drop the dome. 
Wow, Binges, it looked like he was going to take a lightning strike, but I don't think he took any damage from it. No, dude. that was a complete miss on Callsack's part. This is a gross overcommitment. They are still laying into him. Oh, Drops the orbital. orbital. He will dodge the orbital, though. Misses the lightning strike again while they continue to lay in, in on him. They could actually finish him right here. I don't know if that orbital was a great choice there, Aegis. They almost had him him res. I don't know if he was able to get back in there, but the orbital did throw the trapper completely off there. Yep. Oh, wow, the this trapper does may go down. cost Binges them the game. The the face. This might be it here, folks. The soul pops his shield. Binges is down. Weebaki is going to follow very shortly. I think this is game, folks. This could be it. Yeah. And Paul Sack Legend barely takes a second round off of Eyes on You's Hunter team. That was a very, very close game right there. Absolutely. EOY showing why they went so far there. But Paul Sack Legend just unbelievably impressive uh i'm glad to see him playing kraken didn't he go almost exclusive like i i might be thinking of the wrong person here maybe i'm thinking of of a different uh, legend or legendary but who is the goliath player that's it that's from israel oh that is legendary from wolves legendary that's what i was trying to say there ages that that uh, that's who i got him confused with there for a minute just because the paul sack legend um yes we have anyhow. two legends in the sunday cup scene right now uh, so that is two games in favor of Apex Black's monster. Uh, and we do have Eyes on You's monster winning the last two games. So this is now officially tied 2-2. This will go into a deciding game number five, best of five series. You know, and Aegis, I just want to comment afterwards. Maybe it's a little too late, but that last match, I, I think I finally figured out what... Paul Zach did to, to turn it around for himself there. At the end of the match, he chose to, to uh, uh, he knew that he was either going to get engaged down there on the beach or, or one of two areas that he decided to run to because the trapper was set far enough back that he was going to grab him no matter which way he ran. So he ran up into the area that trapped them into a narrow area between the building um, and where his, they were going to be forced to group and then uh, used his AOE abilities to be able to do a lot more damage. Um, fantastic job there because ultimately in the end that is what won it for him uh, uh, was being able to do damage to, to multiple teammates at once and negate that Kyra healing yeah yeah you're right you're right and that orbital I mean it looked like it was a good play at first I think it actually did cost them the game yeah if they would have been able to get the medic back up that would have been GG but uh, 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 when they when it tossed that trapper so far out of there, and I don't know, I mean, maybe maybe trapper was going to be or wasn't going to be able to res, or maybe Paul Sec would have turned around in time to be able to get on top of him. But uh, uh, yeah, just hard hard decisions were made there at the end. And you know, I I wish I could be in that team chat just to 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 figure out why why Wibaki has switched places with Binge. That's a very interesting call. Yeah, um, yeah, I know that's a very, very interesting switch up. Maybe in practice with their newest player, they felt that uh, this was the best course of action to take that uh, to to put out this role switch up. I don't know if it's paying off for them though. And uh, you know, we should actually take a look at the brackets real quick, um, and let's see who is on the left side because this will actually determine which team. Um, actually yeah, gets the pick. So it will be it will be eyes on you. Eyes on you is on the left side of the bracket. That's the bottom in a top down format, or that's the right gotcha. side of the bracket. Yep. Um, uh, that's the bottom in a top down format. So they will have the choice as to which side of theirs they will put forth in this final fifth round. Looking to see if we have any other updates on the on the uh, on the brackets here as long as we're here, Aegis. And I, I don't see anything yet. Like Team Pink Goliath. And team or the green team still don't appear to have finished their matches. Oh, however, I will say that uh, El Peros Grande has beat out Xenomorphs. Well, they did. Okay, well, good for El Peros Grande. So that means that they will play against Team Sith Evolve. Um. And we're still waiting. That That is probably going on right now, so we will still need to wait to see what happens there. Uh, we will be getting in on uh, Defend the Relay versus Wolves Esports uh, in the next series of games. We just need to wait to see what happens in this final game 
of Eyes on You versus Epex Black. That is a best of five. Once again, thank you all so much, folks, for tuning in today. If you like the stream, if you like the show that we put on for you every Sunday and you want to support the channel, you can do that for free just by hitting that follow button down below. You will get notified whenever we go live on Sundays or any other day throughout the week, no matter what we're playing. It's completely free and it's a great way to support the channel. You can also support us on Twitter and YouTube as well. And coming up on the YouTube channel very, very soon, this week at some point, I should be obtaining from 2K directly high definition videos of the PAX East Pro-Am tournament that will be uploaded to that YouTube. Fantastic. It'll be good to see you guys on stage again. I, I, I'll be excited to, to see some of the uh, some of that play done from multiple angles like I think you guys are supposed to be receiving. Let's see here. You know, an interesting an interesting pick here. Like, I, I understand the Hank pick because it negates so much of the burstiness that Kraken's able to do. Um, but I feel like they're, if they would have had a little bit more damage, I, I, I don't know, it could have gone one way or the other because Hank's shields were pretty clutch there. And Hank's shields kept people up multiple times. You know, the, the, the Hank cannot be overstressed. But the old meta used to be Cabot every time Cabot. And... and uh, for good reason. Kraken is forced to face you and put his very large face uh, in danger uh, every time that he chooses to do an attack, and Cabot is able to punish that. Um, but ever since we've seen the Cabot nerf, I, I, I see very few teams running Cabot anymore. Ha have you seen it in all ages? Uh, hold on one second. I'm just finalizing with the teams right now. It looks like Cyril will be going now. So it will be Cyril, the monster player, for Eyes on You versus Apex Black's Hunter team. It'll be good to see the other side of that bracket, too, there. Or not, not the bracket, but the other side of this match set. All right, we are just waiting to get in on that. So it's all on Apex Black's Hunter team, then. To try and, and and pull a win out of this, and let's let's remind the audience that even though we haven't watched these other teams, the monster won both sets here as well. So this is going to be uh, a lot of pressure uh, in that hunter team chat room for sure. All right, let's hop over real quick. We should be jumping into their lobby in just a moment. So let's see if we have any other updates while we're waiting. All right, we have, let's see, we have uh, not too many other scores reported from the round of 16. Team Ninja Penguins takes a win off run speed bucket. That's, that's about it. Yeah, I don't have any official scores, though. That's in, uh, in particular what I was looking for. Yeah, so Ninja Penguins will play hard on you in the quarterfinals. Oh. That should be an interesting series to watch. And um, Team we, Pink Goliath. Uh, beat out the green team. So they're they're going to be playing Team Hard on you in the round of 16 right now as well. Yeah, I believe that is going on right now. And that will determine who plays against Ninja Penguins. Alright, here we go here. We are in the lobby. We are ready to cast this final fifth game in this best of five series. This will determine who advances to the quarterfinals. The round of eight, folks. This is a best of five. This is the fifth and final game. It is all on the line here for each of these two teams. Both veterans to the Gopher Evolve scene on Sundays. I think both teams have been here every single weekend and one of them will take an early withdrawal from the tournament after this match has concluded they are going through their picks right now do you think we'll see anything different from either of the teams you know i i first of all we we i, I don't know that we've watched this we we watched these this current hunter team last match ages but but uh, we haven't seen them against uh, uh the current monster that they're playing right now i i I, I don't know what to say that they'll switch up from last time. I'd be interested to see, like I was saying, um, I, I haven't seen hardly anybody go Cabot since since the, the, the Cabot nerf, and I don't feel like it was 
that much of a nerf that you should never ever see Cabot play against Kraken again. Because the the whole reason he was viable in the first place is still true. Kraken, in, in order to do any of his attacks, has to face his giant target of a face towards you. Um, and and Cabot, even though he has that you know twenty five percent reduced damage uh, or thirty percent reduced damage, twenty five percent reduced reload speed, he still does a lot of damage, and he can still help the rest of the team do more damage as well. So, I mean, it's hard to say that, that he's the better choice, but it'd be interesting to see somebody try and switch it up and pick that. Yeah, uh, it would because... be. You, you know, with the lower uh, tracking speed on the lightning strike now, it should be easier for a hunter team to dodge a lightning strike. And really, that's all it comes down to. Dodge that lightning strike. Um, the Banshee Mind Sneak Pounce is pretty powerful. I guess you do still have to worry about that as well, now that people have discovered that. Um, but still, well, I think Cabot is very, very viable against a Kraken. I completely agree. And if you look at, for instance, this isn't this isn't going to be the exact same. But if you look at uh, Wibaki and and Binges in the last couple of matches, um, they were able to keep on the monster at stage one and two before the monster at stage one before the monster was able to do much damage. They were able to to continue to pressure him, but they were never able to do much health damage in those early stages. Maybe having a Cabot might have changed that. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Not only do you have that consistent railgun pressure, but you also have the damage amp as well. Yeah, because in the earlier matches, I mean, like, once again, there were a couple of really clutch Hank shields, but for the most part, Hank was using his, his, his uh, uh, um, cutter. Um, it does look like we have... Goodness, I, I'm very surprised to see a Markov again. Um, I'm, I, especially when they know for sure that he's going, oh, there it yeah, is. Yeah, we do have the Cabot pick. We do have the Cabot oh, pick, fantastic. which is great to see. Great to finally see that Cabot pick. Fantastic. You know, I'm, I'm really I, I, very interested why, why we're still seeing Markov time after time after time. I'd, I'd, I'd very much like to hear one of the teams talk about it. I, I, I suspect that it's just comfortability and familiarity. Um, Maybe I'm wrong, though, Aegis. And once again, we always see in chat very, very frequently, anytime we jump into a game starting on the monster's perspective, the monster stands there for a while, and people question why. Uh, that's due to a combination of both loading screens and the fact that on the monster's end, he's actually eating a corpse while the game starts. There's like a two or three second uh, buffer time, if you will. But on our end, as observers, the monster just stands there without an animation. That's all it is. All right, and Cyril looking like he's going to be able to pick up almost full armor before the hunters even drop. But unfortunately, right. he does Let's... drop birds. They and they do. They are close by. Let's quickly cover the players quick before a dome comes down. We have eyes on you, Cyril, playing crack in the monster. We have the pie maker. The pie play, maker playing assault as Markov. We have Adrenocide once again for Epex Black playing Kyra the medic. We have Nightmare on support playing Cabot. And we do have dropping that dome, War Doom getting sneak pounce right now. The oh trapper goodness. Maggie about to go down. This dome could drop early. No, he does escape, and he will get a lot of health back. I think he is a okay right here. Yeah, no, nope. unable, to unable to actually get out. But Cabot does come in with the damage amp. Markov on the lightning gun. Uh, with the damage amp, and, and not to be overstated or not to be understated here, he comes in with that that combat cloak. Uh, uh, able to break the, uh, the the focus off of the trapper there. Fantastic job. Though, Kraken Cyril is in a fantastic position to be able to mitigate all damage here. There is a really interesting loop that not only incorporates him running around something, but it also incorporates them having to use their jetpack to be able to get around it. Uh, a really, really interesting area to have domed him in here, Aegis. Oh wow, that Cabot railgun damage punishing, like I said earlier though. Um, uh, a fantastic job here. They've almost got his armor stripped off, which means they're gonna be getting into health damage here soon. Cyril needs to get out. The dome does go down. Is he gonna be able to escape before they, oh. Yeah, it looks like he's gonna be able to put a little bit of distance on. Yeah, the, yeah as you can see, that team trying desperately, even Adrenocide trying to throw out those, uh, those fire grenades just to try and get any bit of damage they can on him. Looks like they do take just chips. Uh, maybe they can keep up with him though here, Aegis. Maybe they can keep the pressure on. Aegis, are you still yeah, there? Yeah, I, I, I think that they will. I think that they will. Uh, yeah, look at that. And they are coming in right here. We have the Pie Maker. Oh, wow. Looking, turning and trying to engage here. Uh, uh, 
seeing that Nightmare is all alone with the Pie Maker, uh, uh, with nobody to be able to keep him up, that's a very interesting split for them. He's going to go ahead and take Nightmare out of the fight, uh, uh, getting a free strike off, essentially, at stage one, and going to camp the corpse because it's really, really hard for hunters to punish a crack in this camp of a corpse. Going to sneak past Pie Maker, and this... This might be the game here, Aegis. This is actually uh, pretty bad for them right now. This is terrible. This is anticlimactic, but wow. Uh, Pie Maker does go down. He gets the Sneak Pounce. Adrenocide trying to heal him up and wasn't able to get any damage And they off, pull so... the dome down. A very, very interesting choice with only two people up. They drop the dome. It's War Doom oh, and wow. Adrenocide. Plus you know, a Daisy, of course, like, but I don't like... know if they can keep Pie Maker alive. Uh, uh, Kyra's able to get it up, but they're not able to do any damage for this. I mean, yes, Pie Maker is kind of still standing, but all they're getting is, is Maggie's... Yep, pistol. and look at that Sneak Pounce, gonna finish off Adrenocide right here. Yeah, he's yep. not gonna be able to recover from this, I don't think. There's not enough Daisy room to juke. The Pie Vortex does up. take him down. Pie Maker is back up on the Lightning Gun, but now they don't have a Medic. And look you know, at Cyril circling Kyra around those trees, deftly dodging as much fire as he can. Uh, Lightning Gun is taking him down to half, though. He is pretty much committed here. He needs to so dish out risky. the damage and get the kill. Adrenocide oh, wow. goes down as well. What a risky play here. Wow. Assault down to only 25% life. Still laying into him with the Lightning Gun. The damage is just not enough. And we have only it's one it. player left alive. A single Sneak Pounce will end this game. He's waiting. If you saw, he looked a little frustrated there, Aegis. I think he just waited and lined it, like, stopped wow. and was like... I'm tapping Sneak Pounce, I'm tapping Sneak Pounce, it's not working. Hold on and, a second, where is he? There we and, go. <laughs> and he finishes him off with a Vortex, of all things. Kind of a uh, Vortex to the face, a very, very low damage ability, but all that was needed to actually clench the win. A is great this the play first on monster win that we've ever seen, Aegis? I think it is. You know what? I think you might be right about that, IG. I don't recall ever seeing a stage one win before this. That's amazing. That was all splits too, Aegis. That was all splits that ended up doing it for him. Their splits were too far apart, and they, they didn't have the right splits. Like, they, they had Assault with Trapper, which there's nothing Assault can do at all to help keep Trapper up. Trapper is all by himself, and there's nothing Griffin can naturally do on his own to keep himself up. Um... Just a, a hard situation there, trying to trying to chase down that stage one monster. Sometimes you have to remember that he's still a threat if he can split you up correctly, Aegis. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and we see that right there. Um, really, really surprising though. Great splits on the Kraken player's part. Great splits on Cyril's part. He did a great job, kind of maximizing every small misplay from the enemy team and focusing them down, focusing the player who needed the most focusing um, at, and taking those right opportunities. Um, just really, really impressive play all around. Let me check with the Gentleman Squirrel and see if DTR is ready. Perfect, perfect. And as we're moving up, I'm going to go ahead and check on this, uh, uh, on the brackets, see if there's any current updates. I, I don't think there is so far. Uh... Yeah, no yeah I, I don't see an official update yet, so Wolves may not even be ready. Let's see. Okay, I am uh, getting a response back right now. Okay, so they are ready, but they need to wait for uh, whoever wins between Wolves and even more Evolved. Uh, we will cut to a short break, folks, while we wait for the rest of the round of 16, which is already in progress, to finish up and get updated brackets going into the quarterfinals. Thank you all so much for tuning in. If you do want to support the channel, you can do so completely for free by hitting that follow button down below. You get notified anytime we go live. And you will. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitter and YouTube as well. We love doing these Sunday casts for you. Um, we've, we've put as much time as possible into putting on the best show that we can for everyone in the Evolve scene, the small community that we have here, just trying to do what we can to build it up and take it to stage three. And as we mentioned last week, uh, coming up, now it will be this weekend, we do have a time, it will be on Saturday at approximately 3 p.m. We will be taking you guys to stage three. Thank you so much for tuning in. See you in just a bit.
When the time comes, be ready. Don't you hesitate. There's nobody left in the world who could ever shake my faith. Holding me back, holding this back. Don't you see? Stay tuned, folks, and we will be back very shortly for the quarterfinals of the round of eight. While you're waiting, have you ever wanted to mod for a channel? If you do, if you think it's something you might be interested in, there will be a mod link application in chat. If that's something you think would be fun, if that's something that you would like to do, please take the time to fill it out. Thanks.
right, folks, stay tuned. It looks like everyone is getting set up right now. We are just about to go back. We are just about to go live and show you guys DTR versus Wolves Esports. folks welcome back to the esl go for evolve sunday cup number six we are back uh let me just mute the players in the lobby real quick hold on one second here we should be in their game let's see there we go okay this is dtr versus wolves esports we will be spectating dtr's Hunters versus Wolves Esports Monsters. And welcome back, IG. Uh, thanks, Aegis. Um, yeah, looks like we're going to be playing on Fusion Plant first. Do we know what the other map picks are as well? Uh, I do not have a list of the map picks. Let me see if I can ask the teams right now. Give me one second. Oh, not a problem, not a problem. All right, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the brackets here. We'll see if we can figure out who else is advanced and who else has come back. Thank you so much for sticking with the break, everybody. Fantastic, fantastic uh, uh, day ahead of us today. Moving into the quarterfinals soon. Uh, uh, need to finish playing out the, the round of 16. Just a few more teams left to kind of sort what's happening here. Um, let's see. You know, Team Evolve Hype beating out Team Click. Going to take on uh, Team Ice on you. Um, that should be an exciting match there, Aegis. Uh, Team Evolve Hype, of course, being made up of, uh, you know, Bronk, Fiend, Insane251, uh, Polos, uh, Saber, and Bode. Uh, I know most of those guys pretty well. Um, the only person that I don't know on there is 187. Uh, that, I believe, is a sub. I don't believe that is an actual player. Yeah, let's see. We have Bronk, oh, okay. Fiend... Polis and Vode, I believe, are the main players for Evolve Hype with Insane 521, their new monster player. That is Evolve Hype, that is Team Hype. They are the team behind EvolveHype.com and the Evolve Hype League as well. Yeah, you're right. That should be a great match to watch. Um, we will be looking at DTR versus Wolves Esports, though. Although I'm Another sure X. Evolve Hype versus Eyes on You is no less exciting. Another excellent match here, and in fact, I think these two have some history. Uh, DTR versus Wolves Esports. I'm pulling it up right now just to make sure that I'm I'm right here. But uh, DTR actually lost to Wolves Esports in in week four. Um, you yeah, know, they you're beat right. them in they beat them in week one. They lost to them in week four. Um, and it'll be like this is definitely a grudge match time because both teams have have changed a lot. Both teams have definitely evolved a lot in their strategy and, and have brought on some new players and some fresh talent. So uh, I'm, I, I'm pretty excited for this one, Aegis. What do you expect to see out here from Wolves? Um, uh, I will, we will definitely see Goliath play. We do have Legendary, the monster player for Wolves Esports, a Goliath favorite player. He, he loves that Goliath. I, in fact, I think I have yet to see him deviate from Goliath. I, I haven't seen him play anything else. Uh, I, 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 <laughs> and he did really well last week. Let's, let's, let's not lie. I mean, it's, he did surprisingly well for somebody who, like, to me, people who only play one monster, it feels kind of inflexible because there are obviously certain monsters that are stronger on certain maps and in different situations. But, but he has figured out a way to make it work almost everywhere, and his record really speaks for itself. Um, 
just <laughs> an unbelievable win record uh, through this EHL so far. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, and I love uh, I, I love how well both through, teams through have this, been playing, through in fact. Sorry. Sorry um, about that. Through this, uh, <laughs> through this ESL. Yes, yes. It's been a long day, and we still have many more matches <laughs> left to go. You know, it, it's funny. Actually, let's talk about that for a minute. They delayed the tournament by two hours. They uh, changed the start time to noon to accommodate the North American teams who are really making a presence now in Go for Evolve. And when I saw that the other night, I was excited. I said, yes! Now I'm going to get to sleep in. I'm going to feel more rested for the cast. This is going to be great. And no, I stayed up until 3 a.m. playing Evolve myself <laughs> and woke up even more tired than I normally am on Sundays. That's correct. I just did the exact same thing. I fell into that trap of thinking, oh, I got time. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and then before I know it, it was 3 a.m. in the morning, and a uh, rip sleep schedule. Oh, let's see. It doesn't look like we have any other... Yeah, no, that's it. Uh, uh, looks like the only other team that still needs to, to kind of finish up into the quarterfinals is just Hard On You versus Team Pink Goliath. All right, uh, and we have a game on our hands. We are going into the game right now. I don't think I have updates on the picks or anything like that. Let me check real quick while we load up. Uh, did they back out? Uh, yeah, they did just back out. Okay, well, then we still have a couple minutes. Let's see. Okay, so the map picks are from Kaiser Tim, Medlab, The Dam, and then finally, if it does go into a tiebreaker, we will have Distillery. Uh, once again, this is a best of five. This is the round of eight. This is the quarterfinals right here, and this is DTR versus Wolves Esports. Wolves Esports, uh, once again, having a phenomenal showing. Uh, both two very, very, very powerful teams here. Um, mm, I, I'm interested to see how well they're going to do now that it is a, 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 a two-dev team, uh, so to speak. Yeah, a two-dev team plus the Guidance, um, who will be a junior member at TRS just starting off in the QA department uh, as a junior tester or something to that effect. I'm not sure what his official title is. Um, but it's his first break in the gaming industry in working in uh, video game production and development. And congratulations so, to him. It kind That's of fantastic. Makes it, he's not technically a dev, but he is a TRS employee. Community management, yeah. No, I, I see what you mean. Uh, uh, I believe that... Uh... All right, and we have the picks here. We have Markov, Griffin, Hank, and Kyra versus a Goliath. Um, pretty much as expected. Let's get into the game right away. A little bit early, so we will have that loading screen, but that is almost over here. I know I've mentioned it before, and I'll say it again. I am so happy uh, to see an Abe in in e, uh, uh, here in the ESL Sunday Go for Evolve Cup. Uh, no, this I'm sorry, is I said Griffin, didn't I? You're right. Yeah, it is did. an Abe. <laughs> this, is, this is the second Abe we've seen. Um, All right, let's only... cover these teams real quick. Yeah, we did see Abe's uh, last week. Actually, we've seen Abe's more than twice. Um, we do have for Wolves Esports playing the monster. We have Legendary, the uh, amazing new player from Israel on Assault. This is interesting. We have the Guidance playing Markov. Uh, Decoy Killer, who is in fact Lord Death or Lord of Vengeance, playing Medic Kyra. We have... Kaiser Tim, playing support, playing the Hank, and we have everyone's favorite dev, the character artist himself, the gentleman squirrel, the maniac squirrel, Brandon, playing Trapper on Abe. Should be a fantastic time. Now this is going to be kind of a struggle because even though uh, essentially when you take Abe, what they're what they're giving up is knowledge of where the monster is for the first two or three minutes for. You know, essentially, especially with somebody as good as Gentleman Squirrel, you, you trade that for essential knowledge of where the monster is for the rest of the game. Um, so I think that their whole tactic here is going to be to catch him early, catch him soon, and and uh, uh, not let the pressure up at all. Because if they do, you know, the, the, the sad thing they're giving up with Abe is that he can slow the monster, but the slow doesn't matter nearly as much as... Oh, like, look at that. We have a dome coming down. Will he dodge it? Yes, he and does. He's he get out of that. goes right through that dome right there. I'm barely escaping by the skin of his teeth. That is a legendary, the player from Israel. Fantastic. Almost looked like game. they were going to catch that dome for a minute. 
You know, he, I, I don't know. I, I, I didn't feel like they were gonna, like, it, they're really good, but I felt like, I, when, as I was watching that dodge, I felt like the Legendary knew exactly what he was doing there. Um, like, yeah, he's, his pulse is probably pounding, but I feel like he's got a handle on this. Um, he looks like he's a really sneaky Goliath player, and he's got some good distance, and he's ready to evolve. This is fantastic for him. Um, yeah, look at that. We do have a Stage 2 coming out. Let's see how far away the rest of the team is. Maniac Squirrel on Trapper taking the lead right here. Only oh. inches away, 50 meters away. But that dome is still on cooldown, I think. Yeah, and no, no, no. He, it is up. It is up. He does have it, it out. It's up, but he wisely chooses to pull back because he was pretty far ahead and Legendary was active and out of the animation, which means that he could definitely just turn around and, and try and annihilate Gentleman Squirrel. Yep. They haven't really seen his abilities at all, so they don't know how bursty he's going to be. Yeah, that uh, was a smart huh. play on his part. Okay, so there's the Goliath. He's picked up quite a few bars of armor here. He's not quite ready to engage, I don't think. I, If I remember watching Legendary before, I don't think I ever watch him purposefully engage without, you know, complete full armor. Yeah, he plays it very, very safe, very carefully. He baits out as many domes as possible and just escapes, bides his time, and oh, waits for that wow. perfect moment. And look at that, they are really? laying into him, still trying to just chip away at that armor, do as much damage as possible before a dome does come down. You know, and I have to throw a compliment out here. Oh! I, oh my goodness! Wow! The leap smash out of the dome. Leap smash through the dome, in fact. I'm pretty sure that's what that was. That uh, looks to be a little bit of a latency. Keep in mind, Legendary is playing from Israel. And it looks like he Very will last. attempt to escape up the north side. You know, that that, that took the skin off Goliath's rear end there, Aegis, yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, I think it did. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe cut a bit of his tail off right there. He does pick up a couple of Marsh Striders. Uh, that's another four bars of meat. They are able to finally deny a little bit of feed there at the end, and it looks like he's in a very comfortable position here, Aegis. I mean, yes, he, he's not ready to evolve to stage three yet, but that is a much bigger evolve, or it, it feels like it's a bigger evolve meter. It's a lot more food you have to put down. Um, he's got some good distance, and the dome is only just now coming up uh, uh, here in a few seconds, I think. Yeah, and I think he's choosing this area because I think this is where he wants to fight. Yeah, and this is a great spot for a monster to fight. Um, it's just... Everything about the terrain, I think, around here favors the monster. Plus, you have the tyrant nearby for additional confusion and chaos in a fight. Um, it just overall great for a monster. It oh, almost you know never good for hunters. They're pinging in the area, Aegis. Oh, they finally got him pinged. All right, they do see him. He's still trying to pick up... Oh, he, he's got full evolved meters, so I think he's going to try and do another dome dodge here, Aegis. Yeah, I think he will. He sees the gentleman score. He's going to run right over him, though. That oh dome does goodness. come down. I don't think he's going <laughs> to escape this time. Just nope. barely, Aegis. He yep. picked a very interesting area where he was going to be able to just jump directly downhill the entire time and, and pulled it off perfectly. Yeah, once again straight downhill and he does manage to escape all right and oh, he wow. will pull off a stage three now in this, this little classic overhang right here legendary is showing just some absolutely phenomenal control i i need to say just if there's one thing he's doing better than anybody i've ever seen it, it's that he seems to just understand all of the movement and when each one of the animations is going to be complete and exactly what he needs to be doing as soon as it's done you don't see i haven't seen him miss uh like you, you know occasionally you'll you'll jump to try and get up a cliff a little bit faster and then climb and occasionally you know some people even even professional players will kind of miss it and not quite have the shift ready and you know waste the jump essentially it never happens with him i've been watching for any kind of mistakes in movement like that at all and he always seems to be perfectly on top of it and it looks like they're just setting up uh well near the relay now they're setting up further away okay so this is interesting. I have never actually seen DTR fight here. Traditionally, they fight on the relay, but that's with a Maggie comp versus Goliath. Uh, so it looks like they're setting up here, and I think what they're going to be trying to do is they're going to try and use these small little rock formations to run circles around when the Goliath is chasing someone. Place mines and do whatever they can to keep up LOS and um, 
keep the heals on hunters while minimizing the damage dealt by that monster player. And look at that, Legendary coming in right here, sneak mode, he does advance on Guidance, on Assault. Yeah, if I were him here, Aegis, I'd probably be going there for Kaiser Tim or, going or straight Gentleman for Squirrel. One Gentleman Squirrel. Nope, past Gentleman Squirrel. Leaps on Kaiser Tim. That's right, going straight for the support. Support pops his invis, though. And it looks and like he will get away. Back up. Dome does go down, but unfortunately, like a lot of times here at a stage 3 battle, you don't want to see that dome go down until the monster is almost out of armor, until he wants to run. Um, uh, yeah, they want to get it down early right now and dish out as much punish as possible. This is actually a really good spot. This looks to oh be very, very difficult. Oh, and look at that orbital coming down. Starts armor to shred into his down. armor, but he jumps away right away. Very, very little damage dealt. About half a bar of armor. And now he's now, going to escape to underneath the relay. They do not want to try and follow and engage here, Aegis. I think that it'd be a bad mistake. Uh, maybe just the guidance with with a little bit of support there, but but the whole team cannot be following up here because that's down underneath there where everything's closed off is exactly where Goliath wants to fight. Yeah, he is going to circle back around. It looks like DTR is setting up for a war of attrition here. They have given up trying to get those domes on him. Um, you know, during that early game, and they're just going to wait it out, continue to put punish, and wear down that clock, which is only at eight minutes right now. You know, and I think that might actually be, like, even though this is going to, this makes for a long game, they just, they're doing a fantastic job right now. They just melted all of his armor off, they, they you know, that the, the orbital came down but hardly landed. Um, so it was all just them. They didn't really waste any of their big abilities there. I feel like if they get a slightly better engage, uh, uh, they could do it. And this is just, uh, the, the time is against Legendary here. Uh, he's got to feel frustrated coming and losing all of his armor for absolutely nothing. I think the best he got was somebody like half health. Yeah, and I'm sure that that is something that Legendary is not normally used to. Um, DTR playing exceptionally well, especially against a Stage 3 Goliath of all things. Oh, I was just gonna say, uh, especially as a three-three-three stage three Goliath with with all those uh, with with all that burst, um, it does look like he's gonna try and take a tyrant here and just get the armor back soon. You know, this isn't an enormous map, Aegis, and there's not a ton of wildlife on it. Uh, he might have eaten quite a bit, uh, eaten slash the hunter team killed off and has rotted uh, uh, a large amount of what's what's available on the map. Yeah, and that's that war of, a twish, of attrition that I was talking about. Um, you know, eventually they will wear down that armor. The wildlife on the map will mostly die off. They will, it will respawn slowly, but not enough. And they will eventually win if they can keep this up. Wow, but he's going to come and directly engage. He throws that... Uh, Goes right on decoy right killer, Kyra, the healer. That uh, is Lord Death right there. And I Guidance like comes in on Assault with the Lightning Gun, with the Rock Throw. Gentleman Squirrel dodges the Rock Throw, down to Half-Life though, but Hank Shields and Kyra's healing grenades do keep him alive. They are grouped up now. Orbital comes oh down. Goodness. He does leap smash out of the orbital, trying to advance on the team. No permanent damage done yet. Gentleman Squirrel may go down, catches that rock throw, but he is shielded and healed, healed up almost immediately. This DTR team showing why they are counted so strong every single time. Coming in, finally getting down to two bars of armor on the monster here. Fantastic Hank Shields coming out. That uh, Flame Breath coming down, but unable to stick to anybody really. Uh, uh, Kaiser Tim taking a little bit of damage, the Leap Smash comes down, but they're working him around that pillar, just getting a fantastic degree of separation there. Rock uh, throw on Gentleman Squirrel, but too close to the wall, it clips the wall and blows up there, far, far Gentleman away from Squirrel, the trapper. So close though, so close, he's gonna get either they're Kaiser low. Tim Healing or Burst keeps them both oh, alive, please. great play there, Rock on Kaiser Tim, Kaiser Tim down to 25% health, but he, he invises Shield on Decoy Killer, and so they exciting. continue the damage, what a fight! Guidance Rock throw on Guidance down. knocks him up onto the relay. He is at 30% life right here on Assault. Legendary switches to Kaiser Tim, oh, refocuses, comes down Dome comes pillow. down, and he runs for his life. He did nothing there, and they took off nearly a third of his life playing against that Israel lag. Amazing, amazing teamwork right there from DTR doing what they can to defend the relay. That's where they get their name from. <laughs> Very apt name, I would say, here at the end, Aegis. They've always done a fantastic job in Stage 3 fights. They're, they're like, if a team is going to take a Stage 3 fight, it, I, I feel like it's these guys. Um, though it's a very interesting comp for, for a Stage 3 fight, because, you know, you wouldn't traditionally see Abe. I, I think that they yes. were trying to get him a little bit earlier, but, but 
they're they're making it work that's for sure i think they were too i think you're absolutely right and they are playing phenomenally wow all the landmines blown up by the fire breath he does come in again goes on kaiser tim leap smash down to half health the dome does come down and we have a rock throw gentleman squirrel perfectly dodges that rock throw and legendary now looking for someone to target kaiser tim no. caught alone down to half health once again will he get healed up quickly avoids these rocks these doing kaiser figure tim eights oh, goes, through these goes. rock formations right here kaiser tim may There's go down man. oh my goodness kaiser tim down wow and he goes down to a rock that was an interesting rock throw but will it be enough that is only one player down they and already he's back up guidance the assault gets him back up well played i have to correct you there aegis it was the afterburn uh he almost got killed on the rock it was the afterburn from the flame breath that actually killed him uh, yes yes you're right good point good point that's exactly what it was i thought it might have been lag for a minute all right and he advances again guidance down to half quickly healed up looks like he's throwing that flame breath wherever he can trying to dish out that damage gentleman squirrel down to half healing burst keeps him up shields on the gentleman squirrel and he switches to decoy killer lord death lord death quickly dodges that rock throw we have the dome down will he stay in or will he try to escape he is down to one third of his life now in this epic stage three relay fight unbelievable how quickly this has turned around here aegis they've done a fantastic job just measuring out the damage making sure that they focus more on keeping themselves alive uh, uh more on 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 ensuring that they have perfect positioning all the time and it's paying off so well for them i cannot stress enough how much positioning has played a key role in them being able to make this comeback um uh, they, they are in the right place every second of that fight every single time yes this is the dtr that i first saw before aurora symphony was even the monster player for their team when i saw videos of aurora playing against them for fun this is the kind of exceptional gameplay that i saw them put forth and it is great to see them back in tip top shape right now I, I suspect here, Aegis, don't, don't, uh, you, you can quote me on this, but I think that e the, this second month of, of uh, ESL uh, Go Free Evolve matches is going to be better than the first by a long shot. This I completely because, agree, uh, IG. Even if <laughs> Tier 4 is not in right away, and look at this, we have what could be the final fight of this match, folks. Legendary coming Legendary. in once again. Kaiser Tim oh almost dead. Goodness. Kaiser Tim goes down right away. That is the second strike on Kaiser Tim. This is bad Aegis, for DTR. This is turn the entire fight around because he is almost down already. They're not going to be able to get him up, I don't think. Even with them trying to burst it, they are still... Gentleman to... Squirrel make it up. Decoy Killer oh about to go down. Half-Life half right here decoy killer goes down and things oh. are looking bad for dtr right now kaiser tim doing what he can to avoid that damage guidance oh, guidance raise. goes on decoy legendary oh going goodness. to take out decoy but that orbital chases Armor him gone. off for a split Armor second just... the dome drops decoy killer is up and once again ready to fight they may have recovered from this but legendary Armor will now back off and I get to fight again say... He has to run Aegis, this is it, he needs to leave, like, he can definitely still pull this out, because he did get two strikes on support, as well as a strike on a fantastic job there uh, of, of keeping your head in the game, and pulling out, uh, uh, what I'm trying to check and make sure I've got this right, two on Kaiser Tim, one on Decoy Killer, uh, although I will say this, the Guidance has not yet popped his personal shield in any of these fights we've seen at not all. Not even once. He does a great job saving it for when it is needed. And you know what? With only about 16 minutes left, he does need to make a play. Legendary needs to make something happen. And DTR needs to not play like they did in that last engagement. Look, checking their positioning once again, switching preemptively as Legendary looks for the right position on them. He comes in over the mines, blown up by Fire Breath. He does catch one mine, though. Rock throw on Decoy Killer. They do dodge behind the rocks. And I think I heard the dome come down. Yes, yes, dome and Legendary down. is actually caught in a dome that he tried to escape for once. Great play by the Gentleman Squirrel. Orbital comes down again, chases him off. Oh rock goodness, throw on Decoy rock Killer. Animation. Decoy Killer may go down again. Can't keep himself alive. Switches to Kaiser Tim and the Gentleman Squirrel now. Decoy Killer catches the Leap Smash. And oh man, this does not look good for DTR is down but the armor is gone as well Aegis Guidance has been keeping up that const uh, that constant yep. damage this is this is legendary now trying to punish decoy killer 
Oh, oh and he catches the gentleman squirrel with a rock throw. Guidance. Oh, this could be bad. This is very bad. Guidance taking time off of that res to try and, uh, taking time off that punishment to try and res. Great Kaiser play Tim by the gentleman squirrel up. there, though. Gets the, gets Kaiser Tim back up and legendary runs once again. Oh, man. Man, this, this is the most amazing stage three relay fight I think we have seen in the history of the Sunday Cup. And look at that. He gets half armor and goes right back in. He doesn't want to wait anymore. Kaiser you know, Tim guidance. caught out alone. The out in the open, still? switches, goes on the Guidance. Guidance doesn't have personal shield right now, I don't think. No, it's He doesn't, down. Down. and he goes down. Legendary now backing off. Okay, Legendary's gonna go off and get more armor now. He got one strike on the Guidance. That's what he needed. And he is now gonna back off. He was pummeling the Guidance and keeping him tumbled there, Aegis. And the other two characters still able to take out four bars of armor uh, uh, for that trade. I mean... Uh, he just barely got out in time before he started taking permanent health damage, which he absolutely has to at this point. Um, but oh my goodness, it's 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 hard to say how this is going to turn out because any any random bad like any bad knock from a rock throw is going to end this fight. But if they're able to keep doing it how they've been doing it, this is theirs. And he does initiate with that fire but flame breath again, coming in to try and pop all those mines, and he doesn't actually get them all down this time. Guidance taking the rock throw. He's tanking it with the, the personal shield, unable to, uh, uh, Goliath, unable to break that right now. The armor already gone down. Yeah, and Legendary is scared now. He is not used to seeing this kind of defensive play, this amazing teamwork on the part of DTR. You know, I will say Legendary, in my opinion, has done an excellent job of keeping his head. If I went in there and engaged the first two times and got absolutely nothing, got myself down to a third life, and then only finally got my first strike, I, I still, like, I don't know how to explain it, but it takes a lot of mental toughness to be able to do what he's done and to keep coming back time after time and just engaging for long enough to get a strike. Yeah. Yeah, it. you're right. It takes immense mental fortitude. And Legendary oh. is showing that here today. He's going to come back in at full armor. This Almost is going to be rough, but we do have Decoy Killer, that's Lord Vengeance, dropping in at the LZ, 150 meters away. Odds almost 50-50 right now, Aegis. Um, it is anyone's game. And look at that, they were forced out of position in order to get near, uh, in order to get near um, Decoy Killer. That's Lord it's Vengeance at the LZ. Legendary is going to try and start attacking the relay instead of, of attacking them when they're not in this position they've been in the whole time. Yeah, it's yeah he's like going to let them come to him. It seems like that's not the, the place I'd want to fight as they've been taking it to him. Oh, great cloak right there. Kind of creates some initial oh, wow. confusion. Oh, taking half of his health already down. Remember that those two strikes lower his health pool by 50%. Uh, uh, oh my goodness. Kaiser Tim taking damage. However, he does drop the defensive orbital. Fantastic job here. Leaf smash. Whoa! Comes in Leaf smash onto three people. Decoy Killer may go down here as well. Kaiser Tim and Decoy Killer down. Guidance needs to pop that shield and dish out whatever damage he can. It is down to Guidance and the Gentleman Squirrel. TRS employees versus Legendary. The Goliath from Israel and the Gentleman Squirrel goes down. Rock throw into Guidance and Legendary wins that game by the skin of his teeth. Oh my gosh, Aegis. My what an amazing game. Oh man. <laughs> wow. Wow. My <laughs> adrenaline right now. That I, I felt like I was in that match myself. Amazing play on the part of both teams right there. That was insane footwork on the part of DTR. I, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what do you say after that? You My know, heart is racing. You know, I do want to. I do want to bring it back a little bit and just mention something. Like, I, I feel like they've done a fantastic job there. DTR, like nobody can knock what what DTR did there. It's fantastic. But I wonder something. Um, they were using Markov in order to set up mines every time, and they were using those mines as, as hopefully to try and deal some extra damage. And they only. Of, of the probably 40 plus mines they set up, Legendary was able to come in with a single flame breath almost every time and pop all five mines with the first initial flame breath. Yeah, he I, caught, I he caught only a few mines there. He did catch a few. Um, 
but it's the it's the health nerf to the mines that it's, make it so much easier for them to be destroyed, especially by a Goliath. They're almost which, insignificant against a Goliath. Which really makes me wonder why why we continue to see, uh, you know, and they're, they're already insignificant against uh, Kraken. It makes me wonder why we continue to see Markov, even though a third, like, solely Markov, even though a third of his, his uh, uh, weapons are, are very ineffective against, you know, two of the biggest monsters that are used right now. Because we, we don't see a whole lot of Wraith recently. Yeah, you're right. We really don't see any Wraith anymore in competitive play. A lot of competitive players feel that after the nerf to Wraith, um, he's really not as viable in competitive play. He doesn't have the health or the armor to survive any sort of significant engagement against a team with skilled footwork. And you know, if that was a Wraith against this DTR team right here, that Wraith would have been twice dead. At yep. least. At Absolutely. least twice dead. Uh, oh, <laughs> oh my goodness, though. It's very rare that you see a Goliath able to pull this kind of evasion play as well as Legendary is able to do it. Just unbelievably impressive every time I see it. Um, let's see if we have any update on how Aurora Symphony did in his game as well. All right, great call. Let's check that real quick. Yeah, Brain finally starting to wake up there, Aegis. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. If you weren't awake after that match, then I don't know what could possibly wake you up. That was <laughs> amazing. That was the a great way to start off this quarterfinals. Um, it has been a long time since I have seen a match that good. Intense, and I hope we get to see. I, I think that they're going into med lab now, if I'm not mistaken, Aegis. Um, Going to be another interesting play because I feel that this is a fantastic map for Goliath. I, I feel like that this is a really Goliath way to map, especially the sneaky, uh, the, the really quick sneaky play that uh, that Legendary seems to be taking. What do you think uh, they're going to try and switch up here to try and counter this play? Uh, I, I think they might be going with a Maggie. I think so too. If they if they had taken a Maggie in that last game... It, it wouldn't... I, they, it might I, not have... Yeah, no, I, I know what you're saying. They, they He wouldn't have been able to get the distance. Yeah, yeah, I really think it would have worked out um, a lot better for them, but I don't think that they were anticipating having to fight a full health Stage 3 Goliath around the relay. Uh, you know, taking Abe, they were uh, anticipating getting an early chase, getting some early domes, and, I mean, he dodged, what, like four domes that game or something? He did. Uh, I think it... I, yeah, I think four is 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 spot on there, Aegis. Uh and and a fantastic job every time he was in there. Um, it was it was by the skin of his tail, but it. Ah. We'll see how DTR decides they're going to react to this. Um, something is going to change. They, they they are a team that is very fluid, and and I'd like to see if we can spot how much how much of a change they decide to make in response to this. Yeah, they are clearly taking their time to discuss what to pick next. They are going into the next set of picks right now. Uh, it looks like... Hold on just a minute. Uh, someone is saying 1-1 one, one in chat, so we may have an update here. Um, DTR's I, Monster Aurora Symphony may have won that last game as well, uh, so we could have a tie. Um, if we could get a confirmation in chat, I see, uh, I see that someone is saying 1-1. One, one. Um, if that is official, please let us know. Please let us know if Aurora Symphony did beat Wolves Esports Hunters. I can actually ask the players too. Give me just a moment here. Not a problem, mate. Just once again, everybody, if this is your first time here in the channel, please make sure you hit that follow button. It is very free. It is very fantastic. You'll get an update every time we go live for either the ESL Go Free Evolve or the ESL Go Free Evolve Sunday Cups. You'll also get any notifications when Black Ages goes live, playing many of the other games that he decides to play on here, though probably none more so than Evolve. You can usually join him here during the weekday when he scrimmages with a lot of the same players you're seeing here in the weekends. Um... I, I, not many of you may be aware, but Aegis is a professional player himself. The, his team actually went and, and took packs. Yeah, yeah, we did. We did. And those videos uh, I should be obtaining later this week, I think, from 2K. They will be the high-definition versions that will be going up directly on YouTube. So if you haven't caught the chance to watch the PAX East Pro-Am from last month, uh, you will be able to see that uh, those videos 
on my channel. Uh, you can just follow at the YouTube link and down below. Um, we do have VODs from many of the past tournaments as well, and more are getting uploaded throughout the week. And another reminder, we only have this many teams this week because so many more people have decided that they want to get competitive and, and go for this Go for Evolve Sunday Cup uh, with 100 euros on the line every week. Entry is free. If you guys are interested, go to the, uh, uh, you know what, we'll, we'll put a link in chat. Um, but head over there, get your team signed up, and get practicing because as we've seen here, uh, some of these new teams are getting in and doing fantastically. Yep. Um, whoa, just... Oh, so great. Yeah, yeah, it's great to actually see such an amazing turnout this week. To see to see so many more new teams show up and to see some real growth. Um, I think it's really, really good news. And on top of that, talk about growth. We have an entire new league starting, the EHL, the Evolve Hype League. That's correct. If you're wondering what the hype is about, this is it, folks. Uh, Evolve Hype League is a league that was designed around a lot of the rules that the current competitive players want to play. Um, it's a really interesting setup. I really recommend that you head over to their website and check it out. Um, I think we'll link it again here in chat. Yeah, go ahead and link that. And while you're pulling up that link, I do have some information uh, from chat. If anyone didn't happen to notice already, uh, people in chat are confirming that Aurora Symphony, the monster player for DTR, did pull off a win. So it is now tied one to one in this best of five quarterfinal series. This is it. This is the round of eight. We have uh, a second round coming up of uh, one game of each side, the Hunters and the Monsters of both teams. Should the score get tied once again 2-2, we will see another best of five here today. I love these best of five matches, Aegis. I, I don't like the, the current rules. I don't think anybody's very very thrilled about the current rules where, where you know essentially the higher seed gets to pick what they want. Um, but I do absolutely love the pressure that gets put on these teams in these final best of five. Uh, just <laughs> you, you, we end up seeing fantastic play um, um, just because they're they're forced into it. I'm wondering, you know, what we're going to see on Legendary's part because even though he won, I wonder what he's going to change up this this match. Aegis, that was not an easy win. That was not a comfortable win. That's that's definitely not something Legendary. Like he's definitely happy that he won, <laughs> no. but it's it's not something he's going to be. Uh, just happy repeating. No, not at all. Um, he has got to be very, very nervous going into that next game because, I mean, it was obvious on the part of both sides. They played their heart out, and that was such a close game. I, that was, you know, I wish I had timed it, but what was that, a 14-minute relay fight or something? Almost. They they started the, 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 the relay fight at eight minutes ages, so from eight yeah. to, to wherever it ended, it was, it was very, very long. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, I mean, you know, we had that two-minute timer, so it was at least 12 minutes, right? Yeah, Not to mention however much time the clock was frozen for. Once the clock hits that two minutes left in the game, once it hits the 18-minute mark and the game is supposed to end at minute 20, the clock will freeze any time combat starts. Yeah, which which does make it so that it gets kind of interesting there at the end of the game. The, the match goes on as I guess it's kind of like Fight Club. It just the the match goes on for as long as it has to. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yep, for as long as needed, as long as combat is still going on and the clock is not ticking down. Um, and man, I I can't wait to get into this next game. I'm wondering know, if just... <laughs> uh, if both teams are taking a break to regroup and recollect their thoughts because. I almost think, oh, no, we are getting right into the game right now. Awesome. So they say, just finish up, finished up their picks. Um, we will be getting into that in just a moment. I'm excited to see what they picked. They took a lot of time there. Probably some of it was a break to recollect, but there was also most likely some discussion as well, trying to figure out what would be best to play, um, how they should switch up their strategies, because obviously they don't want a repeat of last game. They don't want to be put in a situation that tense. You always want to give yourself as much leeway as possible. Yeah, it's 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 very interesting. I, I wonder what he what he could possibly feel like he is going to switch up there. The only thing I could figure is, um, you know, his build is essentially set. I think his build is is kind of maximized for the way that he plays. It's going to be good for this maps this map area. The only thing I could say is just positioning here. Um, um, I, I don't think there's a lot that Goliath can really switch up. What what perk do you suppose he took there? It looked to me like he had feed speed. 
No, he's going to take DI or DR. Um, he's probably going to take DI, I think. Uh, right now, um, just from all my conversations with uh, a lot of the competitive players in the scene, everyone says... Have you spoken as long as series specifically is what I was asking. No, I, that I haven't. You really See, think he's like I'm something wondering, different? I, here's why, because watch when he was... At least I'll go back and watch it again uh, later and, and, and let you know. It, it was very fast. It was incredibly fast. And that's what I know a lot of Goliath players pick just because yeah. it allows them to do the rage feed really, really quickly, even while Hunters uh, are directly on the tail. Look at what ah, we have here. Griffin. We've got the Griffin switch up. And you know, if they had Griffin that last game... I think it would have been completely different. That's Griff the Tank, as Maniac Squirrel likes to call it, Griff the Tank, that is Griffin plus Hank, together turns Griffin into an amazing tank, able to lock the Goliath in place with the shields from Hank to protect him from damage, and then the ability to even drop orbitals right when Griffin gets that harpoon off, um, if yeah, they have it's... perfect timing. And it is a great show. It's something that I have seen Maniac Squirrel do um, since the Alpha, actually, back in October of last year. It's the Space Boon combo, Aegis. It's fantastic. It's so satisfying when they do get it off. And I've seen this particular team practice that a couple of times. All right, and I here we I... go into game number two of this best of five series. Let's get some hype up in chat right now. If you want to see Legendary, the monster from Wolves Esports, take the win here today. Let's see some OPOPs in chat. And if you want to see DTR, DefendTheRelay.com with Maniac Squirrel and company playing here today, then let's see some Pog Champs up in chat. This is it, folks. This game right here will more than likely determine who advances or whether there is a tiebreaker. Uh, DTR will m need to take a win here today if they really want to hold on. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I'm, I, I don't know how the other match went. Um, I... It's funny because Aurora Symphony probably one of the, it, it, probably my pick for for best Kraken, and uh, he's facing against probably my pick for best Goliath. Um, you, you know what I mean on the other team. Right. Um, so it's 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 going to be interesting. I think that the monsters are re might end up carrying this match over. Um, I don't know though because that, that last one was so close. I, I really would like to know more about that that Aurora Symphony match. Oh well, and it does look like they're closing in really close here. He's got them kind of separated on 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 the outside of this canyon, and they are going to gain vision of him. But coming in on sure all sides, the dome comes down. It gets the harpoon, locks him into the dome. We have a stage one dome against Legendary, the monster player, and he is in all-out panic mode right now, trying to avoid as much damage as possible. In a terrible position as a stage one Goliath here, Aegis. Absolutely horrible. He doesn't have a whole lot of places to run. He can kind of come inside this cave system, but he is trapped. He can't inside loop. Of here. This is a great place to dome. That was a perfectly placed dome. Usually you create one or two loops when doing this, but look at this everywhere he tries to go. It's a dead end, and the entire DTR Hunter team is on him in full on damage mode. Even Lord Vengeance, Decoy Killer, on Kyra, dropping Napalm grenades Orbital instead of heals. Down, Oh, he doesn't quite take very much damage from that orbital, but he does run directly into the minefield. He's able to take a few out with the flame breath, and he does run to the other side of the map. He is going to get a little respite here. He does have about 20 seconds left inside the dome ages. I think they're going to take half health before he gets out of here. He does have evolve up, but if they're able to keep the pressure on like they have been, I don't think he's going to be able to get the evolve. Don't yeah, down. I don't know if he will. Oh, wow, great harpoon by Griffin, locking him in place right when the dome comes down, allowing them to get a little bit of extra damage. And this is a stage one Goliath already down to half health. Harpoon after harpoon, Aegis, fantastic. And he's going to have to climb here, and I'm almost... Oh, very close. He almost got harpooned again on the climb, Aegis. That would have pulled him all the way back down. Yeah, it would have. You're right. Oh. Barely missing that. Evolving in every monster's favorite evolve spot. But you know what? Look at how close Gentleman They're Squirrel right is. 70 just... meters away. He blows his jetpack now. He's going to try and get in. He's got that dome ready. And does he throw it? Does he throw it? Let's see. He's holding it. He's holding it. He's He throws the he's dome out. right now. He will be in. Great harpoon, harpoon right there. Locks him in place. We have three re leap smash, two rock throw, and one fire breath from Legendary. But this could be it. He has no armor. 
Cage has quickly got our answer as to what they're going to do different, and that is not going to let him escape that dome by squirting or by just jumping out the outside and using his leap smash and his traversals to get out. Um, they have locked him down with this harpoon. Maniac Squirrel down to half health, though, doing a really good job of being able to focus and keep the damage up on either Kaiser Tim or Maniac Squirrel. Both down to half. Decoy Killer down to half as well. Gonna have to choose. Kaiser Tim gets leap smashed out. Decides to cloak. Gentleman Squirrel is down. Wow, Gentleman Squirrel goes down in the chaos. Lord Death, Decoy Killer, unable to keep him alive because the damage was split up so much across the entire team. Now, he took stage two, but he has no evolve energy now. Uh, he's just got what he gained from bursting down the Gentleman Killer, though I will say he's done a way better job of splitting up the damage between characters, getting everybody to about half, and then focusing on who he wants. Um, you essentially force Kyra to have to either focus herself or somebody else. He's not getting away very well, though, Aegis. Um, I, he, I, I'm concerned about him making it uh, uh, to, to uh, even get his armor up. Yeah, and let's look at the minimap real quick. Let's look at how close the rest of the team is. Look at that. Assault flushing all by himself with the rest of the team together. I love seeing that. That is the non-traditional 3-1 split, and I love to see more Hunter teams using it now. He is in a ton of trouble here, Aegis. The dome is probably up in about 15 seconds. Oh, yeah. Well, proving that he's absolutely capable of harpooning a uh, legendary anywhere he's at. On the and map. look at that! Another dome with the harpoon locks him in place, oh. and they have another dome! Legendary oh. has not dodged a single dome yet this day, but he goes hard on Decoy Killer. Guidance in with the lightning gun. Kaiser Tim shields. He goes on Kaiser Tim. Rock throw barely misses the rock throw. Kaiser Tim, though, they're doing a great job of dodging into. Oh, oh my gosh, Kaiser Tim down to almost have health. Down yep, the little corner. Rock throw takes. Rock throw on Decoy Killer. He's going to shift to Kyra, but the shields will keep Decoy Killer alive. Goliath onto Kaiser Tim. He catches a bunch of landmines. Kaiser Tim goes down, but Legendary has no life and no armor left. This could be it right here. Finishing off that final sliver of health, and DTR takes round number two against Wolves Esports. You know, he fought to the end, Aegis. Legendary wow. really, really fought to the end there. Yeah, what a definitive win there. All it took was that Griffin switch up. Look at that. A stage one, conclu or stage two, actually. He did get the evolve off. A stage two conclusive finish. You know, man, <laughs> a great I can't even think straight after those two games. I, you know, I was actually just going to say, I, I, I finally started to piece together exactly what happened there, Aegis. Um, I, I said it in the match there a little bit, but I just want to talk about it. Uh, DTR taking the, taking the time to like think about what actually lost us that match. And they, they very accurately pinned that down. What lost them that first match was his ability to just get out of the dome almost at will. Um, just because they had nothing to lock him down and keep him in place. And by simply switching it up and, and using Griffin's ability to lock the monster down, they completely turned it from, from a really close match that was really hard for them to win into, you know, what seemed to me like like a, kind of a walk in the park. I mean, they, they took two strikes, but it was both uh, during times when they were punishing the monster. Yeah, yeah, they were strikes that didn't matter. They were more than fair trades in the side of DTR. And, you know, they were perfectly acceptable. They weren't even due to misplays. It was like they were deliberately staying in and getting that strike in order to dish out three times as much damage as was exactly. being dealt to them. Exactly. And they do something that is that I've only ever seen really high-level teams do, which is they, they, they almost health bait where, where they let somebody get to half health and, yep. you know, knowing that they're going to be able to shield and heal, they, they, they let the monster chase them around for a bit. Um, and I love it. That's that's that's. Uh, I love seeing that. Um, you, you see how effective it is because the monster just sees red and and is kind of almost forced to over engage, hoping to get the strike. Yeah. Yep. And uh, it I mean, it is a brilliant play. It works out so well, so many times because you know the monster can't ignore it. Like it's like, what do you do when you see someone down low health, even if you know you're being health baited? Do you just ignore the opportunity? You kind of well, have to go for it, right? Especially if they've already got you down to half health, Aegis. You have to feel like it was worth something to, to you know, that, that what you've done is worth something and you're right. being productive. And strikes are the only real mechanic in the game that allows a monster to feel like he's being productive against the hunter team. Right, right. The, the strikes, anytime the monster gets it down, creating a strike on the hunter, which is a permanent maximum health loss. 
Um, and you really need those strikes as a monster to be able to take out a win eventually. Oh, so yeah, I, I, I still don't know what to think. I still feel that adrenaline. My throat is actually sore from those last two games, and that never happens to me. We were talking about that last week, I think, um, how I usually don't get a sore throat. Um, normally, I don't even drink on camera, but I do need to take a drink. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's see. For anybody who's out there who is brand new to the channel, just so you're aware, this is the ESL Go for Evolve uh, 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 Sunday Cup. This is a, uh, a $100 Euro prize, and and we are currently PC only for the for the Sunday Cup, I believe. Um, there there is a Wednesday that is a Xbox, and I don't I don't know if they they're, they're not doing a PS4 yet, are they, Aegis? Uh, they are not doing a PS4 just yet. Xbox and PC for the ESL Sunday uh, Go for Evolve Cups. Um, we do have an update. Aurora Symphony did lose that last game. What? Yes, yes. <laughs> so it is a 2-2 tie right here in the quarterfinals. DTR versus Wolves Esports. And we will have a game number five. We oh will have goodness. a deciding type tiebreaker. I do believe, according to the brackets, let's do a quick check here. Not, according not to the brackets, the Defend the Relay is on the bottom, so Defend the Relay has the choice. Who will they put up against Wolves Esports? Will they put up their Hunter team, or will they put up Aurora Symphony? God. Both sides of their team has lost one game. I was just going to say, not just a tiebreaker, Aegis, but a tiebreaker in which both teams have shown that they're flexible and adjustable enough to, to you know, take a loss off the monster. Yeah, and yeah, then the Hunters come back and win it. It's, oh! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, you're right. And both Hunter teams came back and won the last round. You're absolutely <sighs> right about that. Mm, yep, I am. Uh, I am a speaking to. About this, but it's hard <laughs> no, to get overhyped about evolved. <laughs> no, I'm. I am extremely hyped about this too. These are the kind of evolved matches that we love seeing, that we love casting, that we love showing for you guys. I am speaking to uh, the team captains right now, trying to figure out which side is going to go first. DTR has the choice. Um, if I understand correctly, they are at the bottom of the bracket. That is the right side, so they should be able to choose. Just waiting for con confirmation on that. Let's, Once let's again, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. If you haven't done so already and you want to support the channel, you can do so completely for free by hitting that follow button down below. You will get notified when we go live throughout the week and on Sundays, of course, um, for all the different things that we have coming up from the Stage 3 podcast, which will be starting next weekend, to the ESL Sunday Cups, the Evolve hype league a brand new league that ig and myself will be casting here uh throughout the week and on the weekends also it's just more and more and more evolved the scene is growing new leagues are showing up new teams are showing up this is a great Wait, time no. for evolve ages ages i'm getting a correction in chat from maniac squirrel who says aurora did not lose aurora did not lose aurora won uh aurora one okay so we got we got trolled we got trolled. we got trolled we got trolled the hype was uh the hype was there for nothing yeah twitch uh, chat too op please right. nerf twitch chat my pulse can finally settle a little bit now yeah please nerf oh, twitch chat aurora hasn't lost yet aurora hasn't played yet okay well aurora next, hasn't played next yet. time they, they're saying that Aurora hasn't played yet, meaning he hasn't played his second game yet. Right, right. That's what I'm like. Oh, I, Aurora hasn't played his second game. Well, then let's see if we can cast it. Hold that's, on. That's, that's, that's exactly what I was trying to get to there, Aegis. <laughs> was just trying to work my mind around it for a moment there. Uh, let's see. If we can go ahead and watch Aurora Symphony, folks. Aurora Symphony uh, has done fantastic in every game I've ever cast him against. I've very rarely seen him lose, so I'm really excited uh, uh, to watch him play against uh, uh, this this Wolves Esports team who have proven themselves so capable in, in so many tournaments past. Um, Wolves Esports, let us let me just pull this up here. I want to know, I want to remember how they did last week in the overall cup, because um, I think that they took third place, if I'm not mistaken. Um, let's see... All right, so they should be starting that up in just a moment.
<laughs> yep, yep, and now Chad is catching up, hearing that uh, we thought he had played... Yes, he has not played yet. I am speaking with Aurora right now. We will try and get in and cast that match. Yep, we are aware. Well, there still will be hype because we will have another match of DTR versus Wolves Esports to cast. And fortunately, now we will get to cast Aurora Symphony. And one of the disadvantages of having both sides played simultaneously is that we can only cast one side of the matches. Um, but now we will get to catch the other half also. And going forward in the semifinals and the finals, we will looking to be cast the full series and have the games played back to back to back in order to give you guys the most amount of top tier evolve possible. And to give the teams, uh, you know, a chance to rest and strategize and, and be able to observe how their other teammate is doing. And, you know, that does seem to make a whole lot of difference for them. Just, you know, just knowing that your team's there to support you and, and, and can actually watch your play to check over into the next match and give you notes um, rather than them playing at the same time and, and, you know, having no idea what's happening. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. It's and it's you know it, I bet the teams like it too. It gives them a little bit more of a break, a little bit yeah. of time to rest and relax and like collect their thoughts, right? Well, my point is that I think that it makes it a better series when they're able to do that, just because they are able to give each other coaching in, in the interim, because they could say, hey, you know, you know, here's what you were doing there, here's how I feel like they beat you, you know, and and it gives them you know another opportunity to just make the next match that much better and that much closer. Right. Yeah, and uh, I, it's going to be exciting going forward. I, we still have a lot of Evolve left throughout the afternoon. You know, we still have all of the semifinals and the finals, and they will be that much more exciting. You're absolutely right. I'm going to go check the bracket right now, Aegis, just because I haven't done so in a moment. I'd like to see if we have any other... Nope, still yep. everybody in the corner finals. You know, there's another match. You know, I, I'm glad we're casting this one. There is another match that is going to be an interesting one. Ninja, Paja or, uh, Ninja Penguins. Penguins back... Uh, yet again, and fantastic to see them back again. After last week, taking a win, uh, taking a win off of uh, Epex Black and, and uh, Veed in the five on five. Uh, sorry, last Wednesday, uh, taking taking a win off of uh, Veed and Epex Black in the five on five Community Cup. Um, that's that's not one that we cast. Uh, that that's one of the Wednesday events. But you know, Epex Black proving that they've been doing fairly well in the tournament here. So I think that you know. This is another example of a team that has taken uh, the first month of the Go for Evolve uh, and 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 you know used it to improve pretty substantially here uh, because they're taking wins off of teams that they've lost to previously. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right, and it is great to see that from teams to see that sort of development and that rivalry brewing. So you know to to not see one team completely dominate. Um, if for those in chat wondering, Ninja Pe Ninja Penguins, NIP, they are Ninja Penguins, not ninjas in pajamas, not the same. Yeah, team. no. <laughs> it, it's completely different NIP. Yep, that's that. That's actually what I was thinking that made me say that. Unfortunately. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, it's confusing. I know it's the same thing that uh, I did with Guidance in Insane and Mind Killer um, back during the DGLP Beta tournament when we named ourselves Team Redundancy Squad. That's T R S. Nice. <laughs> Nice. I, you know, I got a little bit concerned today, just just from uh, uh, Lord Death's name change, just because I'm so used to the Lord Death. I was Decoy like, killer. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's I was messing like, with me. Did they drop Lord Death? No, like, they wouldn't. They wouldn't <laughs> drop Lord Death. He's like the best medic in the scene right now. Completely agree there. I just completely agree. Fantastic medic. Um, I've had the opportunity to play with him a few times, and I don't know that I've ever felt more more comfortable. Yes, you know, yes, that, that is the perfect me. word for playing <laughs> with Lord Death. You just feel comfortable. You feel safe. You feel like you can tank <laughs> anything. In fact, and for someone like me at least, who's not as good, um, it's actually kind of dangerous because I tend to take inappropriate risks when playing. That's correct. With him because yeah. I just I feel like I can just take out anything. Because yep, Lord Death is up, that good with the heels. Yeah, and, and you know, you end up forcing him into bad positions. I know what you mean there. Um, all right, do we know, do we have, uh, uh, you've been talking to, to Aurora Symphony. Do you have an ETA on the match there, Aegis? Uh, I do not yet. They are discussing some things right now. Um, looks like there is possibly uh, some sort of contest going on right now with the admins, with one of the teams and the admins trying to get that sorted out. 
and then hopefully uh, Aurora Symphony will be able to play. He is waiting and ready to go. We just have to get the other side of things sorted out. Yeah, just taking a short break right here. Hold on one second. Let me contact the other teams. All right. How's chat doing today, guys? Uh, it is going to be a minute before I'll be able to see it, but it's absolutely phenomenal to see 420 of you out here today to come see this Go Free Evolve community put together Sunday Cup. I, we absolutely love your support. Folks, if you haven't done so already, please head over to Black Aegis' Twitter channel, and if you want to help try and promote the, the Go Free Evolve uh, uh, Sunday Cup, we have a fantastic graphic that, that he's tweeted this morning. Give that a tweet to your other friends and see if we can get some other people to, to know that this is happening. Um, I, we, we just, it's fantastic. I, I can't, we, I'm so on a high right now, uh, from you guys and, and from the amount of support and for the amount of growth that we've seen in the Go Free Evolve ESL scene that it's just, it's staggering. Um, thank you guys so much for being here once again. Let's see. It does look like... All right. <clears throat> All right, and so that will be Evolve Hype. We are still waiting uh, to see what happens there. Let me see. Um, I know I saw Banai in chat earlier. I don't know if that means that Hard On You has played Ninja Penguins yet or not. All right. No other updates on my side, Aegis, other than Team Evolve. Oh my goodness, wait, there is a big update here, Aegis. Team All Evolve right. hype beats out Team Eyes on you. Oh, yeah, uh, yes, yes, you're, you're right. That's a huge update. We saw Insane <laughs> in chat, and uh, I think we saw Binges in chat also, and some of the other Eyes on You players as well. Yeah. Wow, that's fantastic. Team Eyes on You having done... Uh, phenomenally well the, the previous few weeks and only getting stronger as time goes on taking it to or taking a loss off of a I, I don't want to call them a new team eh, just because they have been around for a while but um, uh, uh, hasn't done a whole uh, well let me pull them up real quick um, you know they've only played in you know three four five and six yeah so, so they jumped in in week three and have, have done kind of okay since then. Um, goodness, it's it just just reminding me about a lot of different things. Um, like, for instance, they took a loss off of Team Vidir, and that's somebody that I, I, I don't see here today that I kind of am curious about because they were a fantastic team. Um, I wonder, yeah, I guess probably just Schedule conflicts, I would assume. Right, Aegis? Uh, uh, Team Vidir? Uh, yes, Vidir. Um, their, uh, their team captain, Jared, actually is out of town for the entire weekend. It was something that he has been planning for months now, apparently. I'm not sure what exactly is going on. You know, probably a vacation or a business trip or something. Um, but yeah, he is out of town for the weekend, so they are not able to play. That's why they weren't able to play any Evolve Hype League matches tomorrow. We were originally scheduled to cast Evolve Hype League yesterday, um, but yes. we were going to we were going to cast both sides of Vidir's uh, twelve matches, and uh, unfortunately, we couldn't do those uh, because he is out of town for the weekend, and all the other teams in the league uh, are playing their games later on throughout the week, which we will be getting to if possible. You know, we might as well talk about that since we've got a minute to talk about that, Aegis. EHL, the Evolve Hype League, uh, uh, like we said once again, folks, I'm going to go ahead and link this again into chat. Evolve Hype League, just a fantastic community that's being put together. Uh, slightly different rules um, uh, as far as the match format goes and very different rules as far as the bracket format goes and the way that the, the matches are played out. Um, here is the link. I think that you guys should be hearing me talk about that just about now. There you are. Uh, go check that out. We really hope to see you here uh, when we do get to cast those. And if you do want to know when those games are going to be cast, you need to go follow uh, either Black Aegis or myself over on Twitter uh, and, and get some advanced notice and some advanced warning before, before we do get to cast those. As we mentioned, they're never going to be on a specific day. 
essentially the teams get their assignments and then they kind of have a gentleman's agreement as to when it's going to be played the following week. And we're just going to have to catch that when we can. Right, and their deadline is the preset schedule time. So their deadline is always set, the schedule time is always set for Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern and 3 p.m. Eastern for the different matches. They can reschedule any time in the week beforehand, but they must be played by that time. So we will almost always have at least two games for you on Saturdays, um, as well as the Stage 3 podcast coming up right after that. And let's get that muted real quick. Uh, I think... I think, yep, okay, we're good now. <laughs> it was uh, yeah, a, a pretty loud that. cell phone ringtone right there. Yes, it is. Got it completely muted now. Yeah. I forgot it was on, Aegis. Yeah, those Samsung phones, I recognize the ringtone because <laughs> I own one myself. Actually, we've, we've been doing that before, Aegis, where you and I will be hanging out off cast and one of our phones will go off and we and have we... the exact same two ringtones and so we both are like... Yep, <laughs> yep. <laughs> I've done that plenty of times. All right, so it looks like uh, there will be a delay in the fourth and potentially final game of DTR versus Wolves. Um, there is some sort of admin contest going on right now. So currently we are looking at getting in on Hard on You versus Ninja Penguins. We'll be able to check out Hard on You's uh, new team setup, uh, their new monster player, Dat Newt. Um, who, well, he, I guess he's not new to the scene, but he is new to the team. I believe someone may have told me that he is subbing, actually. Let me confirm. Hi, Pipe. That's right, guys. We're going to be moving into another match. I, I am excited to finally be able to cast a game by Ninja Penguins. We've never been able to cast one of their games. I've been watching their team for a while now. Um... This is going to be good. And I am excited to see this new monster uh, 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 get moving for this other team here, Aegis. Um, do we... I, I'm kind of sad that this is getting held up. Do we know what the contest... It, was, it, was it about that previous match? Uh, no, no. It's about the final match. Um, we should we should be good to go, though. Let me see. I am... Okay, so talking to Datnoot right now, we will be casting... Uh, we will be casting his game first, I believe. They're not in game yet, though. They are still just getting set up, waiting for Ninja Penguins. Uh, and that dude is subbing. He is not an official player on Team HOY. He is just subbing in for the day since Elevate is not playing. Okay, so that should work out very well for them. We know Datnoot is a pretty good monster player. Uh, definitely one of the top tier monster players in the competitive scene right now. Uh, so we just have to wait for them to finish getting set up. And uh, then let's see. Maybe, maybe by that point in time, the resolution between Wolves Esports and uh, DTR will finally be resolved, and we can go forward with that as well. I sure hope so, Aegis. Um, it, it always is uh, kind of hard when when administrative stuff ends up being what holds the day and, and ends up holding other teams up from being able to move on. Um, I am excited to see. Uh, I see. I am excited to see. Uh, uh, um, Sheer excellence back in here. I think I mentioned that earlier. And and Team Sith Evolve, after picking up a new monster, having done phenomenally well uh, last week on Saturday, Aegis. All right. Uh, just, I'm sorry about that. Just checking with the monster player right now. Dat Newt is jumping into into the game right now, into Evolve. Uh, I just saw him load it up, so... I'm trying to see if they have finished picks and bans yet or not. Yeah, we should be jumping into another game in just a moment. Just hang tight, folks. As soon as I find out if they have finished picks and bans yet or not, um, then we will either jump right into a, into a game or take a very, very short five-minute break while they finish that up. Thank you once again for being in chat. You guys are the real the, the, the real people who make this possible. If there wasn't anybody to watch, I don't think any of us uh, 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 would really be here, and I don't think that Evolve or Go for Evolve would be nearly as big as it is today. So thank each and every one of you for being here. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sharing and talking about Evolve and, and getting the word out there and, and playing with us, guys. Um, I don't know, Aegis, are you going to be doing any kind of play session after the stream today? Oh, uh, we may, depending on how long it goes for. Uh, we may or we may not, depending on what the time is. Um, the Sunday Guys, casts, uh, it always depends on how long they go for and how tired I am. If it goes really long, 
Uh, usually I don't have time to eat in the morning and I haven't oh, yeah. eaten yet. No, so usually I, I want to take a break and get some dinner right away. Yeah, I was just going to try and make people aware. If this is your first time here in the stream, if you're not aware yet, that's another reason to follow Aegis is because there are community games happening in here all the time for Evolve. It's fantastic. It's a good place to come and meet up with people and just, just be able to pick up a new five-man, meet some new people and run scrims. Well, yeah, that would be the idea. That's that's exactly what I would like to do. Uh, still working on streaming more often throughout the week. And um, hopefully going forward in the future, that's exactly what it'll be like. Um, all right, so we do have the picks in. Dam is first, Medlab is second, and Distillery will be the tiebreaker. Ooh, good picks there. Good picks. I, I haven't seen a good Distillery play in quite a while. Yeah, yeah, I haven't either. Now okay. I'm going through the record here. Let, let's 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 uh, remind everybody. Team Sith Evolve uh, doing. They, they took second, didn't they, in the overall cup? Uh, uh, Aegis. I I believe that's what they took last Saturday. Was was second. Um, yes, they did. They did take second. Actually, I think pick, picking up a new monster player, Bugsy. Um, no, 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 no. What are we talking about? Team Sith took first. Team Sith evolved. They, yeah, they took yeah, first. They took what first. am I saying? Not second. Yeah. They took first. They won it. They yeah, absolutely. It was the it was a beautiful underdog story. Yeah. Goodness, my brain is gone. Um, uh, yeah, I know, I know. After those DTR matches, I still can't think straight. All right. Oh, uh, it looks like we are actually jumping into the next game. But continue what you're saying. Yeah. Um. As as we're hopping in here, Team Sith taking on um uh. uh Sheer Excellence, who is another team that has just kind of sat in the background, but has very recently started to to do, uh, you know, a lot better. Uh, just a reminder: Team Sheer Excellence did participate in uh, uh, the Go Free Evolve Cup number two with Dusty Harpoons last month. They also were in number three where they got beat out by Eyes on You, um, and so it's good to finally see them back in for number six. You know, we, they've they've been out for a couple of weeks now. Okay. Looks and like uh, it looks, looks like, like you're queuing up as monster there. <laughs> yep. <Aegis>. Yep. <laughs> it did stick me as the monster for some reason. That was odd. I was I think... wondering if this was. I was wondering if this was some kind of special surprise. Uh, uh, hey, guess what I'm playing today? <laughs> no, no, no. That that was an Aegis fail. That was me not hitting the observer button on time and just randomly getting assigned to play the monster. I was hoping that wasn't going to happen. As soon as I realized I didn't hit the button on time, I had my fingers crossed off camera, but of course it did happen. That was a classic Aegis fail right there. Well, no matter. The game is quickly restarted, and we are getting right back in. Perhaps that should be an emote. You know, and speaking of emotes, folks, if you do use better Twitch TV, it is a free uh, Chrome, IE, or Firefox plugin that you can get. Um, you do have emotes that are local to the channel that you can use completely for free through Better Twitch TV, which, like I said, is also free. Google it, download it, highly recommend it. There's a ton of features, and uh, it's worth it just for the dark mode alone, which makes it so much easier on the eyes when you're using Twitch. Yeah. But you do have free emotes in this channel. You can type Aegis Shield and Aegis Heart to show some love if you want to. Uh, perhaps we should get an Aegis Fail in here as well. I can register three more emotes. So if you sorry, have any sorry, ideas, please let sorry us know. Sorry to interrupt you. There. Sorry to interrupt you there, Aegis. There is a lot of confusion in chat. I, I needed to go over this real quick. Um, uh, DTR and Wolves Esports, neither of them have been eliminated yet. They are waiting on a decision from the admins. We are switching over to a different set of matches. We will return to watch Aurora Symphony uh, play his other match for everybody in chat who's who's confused about that. We will be back. <laughs> yes, um, DTR versus Wolves Esports is currently hung up and tied 2-1 right now. But right All now right. we're watching... Dat Newt. Uh, Dat Newt on the monster player, on the monster right now for Team HOY. That's hard on you. And for Ninja Penguins, we have Rune on Assault playing Markov. We have Savvy on Medic playing Kyra. We have Twinshot on Hank playing Support. And we have Nightwayne on Trapper playing Maggie. You know, this team has a lot of character. I, I, <laughs> I'd i like to see them do well here, but this is a really tough opponent to try and, and take a win off. I've never seen Dat Newt play either, so this is all new for me. But I do know that if he's playing for HOY, he must have some pretty exceptional skills, Aegis, uh, because they they <laughs> they have a pretty high skill cap, and, and they're, they're pretty demanding as far as uh, uh, who they decide to play with. 
Yes. Yes, they are. We know uh, we have had people try out against them and get utterly demolished while HOI was looking for a new monster player. Uh, we've seen that Dat Newt play for Team Elevate before, and his play has always been very, very oh, well done. Oh, my point. goodness. Just wow. Goes down on Barely the escapes that dome. There. Unbelievable. This is a bad place for Dat Newt as well. He does not have a whole lot of places to try and avoid damage, although I don't like that orbital Aegis. That, that, I, I think that is an example of that's not a good orbital at yeah, all. Yeah, locks him in place right there. Placed on the ground rather than against the side of the dome wall. Yeah. Um... Looks like he's going to be able to avoid most of the damage here. The assault only Look at that. just now assault getting into the assault coming dome. in behind the Kraken. That was great. That's a great way to flush out a monster. And that new <laughs> will run to the other side. Once again, trapped inside of a cave, though. Very true, Aegis. I just feel like it took Assault a lot of time to catch up here. I feel like they're almost half done here. He's exploiting the verticality. He's got about half of his armor left. And, and the dome is going to be coming down in about 15 seconds. Um... Uh, really any second now. If he gets a good Vortex out, he's going to be able to push them far enough away that he should make it out with no permanent health damage, which is a best case scenario for a monster because he's almost ready to evolve. There goes the dome. Yep, and the dome does come down. And he will escape here with his armor intact and full health and almost enough to evolve, like you said. Yeah, it, I feel like they were just spread out too far, Aegis. They, they, I don't know that they expected him to catch him that early. I definitely didn't expect him to catch him that early. Um, but but I, I really don't think they thought that was going to happen that soon because they, they were really spread out still trying to figure out how they were going to uh, surround him. All right, and it does look like he's going to get a couple of Marsh Striders and get that last little bit of Evolve energy that he needs. Oh, nope, looks like they're going to chase him off the corpse. He's only got about 30 seconds before that dome comes back up. Yeah, yeah, he needs to move fast, and he needs oh, wow. to he needs to get those points up so that he can actually get that evolve. You know, I don't this, think he's gonna be able to do it in time. He's gonna have to dodge another dome. I, I think so as well. This group of uh, flightless birds really, really putting the the fight on this flying kraken here. It's ridiculous. Go penguins! All right, and they are coming around the side of the rock. They do have him spotted, and he was able to get that armor back up. He's ready to evolve, but I, if I were him, I wouldn't do it just because they're, it's so risky right now with that dome is already back up, and, and Daisy knows right where he's at. Yeah, he is actually going to try and full armor up here, Aegis. As we can see, he's definitely going for that, for, that, uh, for that engage to try and make them force the dome. And look at the positioning on the Hunter team. Once again, Trapper just always heading off the monster, always anticipating which direction he's going to run and consistently staying ahead of him just like that yep this is going to be it and this is another good place for the hunters um i feel like there there's just oh it depends on where she gets him though because he is moving out yeah and we have hank coming in from the other side right there Don't goes down is he gonna is he gonna land all right and the dome does come down yeah there it is okay Yep, it is landed. You know what, though? This is not a good place. And it's funny how much of a difference uh, just a, like 50 yards will make Aegis, but this is an area where he has tons of opportunity to be able to, to kite around that pillar and move over to another area. Yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. He has a lot of mobility here. And it's just a, f a few inches. Um... That whole open back section, I, he didn't utilize the last time. Although, you know what? No, maybe it's not as much as we thought at first, because we still have that upper ledge that was being utilized before. Maybe it's Aegis. about five meters. Aegis, I think what's going on here is that they, they've started to get in the right position here. If you look, the support is set up on one area, and he's just punishing the monster from, from where he's at now. I think that if they all set up in four little corners, they can continually get this monster and continue to punish him. They're finally through his armor and getting into actual health. They may only have, yeah, the dome goes down now. Yeah. And he yeah, does so a great have... job of funneling those hunters through that, that tunnel as they come through and then hitting them with the vortex to try and knock them back a little bit more to create more distance there, Aegis. I like that play. Yeah, great move right there. Uh, there's not really anything that they can do to catch up when a Kraken is throwing a vortex down a narrow tunnel. You have to split off and go another way or get knocked back and slowed down. And I think he will pull off the evolve right here in everyone's favorite monster evolve spot. 
you know, the Ninja Penguins seemed looking like they were able to keep some really good aggression on, but that last dome was just kind of not a great place for them to be, and they didn't recover well after the dome came down. Look at this, though. He hits stage two 80 meters out. I think they're going to catch up to him. I don't think there's anything that he can do here, but uh, his dome shouldn't be off cooldown just yet. I don't it's think Night just... Wayne has it up. Yeah, he can't even switch he's got to about, it. He's got about 15 seconds. That's going to be plenty of time for Dead Newt to scoot on the outside and, and just go... Um, yep, Dome is coming down. Oh, Does, there it goes. Did he get him? Nope, no, he out, got through out. at the last second. Wow. Yep. Now, this is interesting, Aegis. I didn't realize that they had done as much damage as they did. Um, with his bonus health, he's now up to three quarters. They've done okay, I feel like. They did a decent engage. If they can get a good stage two engagement and get some more off of him, they might be sitting pretty come stage three. All yeah. right, and it does look like he is able to get to the other side of the map without them having really any idea just yet. Daisy is a very long way off and not going to help them all that much. Uh, they know that he's on that side of the river, but where is a big question? Oh, <laughs> till just then. <laughs> he does trigger birds. Uh, bad luck. So for those of you who are new to Evolve, triggering those birds there, those birds were watching him feed and decided they wanted a taste, came down in to get some of that, and showed the hunters his last known location. So they're going to be making a beeline to there. This is a hard place to get out of a dome, Aegis. Yeah, you're right. This is a very, very tough place. Look at this, though. He may duck. No, he backs away. I thought he was going to duck into the caves. Um, definitely not the best place for a Kraken to fight early on in the game. Yeah, he is trying to avoid it. Oh, like the plague ages, I, I I can't stress it enough. Unless he took aftershock, which which I haven't seen a whole lot of people do, um, it's just a very bad place for a kraken to fight. All right, yeah, it does... really is. You're right. Unless you have aftershock, that is a perfect point. He he banshees up and then he's doing something kind of interesting here. He hasn't really landed one, but when he does, I think we're gonna see a hunter drop in health very very quickly. He's lining up his banshee mines, uh, uh, kind of in areas where he knows that his vortex is going to launch people into. They're tumbled and they're unable to shoot the banshee mines, so it'll often end up getting all three of the banshee mines off as well as the vortex damage. Yeah, he once again, once again triggers birds though, just showing them exactly where he is. I mean, they're already doing a great job staying on him, but those birds are just making it that much easier right now. And no. Rune on Assault just railing away with that machine gun, making the monster consistently aware of the hunter's presence, saying, hey, we're not going to let you get away. We are going to stay on you and keep that pressure up. And that, that's shown very, very well, Aegis, in the fact that he's been stage two for quite some time now and still only has uh, less than half of his evolve energy full. Um, it's going to take him a while to evolve at this rate uh, if they don't finally catch him. Though he's doing a good job of kind of running around this outside racetrack, um, and they, it doesn't look like they're, they're doing much to, to keep an eye on River to be able to watch when he crosses over. Um, I do feel like they could do a better job tracking him here, Aegis. Yeah, yeah, he is uh, He is putting a lot of distance on this team, actually, considering how close they were keeping with him initially. And look well, at that. What, what I feel like is happening is he's kind of rage feeding, but he's he's doing so really smartly, where where he's pulling them just far enough that, that he has a chance to disengage and feed, and then he burns all of his traversals after they start shooting him. It's, 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 a, uh, it's a really interesting mechanic, and I think he might get away through the water here, though. Oh, you know what? He didn't decide to go sneaky. Hmm. Oh. Yep. And he he will escape here, I think. Okay, no, he no, no. He's gonna stay no, on. Eight. I think this is exactly where he wants to fight Aegis. I think that. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh wow, that was. <laughs> Trying to throw the lightning strike in between the arch there, really trying to skill shot that. Daisy is going to go Daisy? down right now. Yeah, yeah. This is you know this is a great spot to kind of test the hunters to throw out that preliminary stage two test fight. Drops the lightning strike, misses the lightning strike though. Great job on the part of the hunters, and he's going to back off. That was it. That was his test to see how observant they were to kind of just probe and see if he could catch a mistake and maybe get a quick strike. Either that. I, I, I think that that was probably his intention, but I think that the, the added bonus is if they did what they did there and just got in, like, take up positions to, to try and get into a good fight, um, while they're doing that, they don't want to drop the dome because you still have full armor and you look like you want to fight. 
So generally, conventional wisdom would tell them to, you know, trap her. Hey, don't drop the dome just yet. Wait until his armor's almost down and he's, he's trying to run. Um, so very interesting situation there. Uh, I feel like he, he was going to get domed, and because of the way that he, he kind of stopped and got aggressive, he forced them to not drop the dome just yet. Although he does trigger birds there. Oh, so unlucky. <laughs> yeah, it's been birds nonstop all game here today. Oh, and this is a really shallow area, Aegis. I think if Trapper plays this out right, this is going to be uh, the Stage 2 Dome, and this is not where Kraken wants to fight. You're 100% right about that. That is a bad place for the Kraken to fight right there. Very, very easy for the Hunters to keep aggression on him. And he does quickly make his escape across the w river and continues heading down south. Look at that, dropping the Lightning Strike, forcing Rune to blow his precious jetpack right there. But Rune just moves in the direction he wants to go already. He's going to circle around, stay on him with that machine gun if he can, and uh, force him back. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, trying to... Nightwing closing in. We could see a dome here. Oh, my goodness. Fantastic yep, dome comes down. Coming in. Fantastic lightning strike coming in as soon as uh, uh, Kyra is visible. Kyra down to just a sliver of health left. The shield comes down, but is it going to be enough? I think that he's going to tumble her down. There she goes. Oh, she's able to, to jump out first. It's not... White has enough. He's tumbling her. Orbital comes down. It's, he's going to avoid it, though. That newt, that newt staying on Savvy. And I don't think Savvy can stay alive for much longer. Shield, Lightning Strike does take Savvy out, eating through the entire shield and still doing enough damage to take out Savvy, the medic. And without a medic, things are looking real bad for the Hunter team. They drop they the dome. Daisy trying to get the res off unsuccessfully, almost dead herself. They have finally that. dropped his armor, though, Aegis. He's, he's almost down to half health now. Yeah, he canceled that lightning strike, tried to shift it onto Daisy, I think, at the last minute. Um, he does get the kill on Savvy, but that's a, a pretty tough cost for a single strike. Unless he goes right back in and can get a few he more strikes, to. then... He uh, he, yeah, okay, and he does. Lightning strike onto Twin Shot. Twin Shot dodges the lightning strike once again, continuing to rail away with those auto attacks in the air right there. Uh, Missing. In, yeah, he invises and walks up the river. Kraken completely missing there. And now he wow. shifts to Nightwing, the Trapper. And you know, Nightwing and will take some damage here. Assault. Vortex onto Rune to keep Rune away from closing in on him. And they're backing Kraken into the cave. They are doing a fantastic job without any sustain here, Aegis. I'm worried that they're going to have trouble if if he uh, uh, if they, they keep up for too long. But if you've noticed, they've already stripped off his armor. They've already almost got him down to half bar of health again. And... Uh, I don't know where the dropship timer is, Aegis, but it's it's got to be coming up in about a minute. Maybe a minute 20? Uh, yep, it's just about a minute right now. 52 seconds. All right, now's when it gets dangerous, though, Aegis, because they have split up. I think that they split up to try and increase their survival odds. Uh, assault is nowhere near them, though, and this is going to be... Oh, Nightwing takes uh, the hard shot before the shield comes down. Yeah, Shield Nightwing needs to back him. off now. I, I think that they should invis and run. Otherwise, Nightwing's going to go down too. Shield on Nightwing. They're keeping that damage up from a distance, though. Great job with the Hank shields. Nightwing finally goes down, shifts the Lightning Strike near to Daisy. Daisy goes down as well from that Lightning Strike. But Twinshot and Rune avoid all the damage, and they continue chipping away at that Noob's health. He is down to almost half health at Stage 2 now. That new playing it right, but playing it super cautious. As soon as his his uh, armor drops, he backs back out. My concern is like, yes, that is the very safe way to play it. But I think that their medic is going to drop soon-ish, and then it's going to be because of these chances to. There it is. There's the drop, uh, and it's because of these chances he's taken to get out and try and re-engage. He's about to re-engage as stage two when he could have gone out and evolved uh, onto a group of hunters that are about to have their their sustain back in. Wow, great dodge on the lightning strike right there on the part of Twin oh, Shot. The sneak pounce. Yes. Oh. Sneak pounce taking off over half his life, and it looks like Kraken will finish him right here. That new amazing play. Oh that goodness. orbital comes down though and chases him off. Twin Shot going to escape down river under the cover of his cloak with just enough life left. Oh my goodness. These uh Oh no, the dome! Yeah, oh, no. that was an unfortunate dome. He was miles away from that dome when it was dropped. These ninja penguins turning the game almost on its head, almost taking a terrible situation and turning it into a fantastic trap for the Kraken. 
but now Kraken's going to get that stage three off, and and it's essentially going to be you know uh, uh, he traded half health for a strike on on you know the two people he's really going to be coming after here in the end ages the the medic and the trapper. This is this is a nasty situation. Um, although I will say Dat Newt should have evolved already. Um, I in my opinion, just just because they they're now thirty seconds away from having the dome recharged again. I think he saw that they were a little bit too close right there. He just wants to play it safe. He doesn't want to take any chances. That's the thing. He he got that dome down. Maybe he didn't see them drop the dome, Aegis. That might be it. He might not know that the dome is down because he was running for his life when that happened. Uh, you know, the, the harpoons do come out. Not a whole lot to be able to, to prevent him from, from wrecking folks here. Looks like... Medic down to half health. Medic getting tumbled, unable to really heal herself. That Hank Shield making all the difference. Punish coming down on Kraken. Kraken down to two bars of armor. The Lightning Strike comes down. Medic finally does go down. That's two strikes on Medic. They're not going to be able to res her. Daisy already down. The, the, the dome is down here. He is locked in with them with half health left. But I don't know that they're going to have the sustain to survive here, Aegis. I think you're absolutely right here. Kyra actually dead now from that lightning strike. He is backed into a corner, but they don't have any healing. They need to drop that dome and get out. This is a stage two Kraken with a maxed out lightning strike. There's very, very little that they can... Well, you know, no, I shouldn't say there's very little. They actually could still win this. This is just very, very risky right now. Ninja Penguins doing a fantastic job. This is just a surprise. Um... Uh, very, very high level play coming out of this, although I will say the only defense they had... They just... And we have a disconnect from Dat Newt. Oh no. Let's go wow. up to the stages. Uh, uh, the only reason that the Hunters would need to stop for this disconnect were would, would be if it happened in the first 30 seconds. Um, they are, are fully able to go full on, but they're going to have to defeat this AI Kraken in order to win now. Wow, that is an unfortunate turn of events for HOY and for the for Dat Newt. You know, this might give them the time they need um, because the AI Kraken is programmed if it's out of shields to immediately run away no matter what happens. So it is just going to be on the retreat. I don't think it's going to have time to evolve itself. We'll see what happens when he connects back in. But remember, when he does connect back in, occasionally there is a, a moment where the monster just stands completely still ages. And, and that could spell death with as little health as he has left now. Yeah, this does not look good. He does drop the lightning strike. Misses it on Le Nightwing, though. And you he know, has no armor. It looks like they're going to be able to finish him right here. This Kraken just railing into Nightwing, though. Nightwing might actually go down, but with only a bar of health left, should be easy for the rest of the team to take that Kraken out. And the Medic just dropped in as well, Aegis. I, this is this is going to be the game. Nightwing does go down, taking a second strike, but Savvy's back in, and Savvy has already almost got uh, Nightwing up. This is it. Good game. It just it sucks to see it end that way. Yeah. Yeah, that was an unfortunate finish uh, to that game right right there. Dat New in the perfect position to still clinch the game for his team um, and unfortunately couldn't pull it off due to that steam crash right there. Oh, you, you hate to see something something like that in that way, Aegis, because it was a very, very close match. It really was, uh, 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 you know, it was a, it was an interesting but risky strategy that Ninja Penguins ended up pulling there. I, I would have liked to see how that ended if if they would have all stayed together. Um, you know, I, I don't I do think Ninja Penguins made the right call there. I remember, you know, you remember a few weeks ago when the monster disconnected, the hunter team chose to just stand there, and and the AI monster ended up doing a lot of damage to them, and you know the the monster never reconnected, and they ended up losing uh, because of it. So I, I believe that was the right call there was was to just engage and win it. Um, just, just tough, tough decision to make, I guess. Yeah, yeah, that's really, really rough. And you know what? While we're waiting, let me, uh, let me check the rules real quick. We'll pull that up. Um, as far as the disconnect goes, it is, it is. If a disconnect happens in the first thirty seconds, then it's a restart. After that, it is just up to gentlemen's agreement. Essentially, there's no restart required whatsoever. Did they change the delay rules? I thought that there was some rule where the teams have to sit back.
Uh, maybe they took that out. Since I haven't, I haven't bothered reading the entire rule set every single week. I just stay on top of any of the major changes. Um, I would assume I they vaguely changed remember that reading just, something just, about that. Ju just because when they did have to stand there, um, uh, essentially when when one of them disconnected, the AI monster reconnected and just started, you know, raping the hunter team because they had to stand there. Right. Okay. So it says here, after thirty seconds, the dis disconnected player has to try to rejoin the session. Um, yeah, and that's the only choice. All right, let me confer with the teams again real quick. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, I... All right, folks, and it does look Steam like... went down, like... It... You know, I, I, they, that might go down into a contest, but I think that that is probably going to uh, 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 count as a win there. I, I think that that was... That was uh, Tying it up. Let me go check the rules one more time. All right. Um, so that's uh, that should be the end of that game right there. They will be looking to go into a round number two. We're going to look to get uh, Banai from his perspective as the Hunters for HOY. Trying to talk to him right now. All right, and it's very interesting. It's 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 really interesting to see that even though Val has been buffed, she has been uh, 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 had a lot of things added to her. We we still see Cairo week after week, and I, it just I, I think if we were going to talk about like why we see that, um, it's not just her self heal. I've thought about it a lot, and she's statistically able to put out so much more damage because of the burst area of every one of her her basic heal attacks. Um, I, I don't see the Kyra uh, uh, being shaken from the meta anytime soon. Uh, you know, Slim might be the person to do that, though. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, he could be. Um, we'll have to see when they decide to allow him in-game. He did get that damage nerf, which um, really does help to balance him out a little bit. I don't know if it's enough, though. We'll have to wait and see. I mean, he was doing an immense amount of damage before. We'll have to see how much things actually change. Okay, it looks like score update. Uh, Team HOY did beat Source TV on the first match of their series as well. Uh, talking to Sorosin, the team captain, right now. Give me just a minute. All right, it does look like Sith Evolve took the win over Sheer Excellence as well, which means they're going to be moving on to the semifinals. Um, Ninja Penguins, it looks like it was a, a... Yeah, Ninja Penguins versus Hard On You, it looks like it was a Hunter win for each side, so it should be tied up 1-1. And I don't have any updates at all versus DTR versus Wolves, Yes. Uh, we are still waiting on that. They do have admins involved. I see people have been talking about it in chat um, consistently throughout the match. Still conferring with um, with Team HOY, but uh, we should have a result on that soon um, as well. Uh, going <laughs> yeah, going back to the DTR versus that nude uh, in chat. versus that nude Wolves. In Dat nude in chat really quick, uh, uh, addressing any any implications that he rage quits, <laughs> saying why would he rage quit when uh, when the medic was down? I agree, guys. I the definitely network issues there. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's very very unfortunate. Um, hopefully the next game goes better for him uh, he did do a very good job right up until that disconnect he easily could have taken that game off of them it could have gone either way i mean i would say i would say that it was about 50 50 at that point oh you know and the the other uh we, we were talking I, I interrupted you and we were trying to talk about the valkyra thing the the other thing that um a lot of people have mentioned is is just that the other problem with, with Val seems to be she reveals uh, uh, herself every time she tries to do a heal. Does that make sense? Like, Kyra is able to just drop those grenades in and it's still kind of hard to tell where she is. But even if, say, a, you know, what, it, 
essentially, like, Val has no place to hide, because the second she tries to heal somebody, a, a bright glowing green beam that points directly to, hey, this person is low, and this person is healing them. Um, it's really hard to get around a mechanic like that. Yeah, yeah, it is. Okay, and we are jumping in right away on the other side of things. We will be checking out Team HOY's Hunters now, a great team that we have seen play consistently well through every single week of the ESL Go For Evolve Sunday Cups. This is a team with a 19-1 and record in the ESL Sunday Cups. I am really excited to be able to get to watch Sorosum and Thingy again. Uh, the Thingy, probably one of my favorite characters, just or one, one of my favorite uh, uh, people around the professional Go Free Evolve scene, just because of his name. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> she, she, actually. She is she, a I would say. great Hank player, a great support player. Uh, the Thingy and Challenge, if I remember correctly, are a couple. Yeah, it's the two of them. Uh, oh. The Thingy and Challenge, that's how she got involved with the team, I believe. Why is it that I always see, you and I always seem to like uh, uh, support Aegis before yeah, I even know gee, support? Gee, I wonder why. I wonder why, IG. <laughs> yeah. It couldn't be because we both play supports, right? Could be, could be. <laughs> yeah, supports are uh, always my favorite. Although, you know, I have to say I really, really, really like playing Crow. Um, normally, I don't like playing Trapper at all, but Crow is so much fun to play. I love that Gobi. It's funny you would bring up Crow, Aegis, because there are several situations today where I felt like Crow might have might have uh, uh, pulled down a monster with his kinetic rifle, and and you know just that mechanic completely changing the way those later stage fights work. Being yeah. able to punch directly through the monster's armor and and do direct health damage. We've seen so many monsters that have, have won with very little health and and you know coming back in right. and out for armor. Right, right, uh, yeah. They go back in with a full string of armor, and then you know normally that's enough for them to win a game. But now Crow can actually shoot right through it and take them out. All right, we are still waiting on the DTR games. That's why we are casting the other side of things right now. This is Hard on You versus Ninja Penguins. Um, we are waiting to still see what happens with DTR versus Wolves Esports. That matchup is currently held up at 2-1 right now. Uh, admins are involved trying to solve things. Oh, Sith Evolved, though. That's exciting. I, I, I thought that they would do well after picking up this new monster. I didn't know that they'd become quite the dynamic force they've become. They've, they've secured themselves a position in the semifinals. Um, they'll be win they'll be taking on, you know, uh, okay, so let, let's clarify this real quick. Wolves Esports versus DTR. When that finishes up, the winner of that gets to go play Evolve Hype in the semifinals, and that'll be a fantastic match to watch. But on the other side, the winner of Hard on You versus Ninjas in Pajamas, or sorry, Ninjas in Pajamas. Wow, again. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know, of, it's confusing. <laughs> the winner of Hard on Ninja You and Penguins. Ninja Penguins yeah. uh, is going to take on Team Sith Evolve, the the first place winner of of uh, last month's cup. Um, gosh, I, I would if you would have asked me week two or week three, you know, if if Sith Evolve was 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 going to be this competitive, um, I might have not looked at you the, the same way as I would now. You know what I mean? It's 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 a really interesting dynamic. Um, I What do you think? Is it just them? Like, as far as their hunter team goes, I feel like their hunter team is growing leaps and bounds. Is it just some kind of training program that they're doing together, or have they really picked up some new players that, that I haven't noticed? Um, I don't know. Uh, you know, I, they well, they've obviously trained. Uh, it's definitely a part of their training, and just... Teams starting to come together now. We're seeing the leagues mature more, and teams are starting to come together. You know, there are a few new people, but I think Ghost Patrol's been there from day one. I think uh, War Spirit's been there from day one. And I think Minefield has been there from day one, yes? Um, no, ah. I don't think Minefield has. Anyhow. All right, folks. It is... Oh, you know what? I actually don't have any other updates. That's that's it for me. All right. So at this time, guys, if you haven't already done so, if you're brand new to the channel, please go down there, hit that follow button. It is very free. It's very sexy. It's very nice. And we'd love to see you do it because we'd love to see you here in chat more often when we're doing casting. Um, traditionally, we've just been casting the... Uh, 
ESL Go Free Ball Sunday Cup like we are right now. But here, starting next week, we're going to be doing a whole bunch of other things that are going to be happening on all kinds of weekdays. And if you want to stay in the loop, you need to uh, follow us here and follow us on Twitter uh, uh, to make sure that you're there. Uh, when do you uh, – and we're not – exactly sure but it's going to be between now and the next friday when we're going to be doing this first go free vault or sorry this first evolve hype match uh who is that again black ages that we're going to be casting um well we're still not sure i mean there are a ton of teams scheduled in that league uh we will announce which games we will be casting first um once that's been finalized we were looking to do uh uh well, possibly Epex Black and Vidir, as well as Eyes on You and Vidir. Um, but that may be later in the week. If they don't reschedule from Saturday, then we may cast some other games sooner on in the week. Hold on just a minute here. Uh, it looks like DTR has actually solved their issues. Uh, let me see. Give me one second. <laughs> All right. Folks, I'd like to go ahead and set up a, a poll in the chat right now. Of the, the, the six teams that we have remaining, I'd like to see who you all think is going to win and who you all are cheering for. Uh, let me set that up right now, actually. Stream. All right, so it looks like the resolution that they came up with is that the Guidance will be playing the monster. Um, that way, Wolves doesn't have to deal with the lag. Let me see if I can join him oh, right wow. now. Oh, wow. That's, that's, <laughs> that's yeah, a we, very we, interesting choice. We may choice. duck out of this and go right back to DTR versus Wolves Esports. It looks like they will be starting any minute now. I'm just sending him a quick message. They may have already started, unfortunately. No one actually told me. It'll be interesting to try and join a match already in progress, Aegis. We will finally be able to test whether that works or not. Uh... Yeah, I don't want to try it in the middle of a clutch match like this. <laughs> right? That's we, what I was thinking as well. <laughs> let's see. We could try something a little bit different, though. Um, let's see if we can pull this off. Let me see what I can do here. No, that didn't work. Too bad. All right, I was going to see, see. Uh, if I could actually spectate through the Steam client and then broadcast ah, it the old school way because it looked like they already right. started... All right, well, uh, we may actually miss out on that. Uh, let me see if I can... Uh, yeah, Guidance isn't responding. We could try to join and see what happens. Should we do it? I think we should. I think we should, Aegis. Oh, I, I don't think it'll crash their match. I, I think Cliff would kill me if I messed it up. It's true, but I, I don't see any way that it should crash their match. Unfortunately, the lobby is full. There it is. Yeah, so it looks like they have an ESL admin or something watching the game. That might be the way that they've gone just after after what happened in the last match. And the fact there was a contest, they they might just have a rep that, that's in there watching it. That's a good point, I just Yeah. Uh, I'm going to toss right now this stream poll, guys. I'd like to know who you guys are cheering for. I've got all six teams that are currently remaining. I'd love to know who you want to win. All right, and there is the poll right there in chat suite. So now we have that up as well. Go ahead and fill that out, guys. Let us know who you want to see win in chat. Let's get some hype up in here for that poll. Let's see as many votes as possible. We have an amazing number of viewers here today. Thank you all so much for tuning in, and uh, thank you for watching. We appreciate all the support, all the love from you guys. Uh, we love doing this for you every Sunday. And if you haven't done so already and you want to support the channel, go ahead and hit that follow button down below. It is free. It costs you nothing. And there's also Twitter and YouTube as well, which you can follow uh, if you use the Twitters or YouTube. Uh, we do have broadcasts of past matches on the YouTube. More being uploaded as we speak, uh, both last weekend's and this weekend will probably be uploaded tonight at some point in time. And then also straight from 2K, uh, I will be obtaining this week high definition video of the PAX East Pro-Am tournament. Uh, the tournament that I competed in and that our team pushing daisies won. That will also be uploaded to the YouTube. 
That's right, Aegis. Uh, that YouTube channel is going to be growing here pretty exponentially. Uh, I don't know if you mentioned it, but any AHL matches that we're unable to cast, once again, are going to be right up on that, that uh, Black Aegis YouTube channel. All right, and look at this. Look at the hype for Team DTR in chat. Look at how wow. many people. Let me see if I can pull that up. On Returning the, uh, strong. On the main screen. Let's see here. DTR really returning strong after that break there. Yeah, look at that. Look at that right there. Uh, let's see. All right, yeah, so it just barely shows up. I can't actually scroll it up anymore with the way that that window is set up. But we can see, yeah, DTR 41% right now. Evolve hype 30%. Hard on you. The reigning champions so to speak uh, they didn't play last week so i guess we can't call them reigning champions but by far the most dominant team in the sunday cups so far 19 and 1 record with 14 percent we've got team sith evolve ninja penguins wolves esports that is six teams right there uh why do i feel like we're missing two teams uh, Unless those are the I just only, can't count. Sorry, no, those are the hand. only uh, six teams that are that are currently in it right now. So it's Evolve Hype, Defend the Relay, Wolves Esports, uh, Sith Evolve, Ninja or Ninja Penguins, and Hard on You. That those are the only teams who are still currently playing. Oh, oh, right. Because the other two in the quarterfinals were eliminated. Right? Yep. Understood. Yes, that makes sense. Okay. Right, yeah. So we're still in that transition phase between the quarterfinals and the semifinals. Now, the semifinals are going to be some serious hype. Uh, every single team that advances to the semifinals here today will, um, <laughs> will deserve every single bit of recognition and that spot in the semifinals, as it has been a crazy battle so far today. You know, I'm just glad that almost all the, well, I should say half the names in this semifinals are, are new names, essentially, are, are names that haven't been to the semifinals, you know, before today. Um, and if Ninja, if, if, uh, if Ninja Penguins gets in there, it, it'll be uh, three, you know, three of the four teams competing in the semifinals will, will be brand new teams that haven't been there yet. Uh, fantastic. Yeah. Really, really big shakeup. Yeah, that's if Ninja Penguins can pull a win on Hard On You. Um, if they want to do something like that, they have got their work cut out for them, though. All right, they are saying that they are starting very, very soon. Let's see here. We have... Well, these scores are kind of confusing. Okay, so yeah. we have uh, Evolve Hype beating Eyes on You 3-1. Okay, nice to see that update. Uh, thank you so much for all the help, Tonic. If we can get some love in chat for Tonic, uh, help offering to help out as an assistant producer in the back end, getting scores for us, talking to all the other teams, helping to organize things. Um, thank you so much, Tonic, for all that help. Let's get some Aegis hearts. Let's get some normal hearts. Spam any subscription hearts that you have. If you have better Twitch TV, which is free, you have free emotes on this channel. You can type Aegis heart to show some love in that standard lowercase and then capital format that you always see in most channels. Um, that is completely free to this channel if you use better Twitch TV. There is no subscription button. We're not a partner channel, although that is something that we would like to push towards, and every follow helps us on that. All right, and we are jumping into the next game. Let's get into that game right away. All right, and it looks like they're going with a standard pick setup. Yep, it does look like that standard God Cup right now. It'll be interesting to see what Source TV does play because I, I, you know, I mainly see him play Kraken, and I do watch his stream occasionally, and he he likes to play a lot of. Um, uh, I, he likes to play a lot of Wraith. It's been a little while since I've watched it though. Uh, just and yeah, I'm not sure who he's actually going to pick. Um, we will have to just wait and see who. Um... Who he picks? Usually they don't take this long. I think he's probably thinking about uh, about what perk to take. Obviously, the monster has already been chosen. They do choose what characters they will play as um, before the match actually goes live, and he does still have a minute to decide what to take. Hmm. Mm -hmm. We've been very fortunate to see as many Goliath matches as we did. I've, I've honestly expected to see more monsters, especially... Um, 
especially those monsters that like to switch it up and, and try and play everything um, and just try and make everything relevant. I've expected to see many, many more of them play Kraken. Uh, uh, but, you know, fortunately, we, we've been very fortunate that people have decided to space it out. And apparently we have some, some players that, you know, Kraken is stronger in the meta right now. But it's still, even since the micro patch, he's still stronger in the meta. But it's still great to see people going out and playing that Goliath and, and pulling some excellent wins off of it as well. And we do have a Kraken pick. As we both figured, a uh, great choice right there. Love seeing that Kraken gameplay. Kraken is so dominant and so much fun to watch right now. And I love that skin right there. That yep. epic, savage skin. Those glowing, the four glowing red eyes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Keep in mind, if you haven't purchased the Tier 4 Hunter Pack yet, you do get these skins for the three monsters for free as well with that pack. Alright, he's gonna make a quick start off. It looks like, it looks to me just like he took Vortex Banshee, the, the really classic build that we've seen so many people taking recently. All right, um, let's quickly cover uh, the players. We do have Source TV playing for Ninja Penguins. We have Challenge on Assault playing Markov. We have Banai on Medic playing Kyra. We have The Thingy on Support playing Hank. And we have Sorosim on Trapper playing Maggie. Yep, I, I'm, I'm not ashamed to admit it. I am a Thingy fan. I do like The Thingy. The Thingy and Weebaki. What can I say? Uh... Having some trouble seeing what's going on there, Aegis. All right, here we go here. All right, it does look like they pinged him. They are right on top of him. Daisy ensuring this. That's one of the beautiful things about Daisy. She ensures a fight within the first four minutes. It's it's going to happen. All right. Source TV doing an excellent job of trying to field those hunters out around objects and be able to create the distance for himself. Sorosum trying to climb, but just unable to do it fast enough. I think he's going to be able to get out of here. Yeah, I think he will just fine. Sorosum's still a bit too far away to uh, to really pull off that dome. Yeah, 50 meters out. Now 60 meters out on that Kraken. And checking the map here, let's check out their split. Let's look at their formation. They are pretty, pretty grouped together. Um, Sorosum really doing a great job cutting the Kraken off here. Look at that. And he's going to circle right around this rock formation, but Source TV doubles back. Yep, I was just going to say, I think that the Kraken was waiting and smelling and waiting for Sorosum to overcommit to one side of that long rock or the other so that he could run through it. But you know what? Sorosum's just not overcommitting. I think that, that he's going to have a hard time trying to shake this guy. Yeah, I'm All not right. sure what he's going to do here. There it goes right there, actually. He got distance, but I'm not sure if that's enough distance to uh, uh, get him the Evolve. And that's that's really what he's looking for here. He's got full energy. He's ready to do it. He needs to get that Evolve up to get his strength up. And unless he can bait a dome and survive it and get out of it, I just don't see it happening. Yeah, I think you're right. Oh, no, he is going to duck away right here. Yeah. And he well, manages that's what I mean to escape. Is, that's what I mean is that he continues to duck away, but they've got pings on him every time, and Sorosum seems to be right in the exact field to to not let him feel comfortable enough to try and do anything. Yeah, there See? is a reason why they name themselves hard on you, because they never let up on a monster player, and they have proven that consistently throughout the Sunday Cups. Absolutely, Aegis. Here we see the monsters finally taking a little bit of distance from them. I just don't know if it's going to be enough. <sighs> yeah, I don't know here. Uh, Let's get a they, look at that mini-map there, Aegis. Uh, they do know exactly where he is. They are all grouped up together, all trailing right behind Sorosin, that trapper. He does leave a few surprises for him there try and, as they try and work their way up the waterfall, and he is able to try and exploit the verticality, but the assault kind of seeing exactly where the Kraken's going is probably going to get there in time to start doing damage to him as he's evolving. Yep, there he goes. He has to cancel the evolve and start moving. Yep, he does duck over the Assault player. That's right over Challenge. Right there, and Source TV still doing his best to escape. Only 40 meters away. Challenge closing the distance now. It just... The Source is not moving fast enough. Yeah, look at that right there. 
right. Sorry about that. I just had to sneeze. All right, I am back, and it does look like he's going to be able to make his way up the river here, trying as hard as he can to create that distance. This is a long stage one, and just, I mean, they haven't done anything. It's just mostly been posturing, but, but they've made this stage one last, you know, seven, almost eight minutes now. No, four, four or five minutes, yeah. Yeah, they're not giving him room to evolve. It, he's going to try and do it right here, I think. But I think he's waiting for them to try and give... Nope, there it goes. Yep, and they're right on him. Look at that challenge right there. Dishing out damage wow. while he's taking evolving. The, this is going to be some great damage. Evolved. Dome coming down. Sorosum right on the monster's head. Oh, wow. Almost down to half health just getting out of the evolve. I'm not sure that that was worth it there, Aegis. He's taken a ton of permanent health damage. Yeah. And the dome just barely started. Uh that, yeah, that was the is, other thing, is that he chased around for so long that he allowed him, like, he, he gave up the advantage of, of when he took the, you know, ah. Uh, he's already down to almost half health right here. You know, so, uh, they do drop the orbital there. The thingy Vortex is on the thingy. Just a sliver of health. Great Maggie traps, though, locking him in place, slowing him down a little bit. And that's more than enough time for Ben I to keep the thingy alive. Good play there. Source TV like looks like he gets somebody low, but unable to try and commit to it because as soon as he commits, then he loses his position that that he's trying to deny assault damage to him. Um, so really once again, Source TV, here. yeah, trying to focus the thingy down right here. Traps lock him in place. Oh wow! You know they've only Dome's gonna go down. Yeah, Dome just went down there. He just. He does get a few harpoon traps in his butt as he's trying to leave. It's not going to work, though. He is running, running, running. Yeah, look at that, uh, running as fast as he can. Down below, half, half health. health and yeah. nothing to show for it in return. Banai doing a great job keeping the team healed and alive, and the whole team in general doing a great job mitigating damage on their own. And the, the dodges, Aegis. The dodges, unbelievable today. Uh, uh, this ninja penguin team, these flightless birds, have shown me what it means to truly dodge. Um, I, I've been in awe of, of how they, they've been uh, getting out of the way of these vortexes. And somebody always seems to be on almost Banshee Mind duty, where as soon as the Banshee Mines pop out, it almost seems like they're immediately taken out before they are able to do any damage to the team whatsoever. That may change, though, coming into a stage 3 fight where he's able to do so much damage with the lightning strike. Yeah, you're absolutely right. At stage 3, um, if he has a maxed out lightning strike, it will dish out a ton of damage. And we have to assume he took DI, or damage increase, for his perk as well, like most Krakens do. Yep, and the reason that he's they're unable to let all this like the the reason that the hunters are are able to prevent his damage from sticking is is mostly simply because they they've been able to dodge. But what I'm saying is that they're going to have to kind of tank the uh, the vortex a little bit in future to try and save their lightning strikes to dodge the light or to try and save their jetpack to dodge the lightning strike. Trying to deny a feed there. Source TV is still only at half evolve energy for that stage three. Yeah, things are not looking good for him. They've uh, they've really kept him on the run. Okay, about eight minutes now, and he's only halfway to stage three with over half of his life gone. Great positioning on the part of the Hunters. Let's look at the minimap reel here, quickly switching to the Trapper's perspective. Look at how well Sorosum is consistently laying out traps in common spots for the Kraken to run through. That way, just in case he is not present, the Kraken can at least get locked down by a trap and potentially oh, slow down a little bit. I hate to interrupt you there, Aegis, but it looks like the dome is going to be coming down here really soon. I think that he just dropped it. No, no. he did not drop it yet. Yep. He is holding it at 40 meters out. He doesn't want to drop the dome just yet. It would be too easy for Source to escape the other way, so he's going to wait until he has the perfect opportunity. Yeah, 70 meters away. The rest of the team is still on Source, just dishing oh, out that no. damage. And look, will he actually get caught by the trap that was laid before? He's circling around the other side. Let's see if, Chiros if Sorosum's trap play actually pays off for him. Look at that. I know it's somewhere around here. Oh, yeah, we can see it in the distance over there. Okay, so it is going to miss Source. He's going to duck the far way around and then fly right past the relay right there. Yeah, so great yep. dodge. Look at the amount of distance that he managed to put on Hard on Use Hunter team right there. They're going to close in really quickly here, and Source TV just has to feed it. Like, right now, they've done so much to pressure him. Look, there, they're actually keeping him off those corpses that he's done there with that assault rifle. 
he finally is able to eat that one. He gets another one off. He needs probably about five, six more meat before he's able to evolve. And this hunter team is just not letting him get there. Yeah, and look at Sorosim circling around the other side while the rest of the team keeps him distracted. Yep, All by himself, goes. though, Source is going to just charge right over the rest of the hunter team. Gonna yeah, jump he, right out the other side there. He's already very, very far away from the trapper. That is the green on the map right there, that green circle. And we can see the trapper's favorite friend, Daisy, as the green trap jaw. Look at that stopping to eat, though. That's actually going to give them a lot of time to catch up. Yep, that's all he needs right now, Aegis, is just, just, uh, uh, he needs to fill up his evolved meter, and he, he's got probably five, four or five more meets to do it. They, they haven't let him get anything but Reavers here. Uh, anytime he kills something large, the assault's right on him with that assault rifle. They've been doing a fantastic job at his pressure. All right, yeah. it does look like he's able to force them up. Oh, no. That vortex slows them down again, though. Yeah, I, I, I was just laughing because I, I watched him fly into that tree, Aegis, and it, it looked to me like the tree grounded him. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, he did recover from that, though, and he will escape around the other side. The dome comes oh, the down. Dome. He is trapped in the dome, stage two. Full armor, half health. All right, and this is a decent dome for both sides. The hunters have an excellent place where they're able to set up there in the middle. He's, he is trying to focus on Sorosum, trying to get the dome down immediately. He does take Sorosum down to about half, but the, 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 the heal burst does come up disengages and they're not able to punish him very well here i don't feel like you know the challenge is has oh there it is yep i spoke too soon Aegis. <laughs> all right and that lightning strike coming out just co continuing to punish him with a lightning gun too he's down to half armor now they have almost whittled away his armor completely and they're about oh, wow. to get into real permanent health damage that consistent damage from the assault right there the lightning the lightning gun um just whittling him down, and the thing he constantly on the laser cutter. I love seeing Hank play like that. He can't do any significant damage to this Hunter team. They're just almost always at 75% health or greater. That's the right, Aegis. He absolutely has to either be able to get off that uh, the, the sneak pounce damage that Kraken has, or use that uh, the, the tier 3 lightning strike to be able to make any kind of dent in, in these, uh, these Hunters with that Kyra play. Uh, just once again, showing why Kyra is fantastic and so strong in the meta right now. Yeah, All right, Ky team Kyra really the is the definitive medic in the scene right now. Yeah, Hunter team moving in through the center of the map there. Source TV scaring birds as he moves off. He's ready to evolve. He knows the dome is down. I think he's just trying to create enough distance that he can evolve without taking damage. And just an update for all you folks, it looks like DTR has defeated Wolves Esports. They will advance to the semifinals against Team Evolve Hype, which will be coming up right after this. Oh, wow. Excellent job. We get the Stage 3 Evolve right in the middle of the river. Here. Stage 3 Evolve. The dome comes down, too. He is, oh, he is trapped in this dome, Stage 3, already at half health. You know what? Even though he got to stage three, this is incredibly dangerous for him. He's down to almost his last third of a health bar. They're doing a fantastic job of punishing him. They may be able to keep themselves up for long enough, even against the stage three Kraken, that they could win this. I, I really feel that that's... Oh, Thingy takes a huge lightning strike! Goes down, he's gonna lower himself down! Vortex into... The Thingy is down. The Thingy takes it. Oh Source TV takes out the Thingy. The rest of the team is still up, and she Thingy's will recover nicely from this. Source TV is down below a third of his life right here. Dodges the lightning strike. Well played by Banai the Medic. And it looks like Source is doing whatever he can to keep that damage on Vanai the Medic. He knows he has to take out that Kyra. And Challenge continually staying on him with that lightning gun. Great play right there. Yep, their shield's coming out. The shield's coming out, but unfortunately the support has to try and... Uh, uh, oh my goodness, they've got the support uh, snuck past there. I think this might be it though. Closing in on the last baby bar of health. He's focusing in on the Hank. The orbital comes down. I think this is it, unless Source can get out of here. I don't see him escaping, though. He does get away there with only goes. about a bar of health left on stage three. He's going to back off. He's going to armor up. And, man, he is going to have to pull off some amazing plays in order to take a win here. They have only one strike, and it's on their support. They're still damaging him, Aegis. 
He's not going to be able to feed there. He's already taken a bar of armor as they're chasing. This is fantastic play. Oh, I love this. I would love to see more teams take crack in this close, Aegis. They played this textbook. All right, it does look like he is going to be able to get full armor on, and it's all going to be up to the Hunter team to decide where they want to fight now. Um, what would you say, Aegis, on this map? Uh, I think they're just going to wait at the relay. You know, they, they know that they have it in the bag. Not Maybe really that area below the relay? Do. Do, probably below the relay, or would you fight him out in the open air, do you think? Um, They will... Uh... Ooh, that's a good question. You know, I don't know. I would have said that they would have just fought him in the open air around the relay, but after what we saw DTR do here today at on MedLab during the relay fight um, against Wolves Esports, I really yeah. don't know. Yeah, it's, it's a tough choice. There, like, there are some areas of the map that I wouldn't have even considered defensible positions that I've well, that very recently have seen work, and it does look like they're going to be sitting up on top outside around the ring here. Um, it's very interesting. It doesn't look like they've trapped up around the ring, and I don't think they're going to be trying to use the ring as, as a run spot, just because they don't have it set up like that. There they go, and Kraken does come in taking heavy damage immediately as he engages. The thingy is down to just a little quarter bar of health, though. I think the thingy Will might... thingy go down, drops the orbital, Source ducks out oh, of the orbital, wow. but man, look at the damage that he's already taken. He's down to half armor. They didn't drop the dome, though, so I think he will be able to escape and armor up again. Ooh, Lightning Strike catches Sorosum off guard, and that buys um, that buys Source enough time to back off and escape. You know, he's just getting in, he's prodding, he's seeing where everything's set up at and, and, and how they want to act, and maybe trying to make some decisions as to where he's going to try and knock people in order to separate them. But there's not a whole lot he can do here. He, he has to play... He has to play this very, very carefully to have any chance of victory. Wow. Fantastic job of preventing the feed there, too. Yeah, and look at that. They're just going to stay on him. I bet when he goes to eat this sloth right here, they're going to... No, he does stay far enough back that they can't see him. So he will get the feed on there, and he will get his full armor in, ready and able to go back in. Keep in mind, it is minute 1645 right now, so three minutes left on the clock. Um, the clock will stop in one minute's time. All right, and Monster, as you can see there on the survival odds, Monster only at about a 35% chance of win success here. Um, this is, I, I don't know, I, I don't play Monster. I wish, I almost wish that we had uh, uh, Aurora Symphony back in chat with us like we did a couple of weeks ago, just to, to, like, what do you even do in a situation like this? You play it as safe as you can, and you look for the slightest mistake on the part of the hunters and try to exploit it. That's the only thing that he can do here. He just has to wait for the, the perfect position. Comes in once again. Yeah, I mean, challenge on the first? lightning strike, just laying it to him. He's already down to about half armor, and once again, Bandai keeping everyone fully healed. Great job on this HOY hunter team. Yep, coming in hard on Sorosum, hoping that he can drop him so that he can't get the dome down as soon as his armor comes out. Vortex into Lightning work. Strike, misses the Vortex and the Lightning Strike, and the dome, dome comes, comes down. down, sealing him in with his fate. Fantastic, fantastic wordplay there, eh? Just almost as fantastic as the gameplay we're seeing right now. The thing is getting knocked back. Porter, oh my goodness, the thing is going to go down. Nope, thingy stays alive. Uh, looks like she's lagging out or something. That's what? very, very strange. I think the thingy is down. What? I, yeah, this I don't know. She's, she seems to have lost control of her character, but no matter. Source is down to no armor, and they are railing into Source's health bar right here, whittling this him down little One by little. Kick. Yep, a couple more shots. The thingy did disconnect. That's what it was. Oh, wow. <laughs> the random The AI disconnect Hank lightning Oracle. strike dodge, and then uh, Hank does finally go down as that damage catches up client side. All right, it looks like a challenge had to pop his shield here, but the medic does have him back up. He has full sustain. All they have to do is just tap him before the. Oh, there it is. And there it is. I think I, I think he ends with a Kyra uh, Kyra flame grenade. Yeah. Yeah, great, great, great play on Hoy's hunter team right there. Very, very well done to them. Wow, look at the damage from Source. 51k and Banai's healing 48. K, almost 
perfectly in sync with what the monster did. That's why he, it was so hard for him to get downs. He he got what? Um, one down. He got one strike. One strike one on Hank. Yeah, yeah, one strike the entire game. One strike, and that was when Hank disconnected. That was when the thingy disconnected. Amazing game right there. Let me check with uh with Team Evolve hype. Let me see what's going on. Hold on one second. All right, it's just not a problem. Hey, everybody. How is it going? I'm going to check the stream poll results one more time. Looks like the, the Ninja Penguins. We do have a few other Ninja Penguin fans out there. Uh, looks like Team Sith Evolve is the second favorite under Defend the Relay out of you guys. 21% of you voting for Team Sith Evolve. Uh, I'm saying that's might be a good choice here. Might be a good choice. I like them as well. Uh, Evolve Hype taking third place with 19% of the vote, and HOY taking 12.3% of the vote. This is interesting. Looks like our uh, our Wolves Esports is is probably the, the smallest contingency, and I thought that would be a little bit higher. What happened to all you European fans out there, guys? Let's hear it in chat. All right, so it looks like we will be checking out Team Evolve Hype versus DTR. They are starting their matches in just a moment. They are doing the pick and ban phase right now. We are going to take a quick, much needed three to five minute break while they finish that up, and we will be starting in just a moment, folks. Uh, thank you all for tuning in and stay tuned. This will be this will be the hype match of the semifinals. This is DTR's Hunter team starring the gentleman squirrel versus his former student, Insane521, the monster player for Team Evolve Hype. Let me get them muted real quick right now. This is it. I cannot wait to see this match, IG. Thank you all so much for sticking around, for watching this broadcast. We love doing these shows for you. If you haven't done so already on the break, please remember to hit that follow button down below. It helps the channel. It helps us grow. It's a free way to show support, and you get notified anytime we go live for future events like this. We'll be right back, folks. Stay tuned.
All right, we are back and we are live once again, folks. Thank you all so much for tuning in. We are here and we are ready to start the very first game of the uh, semifinals, DTR versus the brand new Evolve Hype. We will be watching Insane 5 to one the monster player from Evolve Hype, play against DTR's hunter team, the Gentleman Squirrel, Kaiser Tim, Lord Death of Vengeance, Decoy Dodger, or whatever his name is today, and <laughs> the Guidance. Oh, goodness. I, How was that break, IG? I, I think we both needed that break very, very much. Absolutely. Uh, Aegis, for those of you who've never, never thought about casting out there, you, you eventually find yourself just saying stupid things for no reason. Saying stupid things, <laughs> and your throat hurts, too. I mean, yes. pretty, pretty bad. Uh, and, you know, once again, I, I just want, before we go into the game, which I know will be starting any minute now, they did just finish up their picks. Um, thank you all so much for tuning in. Thank you for all the follows today and all those follows that came in over the last break. Thank you all so much. It really helps to build the channel and grow the scene. We are getting into the game right here. Um, for those of you who may be interested in modding for the channel, we are looking for mods. If you do want to fill out the application, I will post that for you in chat real quick. Take a moment, fill that out if you think you would be a good candidate for a mod for this channel, especially during the Sunday cast, because as you saw on that break, we definitely need some active mods in here um, so right. please if it's something that you would like to do to help out the channel and be a part of the community go ahead and fill that out we are getting into the game right here though so let's jump yep. right in and it talk about what might happen it's going to be damn ages this is this is a a classic pick here we've been seeing a lot of damn through the ahl i feel like it's a really balanced uh, map the only thing i don't like is if I feel like hunters are really limited as as per stage four fight or, or stage stage three fights around the relay, there there's only really three real areas and only one of them seems like a good idea. Yeah, yeah, you could be right about that. Um, this will be a pretty rough match. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. I do need to jump back into the game real quick. Okay, so we did have the standard composition uh, against a Kraken player. We had Markov. Uh, Markov, Kyra, Hank, and I believe that was Griffin. I only saw that through the OBS window. All right, and here we go. Camera's bugging out a little bit. All right, and here we go. We have Insane 5 to one on the monster, playing for Team Evolve Hype, recently switching from HOY to join an NA team and play with a schedule that was more suitable to himself um, and his personal life, since he is a family man. He likes to spend time with his girlfriend and his family, um, plus all his classes. Uh, for Team DTR, we have Guidance on Assault playing Markov. We have Decoy Killer, a.k.a. Lord Death or Lord of Vengeance, playing Medic as Kyra. We have Kaiser Tim on Support playing Hank. And we have everyone's favorite dev, the Gentleman Squirrel, playing Trapper. You know, it's interesting, Aegis. You, you said that he was uh, he's a family man, and I, you're, you're definitely right there. But uh, <laughs> a lot of times, in my head, professional esports players aren't allowed to have family. They have to be, like, superhero origin stories, much like Batman. Yep. And that's what drove them to perfect their video game skills. And sorry about that. We are full screen now. <laughs> Let's there get that are. taken care of. Moving out. And it, they do have Insane kind of cornered here. The Gentleman Squirrel is in an excellent position. I think he's going to be able to get the dome. He's standing six. Oh, goodness. There we uh, go. <laughs> oh, there we are. All right, back on there. They're on top of him putting the pressure down. But it does look like he is going to be able to just dodge out of doming area. And with that, I believe he's going to put himself into an excellent position to be able to separate and get to the other side of the map very quickly. He's already got his Evolve Energy up, which, by the way, very, very fast. What's the timer on this already, Aegis? I think that he's ready for Stage 2 at about 3 minutes. Oh, 2 minutes? Not wow. even the 2-minute mark yet. That is insane 5 to one on the monster. Well, let's be honest. That's that's just insane, Aegis. That's that's just insane. That ready is stage completely two. insane. Not even the two-minute <laughs> mark, and he's already ready to evolve. All right. And he's he's put some excellent distance, and he's done something here. He's using the, uh, the, the hunter's inability to get up and down cliff faces very quickly to his advantage. 
All right, and once again, we are full screen now. Sorry about that, folks. All right, and he waits until the Doom Beetle moves and engages on the support. He uses the Vortex to go ahead and slap both the support and the Gentleman Squirrel down. He is going to get tagged for his trouble, but he is making his way back out the other side, and I feel like he's going to be able to survive here. Also, I feel like he's staying in here, hoping to bait a little bit of a dome, because he's ready to evolve. He has full armor, and this is a great place for Kraken to mitigate damage stage one. Yeah, this oh, is a great wow. place for him to fight, Hank but he needs to be careful. Hank gets knocked into the plant, goes down to half health almost immediately, drops the defense orbital, and is going to shake himself up, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. Yeah. Almost down. Insane staying hard on Kaiser Tim. Kaiser down. Tim goes down. Oh my goodness, this is fantastic play here, leading the Hunters through the center of this. Are we going... Oh man, I don't think we're going to see them be able to... I don't think he's going to be able to finish because uh, Kyra has better heal this early in the game than, than he has damage uh, as far as a corpse punish goes. However, as long as he doesn't take any health damage, this is a phenomenal way to start this for him. Yeah, oh, yeah, he has not taken up. any permanent life yet, and he already has one strike. Oh, the Gentleman Squirrel Look does that. get caught by himself. Yeah, going on the Gentleman Squirrel. Uh, squirrel looks like he will evade that, though. Dome is going down very shortly here. In just a few seconds, Dome will be down. Uh, Insane so stopping it, for a quick snack, just looking to time out that Dome. Yep, they have tracked him. This is going to be hard for Insane to get away in order to get that Evolve off. I mean, yes, he took an excellent lead there getting that strike on Kaiser Tim, and that's probably one of the more useful characters to get a strike on. Um... Goodness, what a play there, uh, taking advantage of that that uh, uh, man-eating plant. All right, and Insane will duck away into the tunnel, and he's going to evolve right here. The Hunter team is actually pretty close to him. They may be able to catch him before he gets out of this evolve. 30 meters away, they could probably drop the dome right now. It looks like they're going to hold off, though. They don't have a dome, Aegis. They just oh, right, barely right. dropped it. They've got about 30 right, seconds. Right, it's not up yet. Up. That's yep. unfortunate. That is unfortunate. Oh, wow. Insane comes out. A deadly stage two crack and three points in Banshee Mines. What? Three yeah, points in Vortex. And they do catch him. Dome was up. Like, Dome must have just barely came up right as they came around the corner there, Aegis. They do catch him. He is taking significant damage. And he's right there when the orbital lands. He's wow. He's trying to do auto attack. Oh wow. DTR just... laying into him. Amazing orbital. Lightning gun from Markov by Guidance. Takes him down to half health almost instantly, completely negating that bonus health he gained during the Evolve. And that is what I love about Hank Aegis. He is absolutely able to turn a fight around in a heartbeat, either with the shield, with the cloak, or, or, or with that orbital. He is an absolute game changer. When things aren't going well, he has the ability to turn it around here. What looked like a staggering, staggering uh, 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 early stage kind of uh, uh, setback has now turned into I'll be surprised if he makes it out of here with more than a quarter health. Yeah, yeah, I. this is not looking good for Insane. DTR showing amazing form here today. There goes the Dome laying. Yeah, Dome finally down, and he gets away. But man, I completely laying into Insane, who is arguably the best all-around monster in the scene right now. You know, the Gentleman Squirrel really showing us that Abe is absolutely viable. They're using him as he's intended. The whole team is built around getting to the monster and punishing him early stage, knowing where he is the entire time and setting it up just right so that he's never going to escape that dome. As we've seen, they, they seem to get him the second the dome is ready. They, <laughs> they've got him. Um, there is not a whole lot Insane can do against this. Yeah, he is on the run, man, and he needs to keep moving. He just needs to get out. He's he's only a quarter of the way to stage three right now. I I don't know that I've seen a team take it too insane this hard for a long time. Uh, insane up there, he does trigger birds, so they are going to know exactly which way he's headed now that he's got that. Oh, you know what? Yeah, now that their tracking dart is out, they do kind of have a ping of exactly which way he's headed to. Um, he is kind of hanging out in that area, though. Uh, I'm wondering what he's doing there. Oh. All right, and it looks like he is just backing off. Uh, I don't know. All right, well, Gentleman Squirrel full, closing yeah. in. He does have full armor, and he's only got half of his evolved meter, though, so he's definitely not looking to try and take a fight at the moment to try and uh, bait a dome, especially not with his health as low as it is. Um, 
He needs to just get to stage three as quick as possible, but I don't see that happening. Trying to lead him over the Pit of Doom there. Well, the equivalent of the Pit of Doom on this map anyways. Wow, and look at that. Okay, he takes out the Mega Moth, gonna stop to eat that real quick, but they're right on top of him. Gentleman Squirrel laying into him with those aid tracking darts. They keep him revealed to the Hunter team for 45 seconds. That's right, and in case you're new to the game, the tracker can also track a lot of the wildlife that you see the monster eating, and if he eats those, it's another 45-second track. It's 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 a really deadly combination, but unfortunately, it, it, it lets you know where the monster is, but doesn't really help you nearly as much in team fights, which was what makes most teams decide that he's not worth the risk. DTR obviously finding a way to pull it off here today. All yeah, right. <laughs> they are doing a great job today. I am really impressed with the showing that they've put on so far. Man, they are looking so good. Their practice all week really paid off. Insane, finally ready to evolve. He needs about one more meet to have that energy, but not does not have the space. And I don't know that he has a, a, a strategy, a uh, tactic that he showed us so far that and can get him that space. Look at the way that they're playing. Trapper and Medic staying out, not really moving much, just waiting. Yeah, While Trapper Assault and Support right flush now. him out to them. Trapper that key piece right now, they have to keep the Trapper up. He, he is the most important uh, piece of this puzzle at the moment. So deciding that to, put, to put Kyra on him is, is perfect logic there. Uh, however, he does finally squirt, uh, you know, just, just uh, a slip out over the top of, of Kaiser, Tim, and Guidance there. Um, this might be what he needs just because the verticality involved in this area. He may be able to get the Evolve off before anybody's able to punish him for it. And that right. might swap the game finally. He's still not far enough away. They know exactly where he is. He really needs to get some serious distance on them. But Coming he up. just can't seem to lose him. He, he's risking the evolve right here. Just taking whatever chance he can get. And it looks Cancels. like... He has to cancel it there. It just, he's he's taking the rest of that armor that he left for himself there and, and trying to, to slip away. Yeah, yeah, he knows that they were too close. That would have ended the game if he had finished the Evolve right there. 100% they would have gotten the dome off and he would have had no armor. All right, trying to make his way around the river, seeing if he can play this sneaky, and it's oh, taking the Mammoth Bird out, hoping and praying that he can get that eaten, but he's not, he's not going to get it. Guidance is about to come down right on top of his head along with the Gentleman Squirrel and drop that dome down. I think we may see the yep. end of this game shortly, folks. We've got the dome coming down, splitting the map right there. Great dome placement. And, and remember that is. Remember that the Gentleman Squirrel is also uh, uh, an excellent counter, or Abe is also an excellent counter pick against Kraken right now, simply because of the grounding effect that he has with those with those uh, uh, grenades down. Looks like Assault sneak, sneak pounce, pounce on the Guidance, though, forces him to pop that shield. Wow, great play. Okay, back to Insane, now that we have camera control again. Dodges the Lightning Strike, great play there. Moves on to Lord Death, Decoy Killer, the Medic. Lord Death getting an excellent shield out of Hank there. Hank's shield running low, whether they look like it or not, uh, uh, but... Forcing the Kraken to disengage. He's done an excellent job of damage mitigation so far. He went into this fight with half health. He's only lost a little bit so far, but that wow. almost coming down great, right on top of great him. Great lightning strike, though. I don't know if it's going to be enough. Down to under a third of his life. Oh Once again, goodness. consistently Kaiser slowed. Kaiser down, Tim almost down. Drops another oh, lightning strike. Wow, the great lightning, lightning strike, strike. On, on Kaiser Tim. Takes him down to a tenth of his life. But oh, Decoy please. Killer right there, ready to heal him up with the Healing Burst. Amazing it's... play on DTR's part right there. Insane not catching the cue that the Dome was about to drop. Accidentally dro uh, jumps over the top of the Hunters, taking down another half bar of health in, in the process of just trying to get away over into the caves, uh, forcing him to stay and play longer than he wants to. He still has a chance to win this, but he has to get that armor up. There he goes. Look at that, Back waiting for the surprise attack on the Gentleman oh, Squirrel. Wow. Brilliant play right there. Brilliant, brilliant play by Insane's part. Just waiting until that last minute and then popping out, but not able to capitalize on it. They're, the rest of the team, Decoy Killer, ready to keep Gentleman Squirrel healed up and prevent a strike. He has done an, a decent job of separating them, though, here. Guidance is pushing up by himself to try and prevent the feed while the rest of the team hangs back and tries to get into the right position. This might be a little bit of space here, and if he can get full armor, this turns into a different story. Yeah, 
Yeah, you're right. You're right. He will have a fighting chance if he can get that full armor. Just a few energy bars short of it, but this is not an area that he'd really... Well, I guess this is an okay place. Actually, now that I'm looking at the area that he's set up in, that's probably why they're not engaging uh, and trying to, to, to keep him from feeding anymore is, is simply because that is a really excellent area for him to zone out uh, any kind of aggression coming in. He's going to come in hard with the lightning strike on the Gentleman Squirrel, trying to get that, that uh, dome ability down before it even comes down. Already losing half his armor. The dome comes down. He's... Taking massive damage from the and orbital there. And that orbital yes. wrecks his armor. Drops the lightning strike. Misses the lightning strike on Kaiser Tim. Kaiser Tim, though, down to 25% life, 10%, and dead. Armor's down. Kaiser Tim goes dead. He's down to just a, a, a quarter of his health remaining. Trying to zone out through the areas here. Kaiser Tim's going to be raised back up. Two strikes on support is all he gets for all but a quarter of his health. Folks. And Insane is in damage avoidance mode, though. Jumps in again. I guess he knows that this is it. Vortex into Lightning Strike. Not enough to take Kaiser Tim out. The Healing Burst keeps him up. He does finish him right there, but at what cost? He has about a bar and a half of health left. Stuck in this dome right now with Guidance circling around the other side on Assault. Ready to dish out some punishing damage on him. Gentleman Squirrel firing away from a distance. Insane down to half a bar of health right now. Taking that final bit of chip damage. This looks like it could be it. Insane could go down here. The dome is down. Decoy Killer may be down. Kaiser Tim is down. Gentleman Squirrel is down. Insane with almost nothing left. Decoy Killer trying to keep people alive. Switches to Napalm, dishing out that last bit of damage. A single and he burns to death. He burns to death from the napalm grenades. Wow. Very close there at the end. Insane did an excellent job of trying to fight with what he had, but but ultimately the DTR team just had too much pressure on him throughout that match. Yeah. That was, that was a fantastic uh, uh, display of, of what a good hunter team could do to take out just about any Kraken. Yeah, that was too... That was... That was intense. That was too intense. Once again, DTR proving that they can bring those hype games, those amazing displays of skill, intensity, and adrenaline that we all love Evolve for, that we all love watching and playing Evolve for. Ooh. Very, very impressive overall. Let me check and see if the other side is waiting or going ahead and playing. Okay, no response from Bronk. Let's see what else. Uh, we do have a, a HOY beats out ninjas or ninja penguins, um, and they do move forward to play Team Sith Evolve. I don't see any updates as to the match matches yet. It just all right. Just quickly checking here. Uh, let's see. Okay, so it looks like Team Evolve Hype is probably playing the other side as well already. Um, so we will probably jump into a game number two. This is a best of five, folks. This is the semifinals. This is DTR versus Evolve Hype. Do we know which map is gonna? Or do we know what map this is gonna be taking place on Aegis? Uh, you know, I think someone may have linked the picks to me. Let me see. No, no one has linked the picks yet. Uh, let me see if I can find out. No problem. Uh. I, I'm wondering. Okay, so I'm wondering what 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 the pick would have been here. Um, let's see here, folks. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here once again. I, I just wanted to say, for almost 500 of you, over 100 follows just today alone. Thank you guys so much for your support in this. Um, just an absolutely community-driven event could not be done without you guys. Um, We'd also like to thank the folks over at Turtle Rock Studios for giving us this excellent game. Uh, you know, it's 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 a very exciting thing. And do we have any kind of link, uh, Aegis, for the Stage 3 yet? Nothing at all? Uh, no, it'll be right here on the channel. So follow the channel if you do want to check out the podcast when that comes. That will be starting that next is. weekend on yep. Saturday, immediately after the EHL broadcasts. Yep, that's going to be an absolutely phenomenal time. I think you guys will really enjoy it, especially if you're you're already putting in your time on a Sunday to come watch us here. Uh, you know, you guys put in your time on an Easter Sunday to come watch watch the the, the last set of finals, which was phenomenal. Um, I think you guys will really really appreciate that.
And once again, guys, if you're if you're looking at joining, if you want to come and play in the competitive uh, Go Free Evolve Sunday Cup, uh, head o- head on over to their uh, to the site. Let me give you the the play playeslgaming.com. I'll drop that into the, the, the chat link here in a moment. Um, head on over there. Get your team registered. We'd love to see more teams play. Um, I think that there's an Xbox one as well that takes place on Wednesdays, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, is that right, Aegis? Yes, there are community cups as well uh, every Wednesday for both PC and Xbox. You can check those out too right on the ESL website that Insomnia did link in chat. Uh, Once again, everyone, thank you all so much for tuning in. Thank you for all the follows today, for really blowing it up today and showing your support for the channel. It absolutely helps us out so much in getting the word out there um, and just spreading the Evolve scene and showing people what we love so much about this game. Thank you all so much. Um, Thank you all for the follows on Twitter as well. I see that's growing. And uh, on the YouTubes also. Uh, once again, if um, if you do, if you uh, if you do think that um, you would like modding for a channel, uh, we are accepting mod applications right now. Let me get the link for that for you. Uh, you can fill that out if you think that you would be a good fit and that you would enjoy modding for the channel. Um, please take the time to fill out the link. I will link it in chat right below. We do have a need for mods right now, especially with the way the channel has been growing and the Evolve scene is growing. More and more people coming in. Uh, thank you all so much for being so considerate today, being so respectful, um, and, you know, and, and re- just remembering to keep things classy as much as possible. Um, we do try and keep things uh, how would we say this? As organized as possible during the cast, we do know that during competitive games, you guys do like to kind of blow it up and go a little bit crazy, and we do want to allow you to keep doing those things, but within reason, copy pastas and things like that, we ask that you still don't do, um, with the exception, of course, of the mortars. If you want to raise your mortars in support of the Tier 4 Assault Torvald, you can go ahead and raise your mortars. That is the only one that we really allow in here. Um, otherwise, you know, any of the other obvious stuff... Um, you know, please remember to keep that out of chat as well, disrespecting other people um, and hate speech and things like that. We do appreciate your understanding um, in these matters. We do try and keep things as civil as possible. We want a healthy, growing community where people actually treat each other with dignity and respect. So thank you so much for that, guys. All right, I just have an update on the DTR Evolve Hype. They are currently playing, and it is 2-1 uh, DTR. 2-1? DTR. Yep, they're they're playing out a second map on Distillery. Uh, DTR's Hunters 1 and their Monster 1, and then on the first on Distillery, Evolve Hype's Hunters 1. Whoa! So what is this? Did... Can can this even happen? Is it Behemoth he's, even he's allowed? Not, he's, not, he's not selected in. I think he's trolling you there, he just... Uh, uh... <laughs> I was gonna say! <laughs> He's. I, I think. I think he's trolling the stream here, Aegis, and it's a fantastic troll because here, it, unless something changes from from what has been announced, like what's been said right now, um, the ban was two weeks, which will be expiring as of next week. Uh, we should see tier four hunters in uh, tier four hunters and tier four monster, and at that point, unless unless something changes in the meantime, which it absolutely could, not promising. <laughs> all right, and while they get that settled, all right, it looks like DTR is still leading the votes in the poll with 31% total. Going into this next round, this is now 2-1, so Team Hype Insane has to win right here. He needs to pull off a win if he wants to bring it into a tiebreaker then. Is that really accurate? They already, Aurora already played two games? Uh, That's wow. what I understand. Uh. Let's see. Aurora no, no, no. Aurora No, this is um Hmm. Okay, yeah. No, uh, he played one game. Right, right. So each side won once. And there we go. The raising of your mortars in chat. Once again, thank you so much for your understanding, folks. We do allow that one because it is evolved themed. The mortars of Torvald being raised up high. We love that. 
We will allow you to do that in any uh, of the competitive Bye -bye. shout casts that we do. All right, let's get some hype up in here in chat right now. Can the Team Lion. Evolve Hype make a comeback here today? Can Insane 5 to one win and bring his team into a tiebreaker, or will DTR eliminate them and advance to the finals? If you want to see DTR win here today, let's see some Pog Champs up in chat. And if you want to see Insane 5 to one for Team Evolve Hype win today, let's get some Dan's game. It looks like he has gone Goliath. He's done a fantastic job of, of doing this Raid Feed strat. He's doing classic insane style and is probably going to be ready to evolve before we even hit a minute and 30. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. And just to cover the team once again, for anyone who is just tuning in for Team Evolve Hype, we have on the Goliath, insane, 5 to one for Team DTR. That's DefendTheRelay.com. We have Guidance on Assault playing Markov. We have Decoy Killer, a.k.a. Lord Vengeance on Medic playing Kyra. We have DTR, Kaiser Tim on support playing Hank, and we have the Gentleman Squirrel, everyone's favorite developer, on Trapper playing Abe. Speaking of Abe, they did take Abe again, and they have already darted him. They, they're, as we can see, they're doing a fantastic job of, of essentially, I, I think what they're trying to do here is the Gentleman Squirrel is moving up, ensuring that he gets the engage long enough to, to get him darted, and then pulls back and, and realizes, hey, I can completely see you, I can look at the minimap, and I'm not being chased by three other people, so I have time to set up a situation in which I'm going to trap you. And he's using his fantastic use of game knowledge in, in order to make that happen. I think it's a great pick for them. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And speaking of picks, there's one thing I want to point out. This is the first time we've seen a monster player deviate in the second game from his original pick. And that's one of the things that I this love week, about yes. Insane. Yep, this week he's the first one who's, who's done it, and, and I wish we'd see it more often just because the play styles are so different that sometimes, you know, if you really feel like like the, D, like the DTR team really probably shook him up there at the end, and, and so, oh my goodness, they get the dome down, just just a sliver, oh, so close, he's going to engage with the Leaf Smash onto Kaiser Tim, Kaiser Tim also going to take the Locked Pass, also going to take the Flame Breath, does the, the defensive orbitals down, Unfortunately, it doesn't look like he's going to be able to follow it up. Kaiser Tim still at half health. Kyra healing up pretty well, but un... Oh my goodness, they're hiding around the tree. Fantastic job of keeping it up. Unfortunately, the monster has not taken very much damage so far. He's down to about half armor, and he's going to start playing the evasion game around these buildings. Good engage yeah. here, Aegis. I just don't know if it's going to make a whole lot of difference. That was fantastic, though. Uh, you can clearly see the skill of Insane, and he is waiting not for that rock throw right there. Shots. Yeah, yep. yep. Brilliant play on his part, but he's in damage mitigation mode. Whoa. Yep, his armor is down. He is starting to get chip damage, and and they've already lit him on fire. He's trying to feed, but but they keep <laughs> taking it to him. Um, there, the dome finally goes down. He's lost about a bar. All right, and he's going to be able to make his way pretty far, though, because the Hunters do have a little task ahead of them to try and climb the outside of that building, Aegis. All right, and Insane is just going to make his way upriver, probably trying to duck into the caves and finish off what he needs to hit stage two. But, you know, DTR knows this. That is such a common spot for a monster to evolve in. I don't remember the last time I played a monster on this map, especially a Goliath that didn't evolve in this cave of ages. It's, yeah. it's kind of a it's kind of a gimme at this point. Look at how close they are, though. It's he cannot evolve here. He's doing it. He's actually no. doing it. I think this is a good move on his part because even though they're here, they're not split up yet, which means that he still has the opportunity. Oh to no! Have... Oh no! Yeah. And we oh, have guidance goodness. caught by a tyrant. This oh, this goodness. they Assault have to call the dome off. Assault is inside of a tyrant. It's not letting him go. They He's dropped inside. the dome, but they, they can't do anything until Guidance is healed up. Insane. Guidance on Assault caught in a tyrant at the worst possible moment. Insane able to take four bars of armor uh, uh, off those Stevedons inside the cave there. This is a good spot for him. If you have to get down to stage two, get a little bit of armor first, right? Yeah, they've already taken that armor down already, though. Like, Gentleman Squirrel already down past half health. Rock throw is Rock throw. Oh my god. Dodges the rock throw, the shield protecting him regardless. Dodge and Insane really will continue to stay on, on the Gentleman Squirrel. Once again, though, in damage mitigation mode, they've already minimized all of his armor. 
Yo, he jumps in with the fire breath right there. Now focusing on decoy killer. Decoy killer, great dodge right there. This, this DTR team showing off what perfect positioning looks like. They are able to dodge all of these, mostly because they're in the exact right position to do so, Aegis. They're, they're doing a phenomenal job today. The dome goes down, he does leap smash, and he is gonna try and get the get out of there. It looks like we got some rubber banding happening though, Aegis. Yep, and he does escape though. He, he, he does manage to get out of there. Uh, he will leap smash and escape those caves, but Man, he's already down to half health again. Half health and nothing to show for it, Aegis. Um, yeah. Just not even in some evolve energy at this point. Uh, he did a great job of luring them into the Tyrant Pit there. He knew they were either going to have to try and come around both ends or, or you know what I mean? They were going to have to split to get to him there. So it, it was a smart move. I think that's why they choose the cave so often. Oh my goodness, but the Gentleman's Squirrel does get that dart off. They have him tracked for another 45 seconds, and I, he has a dome up, and they are within range uh, here very shortly. Cloak dome all the way. Anyone miss that? Another one comes yeah, this is a great play. Look at this. All of them staying in unison. Oh, he does get ahead of them right there, but I think it's going to be enough to catch the dome. He's out. He's yeah, he out. is out of the dome. He is out. Great dodge right there on the part of Insane. Well done. That will buy him some precious time as long as he can get some distance. And they're still very, very close to him, though. Look at that on the map right there, only a few meters away. Guidance on Assault, 40 meters away, firing at him with that machine gun, not letting up. This is Insane's fight right now, though, Aegis. He's got full armor, he doesn't have full evolve energy, and they are right on top of him, which means that if he can, if he finds a situation where, where one of them is split funny trying to chase him, he has an excellent opportunity to evolve and try and get a free strike off. So these hunters need to be careful not to just pell-mell after him, but of course it's DTR, so <laughs> that's not what we expect. Yeah, and look at how close the Gentleman Squirrel is already. 60 meters away, just waiting to get that next dome whenever yep. uh, whenever Insane is finally ready to evolve. He's missed, he's missed his darts, though. Insane doing a great job of breaking line of sight for Gentleman Squirrel. He does finally get a dart off, though. Yeah, he, he, will, uh, he will feed up there, just about ready to hit stage three. Um, although the survival odds show it heavily in the Hunter's favor right now. He's got to hit that stage three without taking any health damage and get full armor if he wants to have a very, very strong chance at a final stage three fight. That's right, Aegis, and I think that survival odds also factored in the fact that while he may be ready to evolve, he also just got hit by a tracking dart less than five seconds ago. So he's got a full minute almost that he's going to be tracked and that they get to set up a position. He's nowhere to... <laughs> he can run, but he can't hide. Yeah, you're right. You're right. He can run all he wants, but for 45 seconds, they will know where he is. And on a small map like Distillery, that is more than enough time for them to catch up. Yeah, and Insane looking like he's he's gone for a lot of utility here. He's able to break up those Markov mines, but he doesn't have as much burst as as he needs to just just you know pop down uh, 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 the gentleman squirrel when when the dome does come up. He is tagged again. The gentleman squirrel is on fire with those tags today. It is... Yeah, yeah, constantly, constantly dropping those tracking darts, never letting up. Uh, it's one thing you usually don't see with a lot of aid players, but it's something that I've seen the Gentleman Squirrel do since the press release back in January, and it is amazing to watch him play Abe. He's got a lot of space here, Aegis. He may just decide to evolve regardless. He goes for the evolve, yeah, look at that. And the Gentleman Squirrel staying out, doesn't realize that he evolves until right now when he hears the roar, and now he's going to charge in, but it may actually be a little bit too late. Yeah, this, oh my goodness, oh. he's snapped by a tyrant too! Yep, nabbed by the tyrant. They do shoot him out right away though, but man, this is going to create some confusion for them, and it's going to buy Insane some precious time to stay inside and armor up. Look at this, the, the guidance right outside of the dome. Interesting. Yeah, ha! <laughs> Look at that! Look at that! That's, oh my goodness! <laughs> Jumps through the dome with the shield up though, that way he doesn't take any damage. Oh my goodness, the no, guidance, guidance is going to go down! down. Yes, that, wow. that is a mean, mean, angry stage 3 monster that is sick of getting picked on Aegis, and he wow. is not going to take it anymore. And he, he finishes off the, the Guidance right away. This actually looks really bad for DTR right now. He is going to get full armor. They need to back off. They don't have the damage to uh, take him in a significant fight right now. Yep. That's they, why they need to back off for two minutes. Uh, 
Insane advancing on the Gentleman Squirrel, gets the pounce on the Gentleman Squirrel, and Decoy Killer and Kaiser Tim are too far away to stop him. Kill number two for Insane 5-2-1 of Team Evolve Hype. He may tie things up right here and take the semifinals into a game number five. That's right, Aegis. He's got to be pissed about that last round. He is definitely looking to make a comeback and even up the score and even the odds. Uh, and maybe take some of the pressure off of himself as well. Uh, fantastic play here. And, and any remember that like while he is going for the relay, any strike that he gets here is just essentially a free strike. Um, uh, there's not, I, I, I don't see a whole lot of chance of him being able to eliminate this team, but if he can pick up at least another strike on maybe a uh, decoy killer, um, that'd be fantastic for him, especially if he can get it like right as the dropship comes. Yeah, and look at that, attacking the relay now, he is going to force them out of position. Decoy killer gonna stay far away, doesn't want to risk the health damage. It's gonna be up to Kaiser Tim to come in and chase him off. Yeah, he does smell Kaiser Tim. He, oh no, I think, huh? What's he doing here? I don't know what he's doing. I, They weren't falling for his bait. Now right. he's actually just going hunting. He's on the All prowl right. right now, sneaking, looking for someone. Okay, he sees Decoy Killer. He must. He's going in that direction. Wow, Insane251 says he's not going to win it with the point victory. Decides to hunt down the remaining players. Oh my goodness gonna get kill or gonna get decoy killer out on this beach he's definitely in smell range now he knows that all he has to do is just knock him out into that deep water and it's over for him because he can't heal himself yeah decoy killer though doing a great job running away the dropship incoming but look at how far out the lz is the landing zone 150 meters away from the rest of the team they have a few seconds before they drop in and then they still need to regroup this is very very bad for DTR. Insane very much has a chance to win right here. Switches off back to Kaiser Tim. Kaiser Tim pops the Invis, jumps into the water, but he does get caught by the Fire Breath and will be revealed. The Orbital comes down. The rest of the team is here. Rock Throw oh, blocked the... by Guidance and the Leap Smash into the Locked tree. The tree. <laughs> Fantastic job here. Absolutely moving in to try and engage Gentleman Squirrel. Wants to remove their ability to dome him once his armor comes down. Gonna try and focus him down. Pops through the, the, the Hank shield. Great rock throw there. Catches Guidance and Decoy Killer together. Flame Breath onto the Gentleman Squirrel and Kaiser Tim. Gentleman Squirrel goes down. Finish. Guidance is almost down. Still railing away with that lightning gun. Trying to put some punish on him. But I don't know if it's gonna be enough. Fire Breath to reveal anyone who might be cloaked near the Gentleman Squirrel. Trying to take out the Guidance. And those healing grenades coming in. The Gentleman Squirrel is dead. The Guidance is almost dead. Decoy Killer doing what he can. And Kaiser Tim caught out and dead as well. This is looking very, very good for Insane 5 2 1 here. Team Evolve Hype may take this into a game number five. Rock Throw almost dodged by Decoy Killer. Takes a little bit of chip damage. And Insane is going to reposition onto the Guidance. Guidance pops the shield, forcing Insane to disengage. And he switches back to Decoy Killer before he can get Kaiser Tim up. Decoy Killer almost had Kai Oh my goodness! And Decoy Killer leap down smash. by the long range rock throw. Oh, a leap smash into a rock throw that hit the medic before she was done tumbling and hit the ground. That was fantastic. Pull slap. <laughs> wow. The guy is getting hunted down. And this Insane is, is, is on the hunt vicious. right now. Leap smash for the win. <sighs> leap smash. Yes, <laughs> it was insane. Leap smash for the win, just like you talked about earlier. How satisfying it is to finish off a match with a Leap Smash. There's no better way, Aegis. There's no better way. Just fantastic job there. I think that Insane realized his biggest problem was, as Kraken, in order to be able to do damage, you can't run at the same time because you have to turn and face the Hunters and expose that giant target of a face, which DTR was taking huge advantage of. They were getting all kinds of headshots onto that Kraken. I think what he realized is, is that if he decides to go Goliath, then he has the ability to jump in, do stuff like Leap Smashes, charge, get a Flame Breath off, and jump out. Uh, able to do damage without necessarily giving the hunters the opportunity to do very much damage to him. And it paid off in spades for him. 
Yeah, it really did. A great turn of events for Insane right there. Way to switch it up. You know, they picked Abe thinking that he was going to go Kraken again because he has been for the past few weeks. But Insane still remembers how to play Goliath, still practices Goliath consistently, um, although not as much on stream. So I don't, I don't know if they realize that he could still play Goliath at top tier. He is you know, not out of practice with Goliath either. It's exactly as you said in game one there, Aegis. It's it's very interesting because he is probably one of the most balanced players right now. I, I would probably hand that assessment to you uh, uh, without any argument. I, I would say that as far as all three slash four of the monsters are concerned, I think Insane can, is probably all around one of the better players in the scene, period. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and proving and just, it, proving it right there, taking it to DTR, a team that has looked so on point and has done so well up to this point. This is going to be a really, really intense game five. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the results, see if we have right. any other updates to offer before we do go into that game five. Do we know how long that's going to be, Aegis? Do we have contact with the players? I am about to message them right now. Give me just a moment, and we'll find out which side will get the pick. Remember, uh, because this is the tiebreaker, this is a best of five, this is the fifth match, the bottom team will have the choice in the brackets. So as we can see here, that will be Team Evolve Hype that gets to choose which side will go. Team Evolve Hype coming into this with the higher seed uh, as they were placed on the, uh, on the, uh, uh, how am I trying to say this? As they were placed on the brackets today. Um, that, that may make all the difference. Uh, though I don't know, Aegis, because each team's, as we were kind of hoping for the last time, uh, each team's hunter team has won and each team's monster has won. Um, so it's kind of anybody's match at this point. There, there, there's no clear, definitive, hey, this is the best way to go. All right. It looks like Steam just went down. Um, I, are you off Steam, too, or is it just for me? Um, You know, Steam went down for myself as well. I just I think we'll... Do you, do you want to go to a quick break while we wait for that to reboot? We will have to wait to, uh, to see what happens. Sometimes it comes back up in a second, though. So I'm just... We're going to stay here for just a moment. If Steam doesn't come back up in a minute, we will cut to a quick break, folks, until Steam comes back up and we are able to resume playing. All right. I'm doing the... What I like and, to call the Steam Dance. The, the continual restart reopening. <laughs> while we're waiting, uh, if anyone in chat from either of the teams is watching, please let us know which side will be picked for that fifth game. Yeah, I, I could possibly check uh, you know I they're probably all in private channels right now so I don't think we'll be able to check it that way yeah it looks like everyone else is uh is offline as well I'm checking That's the Steam server status web page Aegis and it does say that all Steam is offline right now okay oh and Insane is saying he will be playing game number five Okay, so Fantastic. you said Steam is definitely offline for everyone right now? Uh, yes. Okay, all right, we will cut to a quick break, folks. Once again, thank you all so much for tuning in. Thank you for all the love, all the support you've shown today, all the follows. If you haven't done so already and you want to help support the channel, you can do so for free by just hitting that follow button down below. It helps grow the channel, helps spread the word, and helps show people these awesome, awesome, awesome games of competitive evolve that we love sharing with all of you and bringing to you every sunday you also get notified anytime we go live and do anything else like this in the future which there will be a lot more to come thank you all so much for everything so far we will cut to a quick break and we will be back for game number five of the semi-finals dtr versus team evolve hype thanks for watching
There's fair weather on this map, right? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the ESL Go for Evolve Sunday Cup number six. We are here in the semifinals. We are back and we are just about ready to jump into an exciting game number five between DTR and Team Evolve Hype. Slight delay there with the Steam servers going offline for everyone. Uh, hopefully that does not happen again. They are going through the picks right now. Once those picks are selected, they will be starting the next game. For those of you just tuning in who don't know how this works, what I mean by picks is that uh, each team um, actually announces their picks beforehand. The Medic and uh, the Trapper pick first. The Monster then responds with a pick to the, rest of, to the Hunter team. And then the Hunters get a chance to counter pick with an Assault and a Support. Now, the teams do not announce what perks they pick, though. So they are allowed to pick the perks in secret. Um, what else? Oh, uh, Elite Wildlife is off. I guess uh, we don't Clear usually skies. mention that as much anymore. Uh, yeah, fair weather, fair, I mean. fair weather, not clear skies. Yeah, yeah we don't weather. usually mention that as much anymore because that's been that way since the beginning of the ESL leagues. Um, but we probably should for any new viewers who are just tuning in who have not watched before. So that is important to note. Um, you know, once those buffs do get balanced, I'm sure that they will bring them back into the game. All right, and we do have the per, uh, the picks selected, so we will be jumping right into the next game right here. Getting ready just now. All right, let's get ready and uh, check out this amazing game number five. This is yet another tiebreaker. This is Team DTR versus Evolve Hype. We are jumping into the game right now. Let's get some hype up in chat. Let's see some love for each of your favorite teams. If you want to see Team DTR take the win here today, the hunters that everyone knows and loves so much, let's see some Pog Champs up in chat. And if you want to see Insane 521, the Beast, the Monster, from Team Evolve Hype. Let's see some OPOPs here in chat. We're going to see another good weather control map here. This is going to be an interesting pick. Um, yeah. I, I honestly, this is this is one of the ones that I I, I do not like playing on. Um, I just, I, I we have too many sneaky monsters that, that like to play with us that that exploit the a few of the areas on here too well. <laughs> Uh, and and I, I personally just do not like this map. I don't know, Aegis, if you had to say what your very favorite map was, what would you pick? Uh, my pick, unfortunately, um, would probably earn uh, the hatred of many of the monster players in the competitive scene. <laughs> Actually, many of the hunter players as well, but Birds. I love distillery. No, oh, no, no, distillery. I, I Me love too. distillery, yeah. Me too! I love yeah. distillery too. I see. It's funny. As soon as you said that people were going to hate you for it, I thought it was barracks because apparently everyone hates barracks. But I like that. I a lot of competitive players feel the map is too small. I don't know. Maybe it's just that I'm used to it from playing it since the alpha. But I That's love right. the map. All right, let's cover the players here real quick. We are here in game number five in this best of five semifinals. This is insane five to one for Team Evolve hype playing the Kraken once again. We have. Guidance on Assault playing Markov. We have Decoy Killer on Medic playing Kyra. We have DTR Kaiser Tim, the leader of Team DefendTheRelay.com playing Support as Hank. And we have the Gentleman Squirrel, everyone's favorite dev, everyone's lovable rabid rodent playing Trapper on Griffin. Now, you brought up an excellent point there, Aegis. A lot of these teams have their own pages. Uh, I, I really encourage you to go check out Team Defend the Relays page and Team Evolve Hype's page, as, as Team Evolve Hype has all of the tournament information um, for, for the EHL League. And DTR, if you're a new player, DTR has posted some fantastic guides to help you learn and play as good as them. Yeah, they do have some great guides on their website. 
All right, it looks like they still don't quite have vision of him. Even Oh, no, wait, I think Gentleman Squirrel might be honing in on him now. Maybe he's hurt him or something, because he is headed in the right direction. Yeah, look at that. Look at that moving to cut him off. He knows exactly where Insane is going. Yep, he's got him completely walled off with sound spikes. There's nothing Insane can do to get out of there. He, they're going to get this first dome almost almost definitely, Aegis. Um, and that is a really hard position for Kraken to be in. However, it does look like Guidance goes down to some wildlife. I'm not sure what it is. Maybe a Bliss Leopard? Yep, just Looks like leopard. it was a Blitz Leopard, yeah. Yeah, once again, oh, there's another getting one on slowed him. down by that wildlife. There's another one on him. That would have taken him down to just a, a sliver of health remaining, uh, Aegis. As we both know, those Blitz Leopards can be dangerous in numbers. Looks like the looks like the monster is uh, hopping onto the assault there, or support. Looks like he's going to be able to get a strike on Kaiser Tim before the match even starts. Wow. Absolutely. Stage one fight, only Kaiser Tim and the Gentleman Squirrel together. Guidance slowed down once again by wildlife. Oh my goodness. And Gentleman Dragon Squirrel gets pounced here. Gets pounced into Vortex, into Banshee Mines. Gentleman Squirrel is going to go down. And it's happened. Gentleman and Squirrel is down as well. Kaiser decoy Tim Killer. No, Decoy Killer keeping him alive. Great job. No, he does finally yep. go down. Kaiser Tim almost up as well. He prevents the res there. Decoy Killer about to be taken out. And oh my goodness, folks. Are this we going to see... This could be a quick stage one win on the part of are, Insane. Are we going to see this epic... Epic to a five game battle turning. Look at this climbing the tower right here, advancing on decoy killer. Guidance wisely staying away at this point. Decoy killer going to go down as well. What in the world just happened? Oh my Three goodness. downs, only guidance left alive. Guidance running for his life right now from this insane kraken. Well, I'll tell you I'll tell you in one word what happened, Aegis. Insane. Yeah. That was insane, and look at that. Kraken cutting right across the corner of the map, looking for Guidance. Trying um, to spell actually, those Actually, he, he may avoid him here. Well you know played what? on Guidance's part. I don't think Insane is going to cut around the side of uh, of the uh, landing should. platform here. I don't think yeah, he should nope, he's taking either. the Evolve. Exactly, I think he, he still has evolve. a minute to go. He still has a minute to go. Yeah, he just essentially got three free strikes there, Aegis. Three absolutely, completely free strikes and almost wiped the team in stage one. DTR has a lot of work to do to come back from this, and mentally that has got to be absolutely anguishing for that to happen in, in the first few minutes of, of <laughs> the match that determines whether you make it to the finals. It's ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. It does look like Guidance is going to survive this one. Um, uh, he They're will, but by the time that they drop in, um, I mean, he's going to be full armor and easily Insane's three quarters of the way to stage three. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, I think he's going to be all the way ready to take stage three. Uh, he, uh, well, actually, maybe not. It looks like this area of the map is a little bit sparse for wildlife, but I, oh, Insane pushing himself to an absolutely commanding lead here. It's, it's not impossible for DTR to come back from this but it would probably be one of the more fantastic comebacks in a single game that I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. This would be an amazing comeback, and that's exactly what they need to pull off here Stage today. Three. They do have a chance to pull it off, though. It very well could happen. We've they seen are dropping, crazier things in past events. They are dropping 300 meters from him, and he is one piece of energy or one piece of meat away from having the energy to evolve. He's gonna have stage three before they're in. Yeah, yeah you're here absolutely now. right about that. And look at that evolving inside of the caves. 220 meters away, they will not even be in dome range by the time that he is out. But the question is, do are... they stay in now, or do they back off and prepare to defend the relay? You know, judging by the sounds, they should know that they're nowhere close, and I'd say that they should fall back, like, they're, they're probably going to fall back on their namesake, just because I don't think they have much of a chance of getting out there before he gets substantial armor, and then if they do that, they're going to be strung out trying to get to him, rather than in a, in a defensive position, ready to leverage the only thing they really have right now. Their positioning is their weapon, Aegis. And, and time after time, they've proven how effective it could be. And look at that insane full health, full armor, stage three, 170 meters out. They're doing whatever they can. DTR just trying to position themselves properly to get ready for this impending fight, this unavoidable you know fight. 
he just I almost felt like like if 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 I didn't know the pick order, I would have almost said that they went Griffin expecting insane to go Goliath again after that commanding victory. Just that's because that's exactly what they did. Yep, that's that's what I thought. And and it's they've really like I think that might have been why Insane went Goliath in the first place was was to get a good switch up and, and to try and maybe fake a few picks. Uh it's done fantastic for them here because even though the harpoons can drag the Kraken out of the air, they don't affect him nearly as much as the other monsters, just just in the way that he moves. He's gonna come in and focus directly on Kaiser Tim. He wants that shield down. He doesn't probably care very much about the dome at this point. Fantastic job of of just avoiding most of the damage from the DTR team here. Defend the relay doing a great job of running around the many pillars here in line. Great of dodge on the lightning strike here. Yep. Yeah, this is a actually a great position to fight a Kraken in. I have actually played with DTR in this position before. Um, I think we'll have to stay on Kaiser Tim. On assault Kaiser Tim here. Down, to, down to just a touch of health left, and he is definitely visible. Kaiser Tim goes down. Going to be taking wow. another strike there, and he's he's yeah he's out of the fight entirely. He's going to be dead. Um, wow, that's that is tough. They needed that shield. They've been using it a lot. They've only taken ship damage away from them here. Going down to half health on the assault there. Um, I don't know, Aegis. I don't even know what to say here. Yep. Great. Guidance guidance, and the Gentleman Squirrel caught by that lightning strike right there. Good lightning strike around the corner there. He is going to force him to pop his shield. Uh, he's going after Decoy Killer. Gosh, I want to say Lord Death. Um, lightning strike no, on lightning Decoy strike Killer. Out. Decoy Killer, Gentleman Squirrel. And the Guidance all hit by the same Lightning Strike. The only one left is the Guidance, and there is very little he can do here. The Pounce seals the deal. A very quick, convincing game number five on the part of Insane for Team Evolve Hype. You know, and they wow. were doing an excellent job of laying those mines around there at the end, but I felt like those mines were actually a detriment. If you watch the Gentleman Squirrel, there were five or six times when he's trying to run, and all the Kraken does is is toss down an auto attack onto the mines, and it, it, it pops the hunters up, and they can't run, they can't use their abilities, they're tumbled for a good uh, half a second. Yeah. Um, yeah, would just, you look at that, though? That snowball effect. I mean, that initial dome, that initial stage one dome, catching Kaiser Tim and the Gentleman Squirrel off by themselves, allowed him to attack them each and single them out, take one down after the other after the other, and get three strikes in stage one. And that was all because the other side was held up by wildlife. You know, and I, I feel like it's even more than that. I kind of felt like it was almost a little bit greedy because they, like, that's that's ne almost never a risk you see Gentleman Squirrel take. He almost never drops the dome unless he knows his entire team is there to support him. I don't but, think he realized it until it was too late. Oh, it was, oh, that that right there is the moment that the entire game changed. And if they, honestly, as I said, they would have had a hell of a time coming back from that in the first place, Aegis. Yeah. All right, let's see, uh, let's see how Team HOY is doing. Uh, let's, no, that's the poll. Here we go. Let's see if we have any update on their score. Team Sith Evolve and HOY, we have no update here. Let me check with some of the players right now. Wow. And, you know, I have to say, Team Evolve hype eliminating the crowd favorite today. Um, DTR, the crowd favorite by over 30%. Yeah, the upset right there. Well played on their part. I was muted for just a second because I was trying to type to the team. Give me one minute here. Oh, take your time there, Aegis. Uh, uh, fantastic job here, guys. I'm going to try and see if I can get you any update on what's happened. And it doesn't look like HOY has played a game against Sith Evolve from what I can tell on my charts. That doesn't necessarily make it true. Uh, let's find out what's going to happen here. Right, that's what I'm seeing too. Okay, and the see. voice starting to give out ages, I can hear it. <laughs> My voice or yours? Mine. <laughs> oh, I, I feel like mine is too today. I've never had this issue before. Um, I think the games today are just too much hype. More intense. More talking intense. a little bit too loudly and uh, damaging the back of my throat just a little bit. Hopefully Nerf. I don't lose my voice completely by the end of the day. Yeah, these games are just too exciting right now, right here today. The hype is real. You can't nerf the hype, Aegis. You can't nerf the hype. It's just yeah. how it works. <laughs> All right. So let me see here. Let me, uh, let me quickly confer with one of the other players from, from Team HOY. 
You know, uh, it I... looks like Banai is away. Uh oh. Oh, okay. So it seems like they actually can't play right now. That newt's steam is down for routine maintenance. His internet is one hundred percent fine, but his steam is down. So they actually have not played their games yet. Let me see if their um if their hunters have played. That Newt, of course, being the monster player for Team uh, uh, Hard on You now. It be, being the fill-in monster player for Team Hard on You. I don't know that he's the permanent player from what I understand. He he is filling a position for this week. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if he does end up taking the permanent spot or 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 if they end up find or who they do end up finding to fill the, the place there. Team Sith Evolve, of course, being a team that's been with us uh, almost the whole time. Having picked up a couple of new players, um, um, Bugsy, Aruminium, and I believe Mindfield, uh, uh, all new, um, and obviously playing very, very well. They've done an excellent job of recruiting. I, I, I am curious to know what happened to the other Sith Evolve team, though, that, that, that was entering for so long ages. Do you, do you, have you heard any word about that at all? The other Sith Evolve team? Or not, not Sith Evolve. Or, well, Sith Atlas, I, you mean? That that's what I mean by by Sith Evolve team. I mean, Evolve, right, right. Sith, Sith Atlas. Team. <laughs> uh, no, I am not sure what what happened with Sith Atlas. Um, they may be taking a break for a week. Yeah, I the last time I saw them was was in the Sith versus Sith match uh, uh, that took place in in uh, week four. Um, but uh, just overall fantastic today. How is everybody out there in in Chatland feeling? Fantastic match, right? All right, I am uh, talking to that new right now. It looks like he is online. Hopefully, they can go and jump into that game before we have to take a break. Uh, oh, actually, I guess he's having issues connecting through Steam. HOY may have to forfeit two games. Hmm, that's that, very, very unfortunate. That's incredibly unfortunate. Their ages. At, at the same time, though, we we wouldn't want to hold the whole tournament up for two, three hours because of Steam maintenance. Yeah, we'll have to see what happens there. Uh, once again, everyone, thank you so much for all the support. I cannot express it enough. You guys have been so great in showing up consistently to the Sunday Cups that we love putting on for you. We've seen the channel grow and grow and grow on Sundays. Thank you all so much for all the support. Thank you for all the follows. Thank you for continuing to just blow it up on Sundays with those follows, showing your love, showing your support. And for those of you who haven't already, if you do want to support the channel, consider hitting that follow button. It's completely free. It does help grow the channel. It's a great way to show your support completely for free. And you will get notified anytime we go live and do events like this in the future, every Sunday, soon, every Saturday as well, and times throughout the week as well. Now, just waiting here to see if we can get some final word on uh, on what happened. Okay, uh, well, some people in chat are saying that Sith Atlas has disbanded. I'm seeing a number of competitive players say that. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing as well, Aegis. Oh, Team Salge. Yeah, there's another there's another team that's not here this week. Although I, th I believe Salge is Salge taking a break is still as together well. though because yes, aren't they, they going to be in in Evolve hype? As far yeah, as I, yeah, yeah, NHL. as far as I know, they are still together and they are in the Evolve hype league. Whatever happened to pushing daisies? Tear, tear, tear. Well, that what was a great team. <laughs> that, yeah, that was a great team. And if you do want to see Pushing Daisy's old gameplay, uh, which was the team that I captained for the uh, for the PAX East Evolve Pro Am tournament, I will be obtaining high definition video of that direct from 2K at some point this week, and that will be uploaded to the YouTube channel. The link for that is down below as well. You can follow on YouTube and get to check out those matches if you didn't get a chance to during the PAX East Live LAN event. Um, we are going to take a quick break here, folks, until uh, Team HOY gets all of their issues sorted out. Thank you all so much for tuning in, staying around, and watching us. We will be back very, very shortly as soon as we have some word as to uh, when the next matches will begin. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm losing time, but I don't know how I'm here. The sunlight has turned to grey And I feel like I'm losing love again I don't know how I'm here 
Wow, we are close to 1,000 followers today. Thank you all so much for that support. Will we hit 1K today? We are almost there. I think under 80 followers away. Thank you all so much. This is great, guys. Thank you. I cannot say it enough. We'll be back soon for some more awesome Evolve. Thanks for watching. I know now we're getting older The world we built is slipping through our fingers We're running out of time But you are the one I've chosen And I won't lay still Live and let behind Imprisoned by this love
Whoa, Steam Buffer music, what's going on? What is going on right here? There we go. What is happening to the internet today? I don't even know what to say about this. Let's try a quick refresh and at least give you guys some music to listen to while we wait for these issues to be sorted out. Hopefully, Twitch is not going down too. That would be very, very bad. Let's see here. Just need to wait for this one commercial to end. And... It is loading up. No, no, we are seeing picnic baskets in the Monster Cat chat. We can't even stream the music. Well, this is very, very interesting. I am getting an update right now. Let's see. IG is saying something about Navi, the Dota team. Interesting. So Na'Vi is moving their matches. No, what? He is only typing to me right now. Hold on. Let's let's patch you in. All right. All right. We are back. Uh, what's up? So what's going on, IG? Your volume is back. I on. I, I have an update. I have an update from Team Sith Evolves Monster Player who says that um, essentially the match is going to be moved. The match is going to be moved, so we will not get to see the finals today. That's that's what I understand from the communication I was just sent. Or the and, semifinals, and, let's see. And, and, and the Navi thing came because right before that I said, hey, listen. Hey, listen? I don't get it. Navi? You're, you're not, a, you're not a, 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 a Zelda player, are you? Hey, li yeah, the, the little, the little uh, fairy from Zelda, that's right? That's right, yep. Was she named Navi? I don't yes, remember that's that. Navi. Oh, <laughs> oh, okay. When I hear Navi, I think either um, either that Cameron movie. Ah, oh, right. His name, I can't. I I just can't think of the name right now. I've seen too many games of Evolve to think about anything else right now. Or I think of the Dota team. Yeah, but One from what I'm what I'm other. seeing, this this might be the end of our matches today. Looks like Monster Cat is down too. I can't even pull up music from Monster Cat on uh, Twitch right now. Very, very interesting. Let me, uh, let me, you know, before we say that for sure, let me confirm at least with, uh, with the other teams. Okay. So, so I am hearing from one of the team captains. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We finally got music back, but not at the right time. Rip ears. Sorry about that, folks. So we are hearing from one of the team captains that the admins are telling them to reschedule, but the other team doesn't want to. Hmm. Let's see if we hear anything else. Uh, all right, well, we do have everything else back online, which is good. Um, except for these issues with Steam, which is very, very unfortunate this week. Yeah, absolutely, Aegis. There, there's been a lot of technical difficulties with this cast. Though I have to say that, that uh, the amount of frustration we've had to endure versus how good these matches has actually been has definitely a risk-benefit uh, analysis I'm willing to, to take there. Um, today has been probably some of the most exciting matches you and I have had the opportunity to cast since we started casting the Gopher Evolve uh, uh, Sunday Cup. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The hype has been insane so far today. Amazing gameplay, amazing matches on the part of everyone. And just phenomenal, phenomenal play all around. And hopefully we do get to see so much more coming up very, very shortly. Okay, so an ESL admin is currently asking them if they have another monster that can fill. Yeah, that would be a good alternative. I mean... I mean, we do have a live tournament right now. If you can't play, um, it's unfortunate. I, 
I'm not even sure. Uh, I think they I don't, planned I don't the Gopher they're... Evolve uh, Cup. They weren't expecting there to be live broadcast every Sunday, so they didn't take that into account which, and decided to allow for rescheduling, um, yep, which is absolutely. something that hopefully they fix in the future. Yeah, it makes it really, really, really hard for people to to know and connect to a tournament when they're not always sure that they'll be able to see the outcome, Aegis. I mean... Exactly. Um, I mean, it, it's unfortunate for a team to have to forfeit, but sometimes maybe that should be the case. Well, then again, you, you can't exactly get mad at Team HOY for following what is right now What is rules. in the rules. No, I know. I know. Yeah. You can't. It's not yeah. their fault. It's the rules. The rules need to be changed to allow for forfeits in situations like this. Yeah, it's uh, it's very interesting. Um, uh, it's, it's kind of... <laughs> and we have some sub or riot going on in chat right now. Get sub or forfeit. Get sub or riot. We can see uh, the chat pretty much in agreement too. Everyone just wants to see some evolve right now. You know, can I say something kind of interesting here, Aegis? Um, technically, what that admin just said there is is technically a violation of ESL rules in and of itself. I mean, if they're going to grant them the ability to to get a sub. But they would have had to have, have put in a sub on their roster this morning, which they, there's only a five man and, and none of them play monster. No, I, be I believe ESL uh, admins can make small rule changes like well, that to that's, allow that's for subs and, and things like that. I wouldn't call it a violation. No, not at all. Well, no, that, that's, they that's they can definitely is... allow for a sub if they want to, to allow yeah. the games to continue, to allow the show to go on, and to let everyone see more evolve. Yeah, that, that's what I mean, though, Aegis, is that this would be a very special kind of circumstance if they do allow them to go and grab a sub. I mean, that that's essentially ESL saying, we really don't want to reschedule. Could you please play this now, pretty please? Right. And we'll see how they react to it. Right, let's see. Uh, still waiting for any other sort of update. Let me uh, Let me ask the other team here. Hold on one second. All right. Sent a message to both team captains right now. What else do we have going on in chat here? We got some people saying move DTR up. Unfortunately, DTR was eliminated, <laughs> so we can't do that. <laughs> this has never happened before in the history of Evolve. No, it never has. Hopefully, it never will again. Hopefully, you there know, will be some rule changes after today to fix issues like this. You know what's funny is I love hearing statements like that. This has never happened in the history of Evolve in all two months. Uh, okay, never mind. <laughs> yeah, all two months. All right, you know what? Let's uh, let's actually check the rules here. Someone is actually saying that you don't need to wait for more than 20 minutes. Okay, well, I'm, gonna I'm doing a search for because... 20, and I am not seeing anything show up when I do a I'm pulling the rules up, and I, I do not think that's at all true. Um, yeah, I don't I, see I... that in the rules anywhere. If anyone has the link to this max 20-minute wait time rule, uh, please ask for permission to link it in chat, and we will permit you to send the link to the Evolve rules. Uh, but looking at it right now, it's not even showing up with a search. Uh, player drops. Actually, it's right under the player drop, and it's 15 minutes is what it says, but I don't know if this is the same thing. Uh, waiting time for a dropped player is 15 minutes. If the player or substitute rejoins the server and both teams are ready, the game can be resumed. But this game hasn't even been set up, Aegis. Um, right. Like, it's it's not like they were in the middle of a match and somebody, dro like, somebody dropped in between matches, um, it, which is what I believe that's that applies to. Let's see here. Minutes, yeah. Yeah, I see that here. Change of player. They may be changed during a match. It should not take more than five minutes. Very, very interesting wording on the rules here. Yeah, it's it seems to me like the rules aren't actually very clear because when it talks about a dropped player, that's that's not the same thing as as a uh, uh, is kind of what we're talking about here. I don't know that they actually have a, a rule set for this. All right, give me one second here. I'm just going to type to the other team real quick. All 
All right. <laughs> there is a rule. You can see it from here. It's a player drop. Because I, I don't. This this isn't the same thing as. I, I maybe yeah, it, it is. A player it's drop. not. We were just looking at it. If a player drops before thirty seconds are played, starting when the monster has loaded, the match will be restarted. After thirty seconds, the disconnected player has to try to rejoin the session. That says nothing about games actually in progress. If anyone has or not, I, I'm sorry. That says nothing about games that have not started yet. If anyone has a link to any rules covering that, feel free to ask, and we will provide you with. Uh, with the permission to post well, it, the link. It should all be right here on the same page, Aegis. This is, this is the, uh, this, yeah, as far as I understand, this is all no of show. it. Let's see. Agreements, player drops. Uh... However, they, they could take penalty points for this if they do, just like if, if, if ESL says that they need to play it and they don't, like it'll count as a loss and they could get rejecting compulsory challenge, which is anywhere between one to two points. Um, if it, remember that if a team gets up to six penalty points in a um, in ESL period, uh, uh, they they can no longer compete in ESL. The waiting time for a dropped player is 15 minutes. If the player or a substitute rejoins the server and both teams are ready, the game can be resumed. But you see, that does That's not cover matches action. that have not actually started. The problem is the ESL does not have any rules for games that are not in progress yet. Uh, and there needs to be. They need to have a clause added in for rules for games that are not in progress. All right, guys, if you want to see some Evolve right now, Bugsy is finally fed up. He says he will play HOI's monster if you guys spam Kappa in chat. So let's get some Kappa spam for Bugsy right now. Let's get some Evolve going on. Go, go, Bugsy. <laughs> All right. Yeah, and obviously he's just joking. I think he's going to play regardless. He just wants to see some of those Kappas. <laughs> and he wants to keep you guys entertained. He knows you want to see some Evolve. You want to see some awesome games. Uh, well, we give that new a uh, chance to reconnect to Steam and start playing again. Um, and he just wants you to have fun. He knows everyone loves seeing Kappas in chat. So let's get some Kappa spam right now, please. Kappa Riot! Kappa or Riot. There we go. We got a couple Kappas filtering in right now. Come on, come on. All right, going to talk to Sorosum, the team captain of HOY, real quick. All right. All right. I think we're starting to see the Kappas filtering in. That delay is finally taking over. There we go. There we go. All right. Oh, let's see here. We have a wall of Kappas in chat. Kappa, Kappa, Kappa. <laughs> all right. And Bugsy says he is very, very happy. He thanks you all for those Kappas. Let's see if they are actually ready to start yet. Looks like we will have a game going on very, very excellent. soon. Excellent, excellent. I think that's in everybody's best interest here, uh, Aegis. I don't think anybody is enjoying this downtime. Uh, it, it's All this is between a match like this, and you're probably better aware of this than anybody having played on a live uh, live tournament, but, but all this is right now is just nerve building time. Like, it is frustrating, and that adds to it as well, but, but your nerves start to build during this time, thinking over what you want to do right, what you don't want to do wrong, that kind of stuff. And and uh, I let's just do this already, you know? Yep, and look, that Kappa wall is still continuing. Okay, so I think that the teams will play now, finally. I am glad for that. What right, time is see. it in the EU right now? Uh... It's getting late, about between 11 and 1 a.m. Between 11 p.m. and... Oh, wow.
That's another interesting aspect to toss on here is that uh, one side is an NA team and one is an EU team. Or I thought they were. Or have, have members in the EU at least. Let me go check real quick just to make sure I'm not blowing smoke on that one. Yeah, Hard On You is an international team. They do have players over in Europe. So Interesting. That's, okay, I, so I'm so reading... So the, long, like the longer we go, the more tired and worn out the HOY players are going to be. Right. All right, um, it looks like ESL Gravity is coming to a decision now. Um... I'm going to wait for official word from HOY before announcing it, since I heard it from the other side. Hold on one second. All right. Right. Looks like I, I see in some chat people in chat. That new reconnect. Yeah, yeah, which is unfortunate. I see some people in chat talking about how every other ESL has a clause for a 15 to 20 minute maximum match delay. Um, unfortunately, this rule set doesn't, and they have to go by what's in the rules. It's just unfortunately not in this rule set. Um, so really can't fault any players for you know just taking advantage of what's in the rules. Keep in mind they are playing for money. And uh, they want to use the rules to their maximum advantage. Well, and let's and not get forget. What they can out of it. And let's not forget. I mean, th there have been all kinds of times when teams have essentially tried to give the other people the benefit of the doubt on a gentleman's agreement uh, over the ESL rules and ended up losing over it. You know what I mean? Um, it, it's happened multiple times. Uh, it's it's the kind of thing where take the advantage you can get as per the rules. See. Yep. Okay, so I have had confirmation from Sorosim, the team captain of HOY. Um, a decision has been reached by the ESL admins. They have just decided that uh, the, um, that they will lose by default, uh, unfortunately. HOY will be out, and Team Sith Evolve will advance to the finals by default. All right. Well, that should still be an absolutely phenomenal match. Just remember, Team Sith Evolve taking first place in the overall cup, uh, coming as an absolute underdog and, and taking it. Uh, should be a fantastic match against this other up-and-newcomer, Evolve Hype. Um, once again, a team has been involved with the league for a while, but but hasn't ever really had phenomenal showings until today. Yep. Yeah, all right. We, um, yeah, we will still have in some amazing games here, uh, Team Sith Evolve... Uh, winning last week, of course, as you mentioned. Um, but this week, they will advance to the finals again. Now up against the heavy opposition of Team Evolve Hype, led by their new monster player, Insane521. That should be coming up in just a moment. That's right, Aegis. Once again, everybody, sorry for all the delay. We're going to be right back on matches here very shortly. Uh, we're going to be casting the finals when we come, uh, w w as soon as it's readied up. Um, thank you so much for being here. Make sure you hit that follow button. Make sure you go to Twitter and, and hit that follow button over on Twitter as well, just so that you can know what's going on and, and be involved better with the Evolve community here. Uh, it's been phenomenal seeing you guys in chat. Oh, what was that? Oh, I see. All right, uh, thank you all so much for tuning in. We will be right back, folks, as soon as the finals teams are ready and good to go. Uh, so it looks like we will have now officially... Let me uh, let me see if I can pull up the brackets here. Here we go. Here we go with the brackets right here. So we will have, for the finals, we will have Team Sith Evolve versus Evolve Hype. It is official. Let's see here. 
All right, uh, that, those games should be starting up in just a moment. Thank you all so much for sticking around and watching. We will take a quick short break in just a moment, and then we will be right back. Uh, thank you all so much for all the support. Thank you for all the follows today. We are so close to 1,000 follows. I think we may actually make it today. You guys are great. You guys have helped grow the channel so much, and... You've done everything that you guys can to show your love for us here on this channel, putting on these amazing matches that we've evolved for you, putting on this awesome show every Sunday. I think we are finally past the major confusion, that massive hurdle at the end right there. Thank you to everyone who's stuck around. In just a moment, we will be back with the finals. Stay tuned, and thanks for watching. Hello. 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 Grats on beating DTR insane. Those are some great games, man.
folks we are back we are ready and we are finally live ready for the finals right now let's jump right into the game they have their picks already set we have a kraken coming out we have cabot kyra maggie and markov a pretty traditional comp against insane five to one on the monster this is team sith evolve versus Team Evolve Hype. If you guys want to see Evolve Hype win here today, let's get some hype up in chat. Let's see some Pog Champs. And if you guys want Dark to side. see Team Sith Evolve win here today, let's see some What Face up in chat. Let's get some What Face. Alright, let's jump right into the game right now. This is insane. 5 2 1 on the Kraken. We have Aromium on Assault playing Markov. We have Suspect. Well, we'll wait for that. They're still loading in through the dropship. Insane taking these free corpses there. There we go. We have Suspect on Medic playing Kyra. We have War Spirit on Support playing Cabot. And we have Ghost Patrol on Trapper playing Maggie. All right, and back to Insane. He takes off as quick as possible. Looks like he is going to be <laughs> fully armored up almost. Yeah, fully armored up and halfway to stage one already. The Hunters have not even dropped in yet. 45 seconds into the match. Great opener right there. Yep, they're they're directly on top of him here, Aegis. I think that they're probably going to get a dome before he's ready. But oh my goodness, he picks up he picks up the Sneak Pounce on War Spirit. Gets right him almost the all the way down. The cloak is... Oh my goodness, is this going to be a, an immediate strike? Because that's what it looks like to me, Aegis. It could be. It could be an immediate strike. They are coming in with the lightning gun though, and the dome does come down. This actually could be bad if he can't capitalize on it right here. Lightning strike into Vortex. Cabot with the damage amp, and Insane does have to back off. He cannot stay in against that kind of aggression. Stage one. Absolutely. As you can see, he's done a really good job separating himself on the levels there, Aegis, preventing himself from taking any kind of damage. And honestly, they, they don't actually know where he is other than just having Daisy point in the right direction. And up until just a moment ago, Daisy was still kind of lost for tracks. As you can see, the, the little icon above her head lets you know whether she's following or whether she's searching for tracks. They do finally get on top of him, but he's actually going to walk out of this with about half armor. 
um, um, a really excellent dope engagement here for Insane. Yeah, yeah, this is great play on his part. Although, man, they're whittling down his armor, just laying into him. He's about to be into permanent goes, health here during a stage health. one dome. This is not good for Insane. No, he just couldn't climb that wall there, Aegis. He, he was having a really hard time getting up that wall structure without taking damage. So he's only taking about a bar as he makes his way out. But as you can see, they're pinging right on his tail. Yeah. He just set off birds there. He's moving around, and it looks like he's going to pick up a little bit of a snack. But he still needs probably about six meats in order to fill up that evolve meter. And they are hot on him. I don't know if he's going to be able to make this. I, I really think there's going to be at least another dome before he evolves, just because the way it's set up. That Cabot is doing a phenomenal job preventing the feed there. Looks like they are going to get the dust tag off. That dust tag is going to allow them to track him for another 12 seconds. He's going to be outlined against everything. Ghost Patrol's moving up in. He should have a dome up in about 15 seconds. Um, goodness, War Spirit just to trying to do work with that rail cannon, doing a phenomenal job. Good job on Insane's part, though, minimizing the damage done to him. He only lost about one bar of health right there, and he is going to back off. Whoops. Whoops. Hit the wrong hotkey right there. He is going to back off and uh, try and cut back across the map. But, man, this Hunter team is staying on him very, very well. They're very close to him. And Cabot not giving up. Continually firing away with that railgun. Well, he does have enough to hit stage two now. I, this is going to be interesting. I think he needs to. Um, he's going to pull off a dome dodge if he can, and then go right for the evolve. I think most likely just to play it safe. You know, just to have that guaranteed leeway when he does evolve. All right, and he does advance over IG. Sees which way Ghost Patrol has committed, and he's going to duck in the opposite direction. Far, Absolutely. far away from Ghost Patrol. Look at that on the map right there. You know, Ghost Patrol doing a decent job of trying to close the gap, but it's just not going to make a difference. That Kraken has way too many traversals um, and is way too fast over the structure like this. They have to continually jump and, and go from jump to run, whereas Kraken is just as the crow flies. Um, so it's, or well, as the Kraken flies. <laughs> um, anyhow, it does look like he's going to be able to get the stage off right here, and he should be fairly decently comfortable. Cabot might get a few railgun shots off of, on him, but I, I feel that overall he, he should be able to escape this. Yeah, 75 meters out now, 70 meters and closing. I think he will Maybe be able not. to get away. He's in within dome range now. If they drop the dome now, he could get away. 35 yes. meters. He's actually going the same direction as Ghost Patrol. Ghost Patrol could get that dome. Dome nope. goes down. Nope, it's, he's going to miss it. Oh, no, nope, the dome thought... was not thrown. No, he was just juggled through the air. You know, if That's Ghost Patrol was. had thrown that sooner, they would have gotten the dome off on him. Yeah, I, I apologize for that. It just it looked like when he got juggled, did he, did he, the animation almost looked as, as though he'd thrown it. But it does look like they're going to get him here in just a moment. Uh, moving up, trying to prevent the feed with the Cabot Railgun. He does manage to pick up the rest of that slot that, that the Hunter team had killed on their way up there. Yep, and uh, Ghost Patrol, the Trapper, with the Medic Suspect splitting off from the rest of the team to cut off the Kraken player, looking to uh, catch him in a dome as he cuts back east across the map. Look at that right there. All right, advances. No, and he's going to back off, actually. Ghost Patrol, once again, though, splitting away, wisely not committing to any direction. Kind of keeping Insane locked down over here. We're at a bit right. of a standoff right now. That's right. That's right. It looks like he's trying to wait. Like, Insane looks like he's trying to wait for Ghost Patrol to commit to one side or the other to try and come in on the dome. And, and his team isn't doing quite enough pressure for Insane to feel like he absolutely has to move just yet. So he's not. He's just whittling them away from a distance, trying to get damage on them while they're separated from the medic. Uh, he does go ahead and slap them down, create a little bit of a distance there, and he's caused all three of them to group up. Um, I'm not sure what they're doing here. They essentially just gave up one side of that two-pillar thing that they were running him around. Wow, Sneak pounces the trap jaw there, and... All right. <laughs> I, I'm not sure what's happening here, Aegis. Yeah, they're just, they're at a complete standoff right now. Um, 
All right, and no, he's gonna jump through a Romeo now. Advances on a Romeo. Vortex knocks him away into sneak counts oh with Banshee goodness. Mines. Almost finishes him off, but he does pop his personal shield. He needs to get away, though, because Ghost Patrol, once again, looking to head off Insane the Kraken player and get the dome. We hear the dome coming down. It looks like we will have a dome situation here Aegis on stage two. Down. Aegis, Assault Shield is down, and he's down to just a quarter little bar of health. There's almost nothing they can do because he's just keeping him tumbled. Yeah, I don't this think he fantastic. can keep him up. Assault does go down. That Cabot damage amp, not enough. Insane still having shields. Now Daisy going in for the res, and Stain can just stay in and punish. You know, Cabot is trying to do all that he can to punish with the railgun from below, but it's just not enough to make that Kraken feel like he yep. has to And look at that Insane with his back turned to the rest of the team, minimizing the damage done while he tries to focus down a Romeo. That's right, he cannot let that Assault get up. It looks like the Assault did trigger his... Uh, he may not see this or may not know it, but Assault and actually... Assault is back up. Yeah, yep, yeah. Yeah, and Assault is back up. Look at that. Wow, and Insane is down to almost half health. He needs to back off right now in armor back up. Well played on his part, though. He did get a strike, but he needs to keep his advantage right now. You know, and I would say that's well played to War Spirit there, keeping up the consistent damage after that. He went into there when he had Assault down. He had almost full health. By the time Assault got res back up, he's almost down to half. Uh, that's all on the support and the Trapper doing that extra damage while the Medic tries to keep him up. Fantastic job of punishing on top of the corpse. They yep. turned what would have been just a straight up strike, uh, a nasty liability, and a fantastic play on on Insane's part into into kind of a decent trade for them. Actually, more than a decent trade for them. I, I'd say they got more than their money's worth on that. Yeah, they definitely did. Uh, that I would definitely say is a win for the for the hunters right there. A great dome on their part. Only one strike on assault. And you know that's one of the things about Insane's build. He just he takes three points in Vortex, three points in Banshee Mine at stage two, with no points in Lightning Strike. So his burst damage is still pretty low. You know he can get one or two strikes here or there. Oh but, my goodness, he's going for the Evolve here, Aegis. Oh, and, this could be they are, they very, are right very bad. This is really yep. nasty. He Ghost stopped, Patrol, 35 meters away. They're going to take off at Dome least a third of his health. Cabot oh with the goodness. Damage Amp, Markov with the Lightning Gun, and they are just destroying his HP here. A good Lightning Strike goes into War Spirit and almost takes War Spirit down from the beginning. Looks like Kraken doesn't like the Damage Amp anymore. Focusing him down, War Spirit does cloak, but it's not going to be enough. Daisy might be able to res underneath that cloak, however. He's going yeah. after the assault now. Takes Ooh. out a Romeo 2. Suspect almost down. Oh, Vortex man. destroys Suspect. War Spirit back up. And Insane advances on War Spirit. No, he's actually going to take out Daisy. I don't. Okay, so D he does take Daisy down. Sneak pounce on Ghost Patrol. Ghost Patrol will go down. War Spirit manages to get Suspect back up. So we have a, a support and medic still alive right now. Double lightning strike right there. War Spirit goes down again. This is very, very bad for this Hunter team. What looked to be a game in their favor turned around in a split second due to a hasty decision on their part. Advances now on Suspect. Lightning strike on Suspect. Goes down to the lightning strike and only Ghost Patrol is left alive. The Trapper forced to run. Insane can see the Trapper right now and will not stop until he gets his prize. He sees blood and he will not give up until he tastes it. Yeah, wisely she's gonna go over the top there to try and get around those those uh, traps that she's leaving for him. And that's it, Aegis, GG. Wow. Wow, a very, uh, a very scary opening for Insane, putting him in a very precarious position with that early stage one dome when he tried to get cute and hide underneath the drop point for the Hunters. Um, it allowed them to uh, to get that, that dome too early on him. And, uh, you know, they, they almost took a win because you know, of it right there. You know, Aegis, I want to talk about something very interesting. His style that he went is something I've been thinking about here for a long time, and that is that is like it's it's a, it's against conventional wisdom, but it feels like to me logically, if you focus the main source of damage down first, you cause the assault to to get down to no health, and then you make him pop his shield, and then take the assault out, and then you can stay and punish for as long as you want and try and get as many picks. If nothing else, then you've got to strike on the assault. Um, it's hard to do, but obviously Insane was thinking the same thing and made it pay off in spades for him.
Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. And you know, in, like you were saying, that that pounce Banshee Mind attack, Insane practices that nonstop. And you can see how well he has become at pulling it off. Uh, it's amazing to see him do it. He can, he can do it consistently, almost all the time. He rarely ever messes that up. And you see how much damage it actually does. Yeah, it's w when it gets landed correctly, it's unbelievably deadly. It's 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 probably one of the burstiest uh, uh, like. Vortex into Banshee Mines into Sneak Pounce is probably one of the nastiest, burstiest builds that any of the monsters can do. And that includes like Goliath Space Jam, where, where he does the rock throw directly into Leap Smash. Um, it's just a ton of damage, and you get, you get tumbled the entire way, so there's nothing you can do to defend yourself. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's very, very little you can do once you're tumbled. I know that they are looking at changing the tumble mechanic, um, giving hunters at least some small skill-based way out, uh, although nothing definitive just yet. But it is, it, it is an issue that they are aware of, and that's good. That's always very, very good news. Moving um, in on hour seven of this Go for Evolve ESL Sunday Cup. Once again, we just want to thank you guys for sticking with us for all seven hours so far. You guys are phenomenal. Thank you so much for sharing the channel and for all the love you've brought and support to the community. Um, we hope we're paying it back to you folks. Yeah, absolutely. We are so glad that we, you know, we can finally get back into these games after that long, unfortunate delay. Thank you all so much for sticking around. Thank you for your love and your support today. Thank you so much for all the follows, helping build the channel. We are so close to 1,000 follows. We may even get it here today. Thank you all so much. We are getting into game number two right now of the ESL Go For Evolve Sunday Cup Finals. This is Team Evolve Hype versus Team Sith Evolve. Uh, right now, we are currently in the second round. Uh, Team Evolve Hype, I believe, leads 1-0. I don't know if their Hunters won as well, but this is Evolve Hype's monster. Actually, insane 5-1. We've got a monster win on both sides, according to the chart there, Aegis. Um, a monster win on both sides, okay. Interesting. The troll behemoth uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> flash again. <laughs> yep, yep, you gotta love that from Insane. Always good for a little troll here and there. All right, and it looks like he's sticking with what he knows well, what works for him. Um, I'm also being notified by Arrowminium of... Team Sith Evolve, that I have been pronouncing his name wrong and saying Aromium. It Aerominium. is Aro Aerominium, yes. That was in chat. That was also messaged to me personally on Steam through a couple people. So apparently it I, is very important to him. I apologize for pronouncing your name wrong, but we do have it right now. I, I have to make an observation there. He must be British. <laughs> I think he's actually na though isn't he that's or... it's, it's it's just weird because that's the difference between how uh u.s people pronounce aluminum, aluminum. yes and aluminium yeah yes yeah it's it's the exact thing there but thank you so much aromium we will make sure that we get it right aromium and we are into game number, round number two, right here and now. Insane 5 to 1 on the monster for Evolve Hype. Once again, we have our Ominium on Assault playing I, I Markov. Think I actually think you still got it wrong there, Aegis. That's looking fine. The way it's we spelled. have. <laughs> oh, that's Aromium. how it was spelled to me in chat. We have. We have uh, Suspect on Medic playing Kyra. We have War Spirit on Support playing Cabot. And we have Ghost Patrol on Trapper playing Maggie. Yeah, uh, just just to finally clear this up, according to the way it's spelled, it would be Aeronium. Aeronium. It's Aerominium. Yeah, it was uh, it was corrected to oh, me there multiple it is. times. Yeah, you're right. it's, yeah it's it is so Aerominium. Anyhow, thank you so much, guys, and we're moving on. Looks like wow, uh, what's the time here, uh, Aegis? Because Insane is already ready to stage up, and I, I they only just like one minute, a minute one and minute, ten, 10 seconds. seconds. Yeah, That's insane. what an insane stage up right there. Wow! Wow, and oh, wow. Arrowminium caught in the Tyrant. He splits off, goes for War Spirit right away. War Spirit does get a shot off on the Tyrant, so he will be released from the Tyrant in a second, but I think he's gonna get a free strike on War Spirit right here. Dome comes down, Arrowminium on him with the Lightning Gun. He does not make it out of the Dome, but we do have a strike on the Cabot. I think they will get him back up, though. Okay, yeah, so they... this still could be a bad situation for Insane if he cannot minimize the damage done to him right here. Dust Tag reveals him. Cabot with the damage amp and Aerominium coming in from the other side with that lightning gun. 
Not a great place for him either, Aegis. There's not a whole lot of place for him to go ahead and break the line of sight of that assault. There's not a whole lot of place for him to, to get out of the assault's uh, uh, line of damage. And they've got a Cabot with that cost of railgun damage coming in. He's going to have his work cut out for him to keep his shield and to keep his health throughout this battle, even though he did get that awesome strike. Oh my goodness, and it looks like he's having a hard time. He's getting shot through the structure there by Cabot. He is able to get that Vortex off onto Ghost Patrol. Look at that, he's... running into the wall right there. Interesting choice. Vortex onto Ghost Patrol, knocks him backwards. Oh wow, Lightning Strike as well at stage one. He's already got Lightning Strike. Yeah, he did. You know, yeah, that's a good observation. He changed up his build significantly. Um, wow, must have not felt like he hit the first. The dome does go down, though. He does have two bars of armor. He's probably going to burn most of that as he's trying to break line of sight and run away here. But a fantastic job from Insane getting out of there, taking the strike, and not allowing them to trade any health for it at all. It looks like he's going to be making his way through the building out towards the beach. He might just evolve directly here in the building, depending on how safe he feels. Though, you know, I, I almost expect him to, to, to go towards that same beach area everybody does. Oh my goodness, wait, is he trying to force and get a strike against Aerominium here for sitting in the middle of the building? Yeah, he may. Aerominium coming in right here. No, he's going to back off. He doesn't... I don't know if Aerominium saw him. Not, yeah, no, they did have the pinks come out. So they definitely know where he is. He's going to escape out the middle of the structure right now. Backing away. Fantastic. Kind of taking a risk there. Any kind of sneak play like that with Daisy is always incredibly risky just because any second there, she's going to bark and let them know you're, you're right there. Um, but he does do a fantastic job of peeling out of that situation. All right. And this yeah, should absolutely. give him the Great distance play. that he needs. This yep, should give he's him the going to evolve in the caves for sure. Just looking for that right spot where he can kill a couple wildlife and then evolve on top of it and get some quick feed on right after. All right, it does look like he's going to have at least a four Reaver snack ready uh, uh, as soon as he comes up, and I don't think they're going to have the distance to prevent that. No, 60 meters out. Look at how far away they are. They are going to have to cut through the winding tunnels of those caves to even get in range. They could dome right here, but no one is nearby. They may not even know just how close he actually is. Okay, and he does finish off Banshee Mines They've got and the pings. Vortex. They've got the pings on him there, Aegis, and they are... Uh, oh, wait... He, uh, wow, they're already stripping into that armor that he's built up, but Ghost Patrol not wanting to engage here, wanting to make sure that he grabs it, and I, I'm not sure that he's moving fast enough to be able to pick that up. Yeah, yeah, he's got to back out the the uh, far side of the caves right here, looking to get as much feed as possible on that that awesome Galatia, uh, Galatiapod droppings. You know, from the way that Insane's acting, I think that he wants to fight here. I think he's yeah. not trying to dodge the dome. Uh, yeah, I wow. think he does too. Moves in to engage with that Vortex, gets them all knocked down into the deep water. Does a fantastic job of keeping them juggled. Medic goes down before she even hits the ground. Moving on to Ghost Patrol, who's going to take it hard again. Oh my goodness, folks. Looks like in one fell swoop, he's going to take out half of the team. Uh, Medic Great Vortex up. right there. Goes back on Suspect. And he may he may switch again. No, he does stay on Suspect right here. Markov with that lightning on oh. Cabot with the damage amp, though destroying his armor just eating him alive but at what cost suspect will go down that is strike number two on the medic insane pulling into a commanding lead taking essentially three strikes there still hasn't taken a single chip to his health in this match um wow there ages i i'm worried for this team yeah it, right. things do not look good for team sith evolve right now insane five to one showing a commanding lead over uh, over this Sith Evolve Hunter team right now, just absolutely dominating them. Uh, Insane making an interesting choice there. Saw that they were putting bullets onto him, waited till he upset the Steemadons enough till they went off, and then chose to get the rest of the feed under cover of Steemadon. Uh, very interesting, smart decision, I think. Um, he's got stage three now. He's in a position where they, they can't really chase him very well. The minute they do have him domed, the ghost uh, is already low enough and, and they don't have the Hank Shields to be able to keep him up, that he he should essentially be able to drop any dome that, that, that falls. Yeah, and it does look like he's engaging on Ghost Pepper here to try and make sure that that dome isn't going to come up in the first place, trying to prepare for the Evolve. Unfortunately, his team not letting him get anything out of it, stripped all the uh, armor off the Kraken here, and it looks like Insane might just choose to, to spend a little bit of health in order to get that second strike. And look at that. Yeah, strike two on Ghost Patrol. One strike on War Spirit. Two strikes on Suspect the Medic. 
Amazing play on Insane's part. Takes barely any damage at all. Yeah, now just sailing right up the river to evolve to stage three. You know, this is why we say it, Aegis, but but Insane is probably one of the most all-around good monster players. Uh, he has incredibly good uh, 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 game sense, and, and I, I think he understands on a pretty intuitive level how the monsters are, or how the how the hunters are moving and why they're moving. Um, is that's at least the observation I make after playing with him a few times. Um, it's it's just fantastic play. He knows what you're gonna do before you do it. Yeah, yeah, you're right. He he really does. He is he's so good at getting into the head of his opponents and figuring out exactly what they want to do. And look at that, the hunter team backing up now wisely, running back to that relay, preparing for a final defense right here. Well, what final defense can be had, Aegis? They are they are. Uh, severely handicapped at the moment, although all hunters are in, uh, a couple of them are a single shot from a stage 3 Kraken from, from uh, a drop ship ride home. Alright, it does look like they're going to try and take out some of the more dangerous wildlife over in the section just so they're not interrupting during the battle. The slot does go down fairly easily. Um, this is an interesting area for them to engage, Aegis. I don't know if I've seen very many teams choose this as their preferred setup area. It's a good spot to fight the Kraken in, actually. There's uh, plenty of areas where you can LOS, and with Cabot on their team, they can shoot the Kraken off the relay if the Kraken decides to go on the relay. So they force the fight to them. And look at that. Here he is, right now. All right, he does initiate with that first lightning strike. Doesn't look like he's going to catch anybody with it, but he does hit uh, a War Spear with a couple of swift melees afterwards, just pummeling him, unable to, to put the damage amp out. Does look like War Spirit's gonna go down to that lightning strike there. Medic unable to cope, and he's gonna wait until War Spirit is absolutely dead before moving on to the next target. Daisy gets knocked down with AoE damage from those flailing tentacles. Yep, and, and looks... he moves that lightning strike, just misses it though, doesn't even hit anyone. But oh, double wow. attack on both the Romeo and Ghost Patrol, both of them almost down. Ghost Patrol on two strikes will die if Ghost Patrol goes down here. Their trapper, Ghost Patrol, is now dead. Suspect down to almost no life. If she dies, the medic, then they will not have a Kyra either. They will have no heals. And Support Suspect shield. goes down as well. Lightning strike on a Romeo, a, a, Rom a Romanium. Dodges the lightning strike, but is finally taken out by the Kraken. Oh, that was a tough ending there. He just uh, insane. Wow. Really, really had his way with them there. Um, oh, you yep. can see that very clearly in the stats there. Wow. Yeah, look at that. Almost twice as much damage done as healing dished out, and only four thousand damage dealt by the hunters. Yeah, they. Yeah, insane. Pretty much walked all over them there. Um, really, kind of a turnaround from what we saw in that last game. Yeah, it seems like it's going to come down to a battle of the monsters in this one, Aegis. It, it all depends on on how a uh, uh, team or on... Oh, my brain is starting to get fried after so many hours of casting, <laughs> Aegis. Uh, yeah, yeah, depend, mine too. It's all going to depend on how that Evolve Hype Hunter team is able to cope with, with uh, Bugsy as well as the other few monsters that, that they do have over on the Sith Evolve side. Yeah, and currently uh, it looks like we have um, monster wins on both sides. Uh already so uh, during the first round the second round we have a monster win for evolve hype so it's currently 2-1 waiting for the results uh from the other side of this matchup right now will uh will team sith evolve manage to tie it up 2-2 or will evolve hype manage to get a win on sith's monster player and make it 3-1 keep in mind this is a best of seven folks this is the finals right here right now they are playing for 150 euros that's 100 to the winner 50 to the second place team this is for all the marbles <laughs> all right yeah i'm seeing that as well here uh, uh monster went on or from what i understand here monster went on both sides <sighs> I don't know. I don't even know what to say that uh, the the team Sith evolves uh, hunter team could really do to switch it up there. Maybe maybe try and go with the traditional Hank. I know that earlier I was trying to talk talk about the Cabot mix there, but for at least Sith evolves play style, it it, it feels like he, they're just getting burst down too easy, and it's it's too hard to keep them up. All right, and uh, let's see. We have no. Okay, I'm seeing. 
Okay, no, there is still no update on Sith Evolve. We're just getting the score update right now for the uh, for the monster of Evolve hype, Insane 521, the game that we just watched. Uh, but let's see here. They may just jump right into game number three right now. Let's see if I've received a message from Insane. You know, and very interesting, what do you think Insane's going to go this time? I think I, I, he'll probably Goliath. stay with Kraken. No, I think he'll probably stay with Kraken. He did so well that last game. I think he feels very, very comfortable. And he sees Kraken as a weakness to Team Sith Evolve. You know, against teams that are not able to dodge the lightning strike appropriately, uh, Kraken is such a powerful, powerful pick. It's and very I true. I think really only becomes weak against teams that heavily practice against Kraken, like DTR, whose favorite monster... Or whose, uh, Whose monster, whose monster player is. favorite is Aurora <laughs> Symphony, who plays almost exclusively Kraken. Exactly. You know? It's it's very interesting. We were talking earlier about play styles. Like when you were talking about DTR, uh, uh, you know, the developers coming in and having their own kind of play style. I've noticed that among different communities as well. And, and it seems to, like a lot of it has to do with who your monster is and, and who you're training against on a daily basis. And I see exactly what you're talking about, Aegis. There are a lot of teams that just don't seem to know how to deal with this Kraken. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. It, it, it is difficult. You have to save your jetpack. You have to save enough jetpack to dodge those lightning strikes. Now, what's interesting, though, is that in many cases when playing against Insane, that's not actually the issue because he doesn't take lightning strike until the end. He yep. just uses that Banshee Mind Sneak Pounce attack. Drops the Banshee Minds and then locks the player down with the Sneak Pounce and lets the Banshee Minds hit them as he's also pouncing on them. That's right. Which, he uses he uses his superior I, agility to set up yeah. the, the absolute perfect encounter for himself every time, and he refuses to engage on any other encounter than that. It's, it's very rarely, Aegis, that we ever see a hunter actually corner insane. Okay, and it looks like we are just waiting for game number two of the Hunters to complete, and then Insane will be going in number three. They want to see how that matchup resolves. We do not have an answer on that yet, though. Uh, hopefully that game will end soon. Yep, this this could be it. This could be for the entire thing here, eh? just depending on, on the outcome of that other map. If, if, uh, if Evolve Hypes... Uh... Hunter team is able to take it and... and uh, uh... Why can't I think here? And Insane actually wins this one. That'll be it. Um, yeah. Game point. Yeah, that will be the final game. If uh, We will have a round number three. And, uh, well, actually, even even in the next round, if you know, even if they do tie it up 2-2 here, if in the next round Evolve Hype were to win 2-0, then they would take the series. And likewise, if it was tied up, if Sith Evolve took the next series of matches 2-0, uh, then it would make the final score 4-2, and Sith Evolve would move on and take that final championship. Yeah, you know, I, I am a little bit sad that we no longer see Wraith. Uh, I'm just bringing mm -hmm. up some bringing up something here, but I, I I'll be honest, I I am really sad that we no longer see Wraith because it is a very distinctive playstyle that I, I kind of miss. And okay, and it looks like the Hunters did win for Evolve Hype. Interesting. Uh, let me confirm. So that. this is let me confirm that with Insane. I'm seeing that in our score list, but let me confirm that with an actual player on the team first. All right, folks. Once again, if this is true and they did win, that means that we are going to be moving on to a uh, game point here. Uh, uh, essentially, Insane has the chance to win this for his entire team. Um, uh, if so, this will be the final match. So, fingers crossed, everybody. I, I personally would like to see a bit of a comeback and then, uh, uh, you know, on to a game seven. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We always love to see an epic <laughs> final series, a tiebreaker. I mean, you know, that's that's our our favorite kind of situation to be in, to feel that pressure, to see the hype, and just to see one team pull off a clutch finish right at the end. That's you know, that's the ideal scenario well, for I, any I, tournament, whether you're watching it or um, whether you're casting it. I guess not if you're playing it. If you're playing it, I guess you just want to dominate and get it over with, right? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I've said it before and I'll say it again, Aegis, the heat and the pressure of that final round is the crucible through which excellent plays are made. Uh, mm. uh, uh, d d and it's it's without fail, those are the best plays we see consistently is when people are are, are under the pressure to try and come back or, or are, you know, under the pressure to try and <laughs> snap up victory for their team in the final, uh, in the final match. Um, goodness, I really do hope it comes down to that. Yeah, yeah, I would like to see that. Um, I still don't have a confirmation. Uh, nothing yet from Insane. And I don't see Insane in chat either. Yeah, they're, um, 
they're not not giving away which team won. Uh, I would be curious to know where Tonic got the information that they won the other round from. Let me see what he says. Yeah, it says, Vode says they're up 3-1. Okay. All right, they did. They did win. All right, so the score is currently 3-1 Evolve Hype versus Sith Evolve. This is the finals. This is a best of seven, folks, which means that in this third round here, we are going to see a match point. Um, Team Sith Evolve will have to win two rounds in a row. They will have to beat both Insane 5 to 1, Evolve Hype's monster, and they will have to beat the Hunter team from Evolve Hype yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. That means both, you know, Bugsy's got to pull off the win as well as this team. And, you know, if, if you're, if you are this Sith Evolve Hunter team right now, you, you've got to kind of be, uh, 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 I, you got to wonder what's going through their head. Uh, Aegis, I do think that there's like I, I've said this before, and I'll say it again: never count a man dead till you see the body. And and we haven't seen it here with these guys. They're not they're not done. They're not beat out. But but they need to make a big change here. Uh, I'm not even sure what to suggest it be. But but something's got to change over the last few matches because Insane has just held complete domination over them. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, they had that great rush against him uh, at the beginning of the first round, and then uh, it kind of just all fell apart out of nowhere. Yeah. It, well, what it was is is that that last engagement, insane. Like I said, used used some excellent agility and and chose when he wanted to come in and engage, um, and and ended up getting the, the those strikes down so quickly. Right. Uh, yeah. He geez. just he saw that perfect opening and exploited it. Okay. Insane is telling me. That they are going right now. He says they are doing this for apple pie. That's what he says. <laughs> for, for apple pie, America, and the flag. <laughs> Actually, if we wanted to get technical, he said apple pie. And then had apple to re recorrect his typo and change it to apple. Okay, so they are going right now. Here we go, folks. Observer mode ready. Let's get some hype for round number three of the ESL Sunday Cup Finals right here and now. Team Evolve Hype versus Sith Evolve. If you want to see Team Evolve Hype win, let's get some Pog Champs up in chat. And if you want to see Team Sith Evolve win, let's get some What Face. You know, and an interesting thing that I'm seeing a lot of people discuss in the chat here, as long as we're not actually into the final match yet, I'm, I'm going to say it. Like, It's not that Kraken is overpowered. That's, that's not it at all. Kraken is simply overpowered in the current meta. Um, not necessarily even overpowered. It's just, you know, has a, a slightly better win percentage. And it's not necessarily because of Kraken's strengths. It's, it's, it has a lot to do with the way that, that play, teams are playing counter pick to Kraken right now. Does that make sense? Did I get that yeah. out right, Aegis? Yeah, <laughs> I, I think you did. I think you did. That does make perfect sense. And I think that it, in time, we will see, uh, we will see teams become a little more comfortable. I mean, I love that that behemoth I, troll. I mean, I, 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 it, it gets me every single time. <laughs> Insane oh, 5 to one classic troll. You know what I think it is, Aegis? It's the fact that that behemoth is like four times the size of that hunter team and it's just looming in the background. <laughs> I think that's the image he wants to project. All right, and we are getting into round number three right now. Once again, Insane 5 to one the monster player for Team Evolve Hype. Here he is, as a Goliath, just waiting. Okay, and now he is going to take off. And they're off. <laughs> All right, and this is a very interesting map here, Aegis. I, uh, we haven't seen one of these today, have we? Oh, no, we've, no, we've we, been here we have twice seen, today. Yeah, yeah we, we have seen some VAM already. Not yeah, much, though. Not as much as some of the other maps. A lot of monster players do not like it, so it is frequently banned. Yeah, you can absolutely see why. There's so few places for them to do a lot of the things they like to do. Although, I will take credit there for, for my correct pick, or my correct assessment on the Goliath pick there. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're right. That was a good call. Insane I... willing to mix it up and, and pull a Goliath. Um, that didn't even dawn on me. 
Yeah, I think that it's the same attitude that uh, that Mad Cow said he had during the finals. There, he he, it's it's partially kind of a little bit intimidation. I mean, he did so well as Kraken. This is a switch up, and it is going to allow him to pull some different strategies that they're not used to yet. But at the same time, it also forces them to change their play up. You know, and and they they're already uh, uh, not quite where they need to be. Yeah, they're not even sure where he is right now. Once again, we have a Romeo on assault playing Markov, we have Suspect on Medic, playing Kyra, we have War Spirit on support, playing Cabot, and we have Ghost Patrol on Trapper, playing Maggie. All right, and it looks like they do finally get a little bit of a spot on him. He is already at stage two, though. Yeah, yeah. Assault trying to get those Assault round or the <laughs> those Assault Rifle rounds into him. Gonna take, actually, about a, about a bar of health before he gets out of here, but I don't Far think War Spirit health. isn't close enough. Yeah, War Spirit doesn't look close enough to be able to go in here. He just... uh, Ghost Patrol. Ghost Patrol, the or Trapper. Patrol. Yeah, he is a little bit too far away. But, you know, Insane's path of movement may take him right to Ghost Patrol. Look at that. Ghost Patrol coming out of the cave. Sniffs him. Insane backs up. Yep, catches him with the sniff and wisely backs away. All right, and he's turning to engage War Spirit, who's already almost down to have health, uh, uh, trying to move out of line of sight of the Stage 2 monster. Um... Just not quite able to get the fight they want, Aegis. That's what it looks like to me. Like it. <sighs> yeah, yeah, they just couldn't quite get the right position. Neither team, I think, happy oh with goodness. the position. You know, Insane trying a little bit of aggression there and then quickly backing off uh, after. You know... Ooh, we may have a. No, no, he's still too far away. Okay. And, you know, he missed that dust tag by, by <laughs> inches, Aegis. Inches. Um. Fantastic job, and then goes back over the top of where the dust tag landed. Uh, uh, just a lot of really thoughtful play from Insane here, trying to, to to free himself from this hunter's grasp in order to get far enough away to be able to grab that armor. You know, and where's Daisy in all this is my question. There she is. There's Daisy, everyone's favorite trap draw. And you know what? Some people have requested this. We should also introduce Daisy for Team Sith Evolve. As Daisy. The elite Daisy today. Playing oh, playing as Elite Daisy, actually. We have Daisy playing as Elite Daisy. Look at that great skin right there. Alright, let's get back to the action right All here. Right, look Insane like he's five to one to... sneak mode. Oh, gonna get that sneak pounce. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. Yep, gonna go in for the engage with the leap smash. Gonna miss it because of the verticality there. That's fine though. He's gonna be able to pull himself out of the other side here. Um, and the Hunters are going to be hard-pressed to try and keep up with that because they've got a lot of jetpacking to do. Insane, where did all this armor come from, Aegis? I, I didn't see him pick up all this armor. <laughs> it must have just reach-end. Um, yeah, right. it yeah. Like <laughs> and, well, it, half it's, energy. it's taking those little snacks whenever he can, you know, that little bit plus the regen uh, does add up over time, and he is already halfway to stage three. Yep. What, what's the game time at here, Aegis? I, I would bet we're at about eight minutes. Yeah, well, actually, we're oh, only wow. at four minutes. Only at four, four minutes? Four twenty, four minutes and 20 what? seconds. Yeah, that oh was all goodness. it was when you asked. It was four minutes and 20 seconds. And look at that, coming in right now. No, he's going to back away. He's not yeah. going to push the aggression. That's right. He is keeping the sniff right on the edge, like keeping Ghost Patrol right on the edge of his sniff range and, and doing a fantastic job of, of make, forcing him to, to move around cave systems and, and to always be slightly out of position. Um, I just wonder what the end game is for here for him because he's tried to engage a few times and, and hasn't really got anything for his trouble. Yeah, and look at that. He is going to continue to back off right here. Let's see if he can... Let's see what he can do here. He's, he's going to sneak and... I don't... I think he's just... He's waiting for them to overcommit and then double back when he gets the chance. You know, and it's interesting. He's playing the sneak pounce here, severely slowing himself, but Daisy's making a direct beeline for him. No, and he's just going to continue to duck as far away as possible. Gives it up, goes noisy, grabs a few canyon striders for his trouble. Good stuff. Two meets apiece. That should bring him well within distance. It looks like like a, a mammoth bird would just about finish the, the energy bar off there. Or actually, it's just a single meet now. Yeah, I think he's going to be able to get stage three Aegis before they're really able to respond to it. That is not the way they wanted this to go. Oh, 
All right. And it does look like they're hitting him through the wall there with that Cabot railgun damage. They do know where he's at, even if they don't have an exact ping on him. Um, trying to lead him through the Nomad there. Slow trip uh, to slow him down, trip him up just a little bit. I don't know if you see this though, Aegis, but currently the odds do favor the hunters. Yeah, they do just barely though. 59 to 41 in favor of the hunters. We'll have to see though. I mean, with odds that close, we and we've seen this many, many times before. Any losing situation on the part of either the hunters or the monster can easily be turned around by a single misplay from the opposing team. And look at that, he will take that stage 3 evolve right here. What kind are of the hunters doing? Are they? Yes, they are going to chase him. They are going to look to get a dome right here and get as much damage in as possible. This will definitely be a significant dome for them. He has no armor. Dome this goes is actually ages. a great spot dome to fight the lion. Pushing for the engagement on a Ghost Patrol. Ghost Patrol taking wow. the lead. Wow, Rock, rock, rock the takes him out. He jumps past a couple a couple mines. Lane breaks him down. Ca yeah, Cabot with the amp. And uh, wow, he, he he takes a leap smash onto Ghost Patrol. Looking to take Ghost Patrol out of the fight for good. Cabot still with that damage amp. Markov on the rail gun. I mean, on the on the lightning gun. Oh my goodness, Ka Mar Markov goes down. He just Markov goes down. Suspect down to half health. This looks like it's going to be game for these guys unless they can get that assault back up yeah uh, it looks like suspect tough. may go down as well yep i don't think he's gonna be able to pull out of this ages this could be game set match for team sith evolve unfortunately run war spirit run yeah and uh he, he no he what is he doing I don't think he caught him there, he, he just... He, yeah, he, was, he, he doesn't realize it. Great play by War Spirit's part right there with that Invis ducking away and then cutting across into the river to to uh, to lose his footsteps. The monster cannot see the footsteps of a hunter who is in the river. He doesn't realize which way he went. He does an Aegis. He's done a great job of escaping here, but my question is, I don't know how much good it's going to do them. Yes, it does give their team a chance to get back in here, but unless they've got some kind of plan for dealing with a, a, a stage 3 insane monster uh, on top of the relay, I, I don't see how they're going to do it. Alright, moving up in. He yeah. is, intentionally or not, Aegis, he's pushing up towards War Spirit pretty heavily. He, he is going straight for the relay, though. He is going to force War Spirit out of position. All right, 30 seconds. Remember, folks, that is a 50-second timer until the Hunters are effectively in the fight and can actually do something. Um, it, oh, goodness. I think that that might be more than enough time if uh, War Spirit decides to try and hold himself off. he can. I think that he can take the relay down here. War Spirit needs to get into a position to shoot him right War now. Spirit is up there trying to it looks like he's trying to put damage in on him Aegis but it's it's just not actually hitting through the building there yeah yeah he's too far away he needs to get height he needs to oh, get height or insane win. is going to take the relay out yeah, yeah that was a good. relay win right there insane five to one taking out the relay and sealing the deal for team evolve hype that is four one actually which means that team evolve hype has won today's sunday cup GG. Congratulations to Team Evolve Hype. A well fought. You guys dealt with uh, some of the very best teams that ESL could throw at you and uh, uh, pulled out the win there. Fantastic uh, uh, victory there for for uh, Insane. Anticlimactic. Uh, uh, I, I never like it to end without a fight. You know what I mean? It ended on a relay, uh, a power relay. but A know, surprising gamble. finish, but yeah, I mean, a well played finish nonetheless. Good game to both teams. We saw tons and tons of great matches today. Um, very, very well played, and thank you all for tuning in, for sticking around, and hanging out through all the trouble, all the difficulty that we encountered today. Uh, we do appreciate all the love and all the support that you guys have shown today. Thank you all so much for the follows. Thank you for your support. We are so close to hitting that precious 1K. That's a significant milestone for the channel, and we appreciate all your love and support so far. That's right, Aegis. I, 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 I can't say it enough, guys. We're here because of you. Thank you so much for being here. Um, are, are you about to wrap it up, Aegis? Yeah, I think we are about to wrap it up. If you have any I'll other shout-outs or promotions, then. anything like that. Uh, no, just uh, tip your waitresses, folks.
Thank you so much, and we will see you actually before next Sunday. Uh, uh, go to Aegis's, uh, uh Twitch, or not Twitch, go to Aegis's Twitter to give him a follow because we will be announcing when we'll be going live for the AHL League on Twitter. Is that correct, Aegis? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. We will have updates for you coming this week. We have both the EHL, the brand new league, the Evolve Hype League, uh, sponsored by the team that just won today, as well as the Stage 3 podcast. Yep. So lots of stuff to look forward to. Um, thank you guys so much, and that'll be it for me today. All right. Thank you very much, as always, IG, for co-casting with me. It is always a great time casting with you. And once again, all of you, thank you so much for tuning in and sticking throughout all the issues. Hopefully they do have some of those issues sorted out uh, in the future going forward, and we get some new rulings from the ESL. Um, we could probably even uh, make a post on the ESL forums if you want to see things done differently in the future. Maybe get some community uh, feedback. Um, over on the ESL forums, I know that they are always looking for additional feedback. So thank you all for tuning in. Once again, I cannot thank you enough. I will be seeing you all later this week uh, for both the EHL and the Stage 3 podcast, as well as more of the Sunday Cup next week. Thanks again. I am so tired right now. Holy shit. around though we'll talk in a minute wow dude Actually, nah, we're too low in the viewers now. I don't want... Man! Dude, I don't know.